Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Friday Domination Tournament. It's going to be the top four, and here we are. It is going to be the dreaded platypus, who, of course, I believe won the first week Domination Tournament we had. So quite exciting to see the platypus back. Or did, I think it got, maybe the platypus got second place. I can't quite remember, but a really, really uh, high level ranking there. We also have Hugo in the top four, who you'll see here in our first best of three. Void Lols, of course, a common contender in the top four in both land battles, as well as Domination. And a big bees. That's going to be it for our top four. How is everyone doing? I hope you're all doing well. We certainly had some serious competition today, and now we are in the top four. So each of these matches in the round of four will be best of three. And the grand finals, as is usual, will be best of five. And that is it. That is the tale of the tape. Welcome, welcome. Good to see all the familiar faces back. New faces as well. And let's go ahead and jump into the lobby here and see what they're going to be picking. So it looks like the first match is actually going to be Ogre Kingdoms versus Slanesh. Very interesting. I wonder how the picks and bans went for that. I would imagine uh, Ogres, they, who do the Ogres ban? Honestly, I feel like Ogres, maybe Zinch is the worst matchup for them. So I would imagine that there was probably a ban on Zinch from the Platypus. And then Hugo maybe came in for the counter pick. Uh, you know, obviously I think Ogres are still favored against Slanesh, but Slanesh does have some good tools against them. Slanesh has really cost effective spear units, the Marauder Spears. They're obviously ITP, which, you know, isn't terribly pertinent, but sometimes against like Stonehorns, it can matter. So having these really cost-effective spears and cost-effective anti-large cavalry and, uh, you know, obviously these big, you know, hard-hitting characters can potentially do the trick against the Ogre Kingdoms. I've seen Slanesh be picked as an answer against Ogres, and last time in our top four, we did actually have Slanesh defeat the Ogre Kingdoms on the crossing of the Sea of Claws. So pretty cool for sure. It's going to be fun. Yeah. How's everyone doing? Platypus lost to Houseplant in the finals of the first tourney. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I remember, yeah, Houseplant won that first one. I remember it now. My old boomer brain is just getting going. Great book. How you doing? Can you bring Nurgling? <laughs> can you bring the Nurgling toilet seat just for fun? Are you talking about Kugath? Well, I unfortunately I have no choice in that. It's going to be up to the players. Nurgle is a Nurgle is best case scenario. I would say like a counter pick faction. Like if your opponent picks corn or <laughs> or corn, <laughs> that's pretty much it. I think you I think you can bring Nurgle and have some pretty good success. Yeah, Nurgle needs some love for sure. They need some big buffs. And I'm uh, I'm actually working on some patch notes that I'm going to be submitting to Creative Assembly. So I'm working with some high-level players in the community and we're putting together our own patch notes that we think would be a good way to balance out the multiplayer scene. And we're going to be sending that on over to Creative Assembly. So very excited and uh, hopefully they'll be receptive to some of those changes. And, you know, obviously some of them might not be correct, but I think it's good to start the conversation. Waiting for dwarves. Oh my God. Yes, me too. You know how much fun it's going to be to just grab like an iron breaker and just set them on the back objective and like have an organ gun blasting them off the middle. It's going to be so fun. Yeah. Looks like RTK made a wise move picking up Platypus since then. Yeah, absolutely. I believe Platypus joined the clan shortly after that, the uh, the RTK clan. Yeah. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be Ogre Kingdoms and uh, looking like a pretty cool build for sure. We actually have basic ogre bulls which are generally pretty good against slanesh i mean slanesh is super lightly armored and these guys hit really hard against light armor so i do like that did i see iron fists against slanesh interesting so there's a single iron fist in here i think and the reason may be why is just because there's a little bit of a leftover money and the iron fists do have 34 melee defense against the basic variant which has 26 so a lot of people think that shields are only pertinent against missile fire but shields do also come with greater melee defense typically so it can be justified in matchups like that I know, we started the stream early. Very, very strange. Very strange indeed. It's going to be Maneater Pistols. Uh, I haven't seen these used against Slanesh, but perhaps there's a, some sort of attack. They're pretty good in combat and also can shoot the big characters. We got Noblars in the front. More Noblars being summoned in, and Scrag the Slaughterer is here. And he does not have any Gorgers with him, but I would imagine Gorgers will be summoned in at some point. Now, for the forces of Hugo, going to be coming in with a big Marauder Infantry push, which again is very, very standard fare in this matchup. It's going to be Marauders with Spears moving up to the high ground. We have Vanguarded Seekers up here in the trees. Spears moving into the middle. Lord is going to be a, an Exalted Keeper of Shadows with Pit of Shades. Interesting. Pit of Shades, I haven't seen its efficacy against Ogres. I haven't really seen anybody try that, so I'm curious if it'll be good. And Basic Demonettes. I really like Exalted Demonettes. I actually think they're one of the better units on the Slanesh roster overall, but I'm quite eager to see what kind of value and mileage you can get out of like a Demonette unit. If it can trade and defeat like an Ogre Bull unit, I mean, that's not bad. They do cost quite a bit more. I think that Demonettes need a slight cost reduction. I think they're a little bit overpriced. Like Plague Bears are 750 and Demonettes are 800. I think you could probably bring them down to 750 and I think you would be in pretty good shape. So... Over here, the old Noblar is moving up, and we have some Trappers coming in. Trappers are so good against Slanesh. 
They do not the best damage, but Slanesh has like almost no armor across the board. So just getting those like nice little ninja stars or I don't even know what they throw. Is it like throwing daggers or something? It probably is. Yeah, little Noblar trappers. I, I think they just like kind of throw these little prison shanks and do these different things. Uh, so Pit of Shades going down. That was a really curious cast right there. Trying to hit the Noblars. That couldn't have been like an actual cast. That must have been like a misclick or something. Because that, that just barely tickled the pickle there of those Noblars. And, I mean, maybe delays them from advancing to the middle for, like, just a second. But really, that just felt like a huge, huge misplay for sure. Now, I do like what Slanesh is doing by playing the high ground and the hills and the side objectives. Obviously, trying to charge head-on into the Ogres in this, like, middle position is pretty much going to be a doom sentence. You're going to have pretty much no chance of succeeding if you charge in head-on and you can't flank them. But if Slanesh plays the two high ground objectives, they can take advantage of the fact that they have like crazy, crazy speed and can just maneuver up and punish the ogres for trying to take these objectives and play the hills, which I think this map really is the way to go. Uh, you know, to answer your question, somebody in chat saying, sad nobody brings the, uh, are you talking about the stone horns? The stone horns are really good. They're actually quite good, especially if you mount the hunter on them. They're they're becoming pretty meta in land battles as well. And we will be having a land battle relatively soon. I might be busy this weekend, but the next tournament we have uh, is going to be a land battle tournament. So domination needs, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think it needs some new maps, like having big open field maps so we could have like traditional land battle style engagements would be really, really exciting. And I, I'm pretty sure Creative Assembly knows this and I think it'll be happening. Yeah, they're just throwing junk at you, really? Okay, so they're just, the Noblar trappers are just throwing like some little pieces of trash at you and it's, yeah, it makes sense. I think that's what lead belters do as well in the lore. I think they just like stuff like forks and spoons and, you know, whatever else they can find in their, uh, in like scrap inside of their uh, lead belters and just kind of blast it out. So the objectives are open. Slanesh is going to be getting the two cap. And now it's more like this is really a finesse game here for Hugo. He's going to have to make sure that he gets the proper engagements, doesn't take engagements, he can't win. I like that he has the three spears threatening the middle as well because he can more than more than happily just kind of sit and, you know, control these two high ground objectives. And how are the ogres going to play this? I would imagine that the ogres will assess which side is easier to take, which is probably going to be objective one. And they will create a roadblock right here, just like some Ogre Bulls and different units. And then they'll blitz this high ground objective and uh, try and get that. Although the one in their zone obviously is a little bit easier because they can summon here. So maybe they roadblock this side and rush the top. Now, Maneater Pistols, an amazing unit, able to shoot into the Exalted Keeper. And unfortunately for the Keeper, it's kind of facing the wrong way. So its shield isn't going to be helping to block those shots. But the Exalted Keeper will be hustling away here in a second and should be able to get away from the rest of that firepower there. Oh, you're talking about the Rhinox Riders. Yeah, Mornfang Cavalry are pretty good. They're decent, I'd say. Not, like, amazing, but, um, yeah, the, the really expensive ones, they're too pricey. They cost, like, 1800 1900 It's uh, It's just a little bit too much, so... Yeah, two to one cap here. Ogre is going to be unleashing their blitz. So this is the, the hand that is being shown and quite a strong hand indeed as we have the double gorgers. Gorgers are, of course, limited to two in our tournaments. So he's got two of those backed up by some trappers, which is really nice because normally the, you know, the spears and anti-large cav could do some work against the gorgers. But backed up here by the old uh, Noblar Trappers, it's going to make that situation exponentially tougher. And the Ogres are just going to take that. So Slanesh is going to have to figure out some sort of a game plan here. It looks like, oh, this is really dangerous. The way that Slanesh is playing this is giving me a lot of stress. Putting the Seekers like back in the enemy spawn zone, if he were to summon like a couple like Ogre Bulls plus uh, some, let's say, Saber Tusks, he might be able to actually just take out these Seekers. But yeah, it looks like he's going to be happily sitting on these objectives right now. And Slanesh going to be collapsing down. We do see the Demonettes on their way. We see Hellstriders, which are, of course, the anti-large variant. The Exalted Keeper of Shadows is coming, and the Marauder Spear is going to be trying to hold back this Tide of Maneaters, while in the middle, the other Slaneshi forces crash from all sides. Spears moving down, Spears, Spears, and Spears. I like the dual-pronged kind of pressure. Now, Slaanesh does have a slight edge in points, just because of having the two cap for a little bit longer, but it's going to get really spicy here. So here comes the first Ogres. These are the Iron Fists, and the Spears will trade pretty well here, but the Noblars are going to be absorbing a lot of that damage, but some of the Ogre Bulls do kind of overextend as they do their giant straight kicks, the Anderson Silva kicks there from the Ogre Bulls. And on the high ground, the Marauder Spears trying to screen them back while Slanesh looking like they want to do some sort of an Alpha Strike here. Value being accrued on both sides is actually relatively even at this point. Nobody's getting a huge lead. Oh, really nice charge here. Slanesh had those Hellstriders in the Ogre spawn zone, and they're going to be slam jam space jamming into the back of these. Now, Hellstriders don't have Devastating Flanker, but it still does kind of seal the doom of this pocket of units right here. We get more and more action coming down. Now, Pit of Shades being used on the Noblar Trappers. Seems like, I guess there's just not too many good targets there. Uh, yeah, I, I think maybe like the lore of uh, Slanesh would have been a little bit more useful against Ogres. The Spears here are taken out by a combination of Ogre Bulls and Noblars, not able to hold up against that overwhelming weight. 
and the Keeper tries to get in there against the Gorgers, but honestly, this feels like a losing fight for Slanesh, at least on this point. Like, value trading right now is pretty good for Hugo. He's doing a good job. I think pulling back from this fight here, though, is the correct play. You got two Gorgers here, like super entrenched. You have Scrag, you have Maneater Pistols. I think rotating down and playing the middle, just like he's doing with his Lord, would be really smart. Like, if that Lord could kind of drift around here and maybe get down to the middle, those Maneater Pistols are really tricky. In the backfield, we do have Seekers of Slanesh. Oh, look at this. They actually intercepted some Ogre reinforcements, or maybe the Saber Tusks were summoned to attack them, but Seekers seem to be trading okay. And in the middle, is Slanesh contesting this objective? It seems that they are. Yeah, the objective is going a little bit for Slanesh as they crash down from the hills. Marauders and the Seekers able to do some pretty good work. And once again, Hugo getting the Hellstriders circling back and around, trying to jump on the Man Eaters. And yeah, this is a big win for Slanesh down here. Value trading is like dead even, which is not great for the Slaneshi forces since they don't have healing, really. Oh, no, and a potential throw here. So the Exalted Keeper does get the Ballet of Blows and is standing and fighting to the bitter end while being shot in the back by Maneater Pistols. There's Gorger support nearby. This is a pretty rough one for uh, Hugo here. He did get Scrag kind of low, but like, like that's nothing that one Troll Guts can't heal. And, you know, so far I'm really impressed with the Slaanesh play of Hugo. It's been pretty good. I mean, he just captured a second objective, and despite losing uh, like a 3,000 gold Lord, he's kept the value within like four or 500. I think if that Lord had been used in more of a conservative sense, like ran up into the hills, ran back, circled back down here, I honestly think Slaanesh would be winning this game right now, because if you sub subtract the damage value that the Ogres got against the Slaaneshi Lord, it's like a whole different game. Now, Slaanesh is going to be able to play the objectives and try and win. They are a little bit behind, but are creeping up in terms of points. They have a pretty nice little entrenched position here. One unit of the Maneater Pistols is being dragged down by Spears, as well as Marauders. And it looks like some sort of Ogre spell is going down. Yeah, it's going to be... Oh, no, they're just Charmed. I think Exalted Demonettes have poured in. Yeah, Exalted Demonettes are such a good unit. But losing that uh, that lowered up on the high ground objective is going to be incredibly painful. So, Gorgers and Maneater Pistols making their way down to the middle. And now I think the Ogres, uh, having the Lord advantage and their Gorgers being healthy, I think they're just going to kind of dogpile on the middle objective. And Hugo is falling more and more behind in terms of value. Now, his army value is more or less fine. Nice engagement here with some of the cavalry collapsing on the Maneaters. Maneaters are actually really tanky, though. They have like 44 melee defense. Pretty meaty boys, for sure. I really like the Exalted Demonette pick. I think they're going to grind super well in this middle objective and actually are getting through the Maneaters. Ooh, but the Ogre's popping Massacre right here. This does give a huge damage buff to all their units. Also gives them Terror, which doesn't really apply against Slanesh because all their units are either ITP or Demons. So the big Power Fist going down from Scrag. Nice one there from the Platypus. A beautiful play. And it looks like it's the beginning of the end, I think, for Slanesh. Like, I, I feel like the Ogres are just going to get their way here in the middle. Maybe more and more Exalted Demonettes are going to be able to hold this. Slanesh is pulling ahead on points a little bit. They have some Hell Scourges pushing up, but Hell Scourges are not going to do anything against Gorgers, which are getting healing. Like, the Gorgers are just going to take these Whip Boys to uh, town for sure. Yeah, they got the big Mike Tyson hooks. Though some of the Gorgers are going down. We just saw a couple fall from the uh, charge of the Hell Scourge Marauders. Don't think it's going to be enough. Do not think it's going to be enough. Here, the Exalted Demonettes of Slanesh are pulling back. And we do have the Marauders of Spears. More and more uh, of the Chaos Furies flying in as well. But Slanesh's lead is about to is about to dissipate, just like their Lord. And they're only down by like 200 points. And the third objective is probably going to be captured by Ogres as well, I would imagine. Like, if they can get like a single Ogre Bull up here, or even some like beat-up Noblars, they should be able to get that. But I really did like Hugo's play in the beginning. Like... Hugo with the hill play here, just like that engagement, like baiting that engagement would have been good, but I think Slanesh needed to like pull back there and then recommit to the middle with its Lord, and I think they could have had a pretty decisive engagement there. But on that same note, you know, Platypus did a good job getting the fight up here and spreading the forces properly. The Gorger summoned to defend the backfield objective pretty much pretty much nullified any sort of aggression that we could be seeing on that end here. As the Seekers of Slanesh run over the Noblars, and they do get pushed back. So Slanesh is gonna have one objective at least, but how can they get back in this? They are currently down by about 2,000 value, which is more or less like this Slanesh Lord, right? We're really seeing that Lord coming into play now. As Slanesh does have a couple tattered forces around the battlefield, we got some Hell Scourges and Marauders with Spears. I wouldn't be surprised to see Slanesh probably bow out of this game relatively soon. I'm trying to think what they could possibly do. Ogres are just going to be Ogre Tiding, and obviously Ogres have access to healing. So the value metric that you're seeing up in the top is even worse than it looks because much of the value that Slanesh was able to accrue is either being healed by the passive healing of the Gorgers or your boy Scrag is going to be able to pop some Troll Guts most likely. Although I don't know if he brought Troll Guts. It looks like he didn't. No, he just brought the, the Power Fist and then I think one of the combat abilities, the uh, the one that gives melee attack. So here comes the Gorgers slapping up the old Chaos Furies. Chaos Furies of Slanesh are a really, really good unit. The fact that they have like armor piercing on a flying cheap unit like that is quite nice. But not going to be terribly useful here as the Ogres will uh, be coming to get you. And they're going to be munching on some Furies for sure. Seekers and Cav looking to kind of circle around the back into the Ogre ranks. But 
Slanesh forming a really haggard kind of last charge here as they do have a bunch of Hellstriders and Spears and different units just maneuvering their way up here, but I just don't see too many answers for them, and uh, I think the Ogre Kingdoms are just going to be holding this objective a little bit too efficiently as the Lord of Triple Chins heads up to the high ground objective, dragging his mighty pot and eyeing the Hellscourges and Hellstriders, which appear to be trying to get on this objective, but there's no way. I mean, Gorgers and Trappers and Chaff Units. Slanesh can try its heart out for sure, but there's not going to be enough, and I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to see... Yeah, Platypus is saving up a thousand supplies right now. Like, I would actually, I think, like, these positions are so secure that I think going for the triple cap here would be a good play. I think just summoning in a couple Ogre Bulls, like, two Ogre Bulls and some Novelars to go get Objective 1 would pretty much seal the deal. I mean, I think the deal is already sealed. I, I just don't see how Slanesh can do it without their Lord, unless there's, like, a huge blunder by the Ogre Kingdoms. So maybe, like, if they somehow gave up this middle objective, but, like, how's that going to work? Narcissism activated, going to be snaring the Bulls down allowing these spears to get a little bit better saturation into them. And the other Ogre Bulls could be piling in as well to help. Now, honestly, this should be enough. Like, I feel like these Slaneshi units here, even though there are spears, is probably going to get their, their bread buttered pretty hard. Yeah, Ogre Kingdoms are hands down an S-tier faction right now. Ogre Kingdoms and Zinch are very, very overpowered uh, compared to some of the other factions. However, you know, Zinch does have a really natural hard counter. Uh, Kissel of Lake just absolutely destroys Zinch. In my experience, in Domination Mode, Land Battles, it's a little bit of a different story, but... In Domination Mode, Kislev has a very, very good trade there. Whereas Ogres don't really have any counters. I would say the best... Yeah, actually, that's not true. I think Ogres do get countered by good Zinch play, but that's it. So in a tournament when you're in a best of three, you can simply, you know, probably ban one faction if you're playing like Ogre Kingdoms. You just ban Zinch, and then you're going to be relatively safe, right? So here comes the Gorgers moving up into the high ground, and the Slaneshi Cavalry getting hit with a fat dismember. Really nice play there by the Platypus. Able to lock them down. It slows their speed down by 60%. And the Saber Tusk packs are going to be descending upon them like uh, like metaphorical wolves, I suppose. Yeah, the Slanesh army getting the big old power fist of the Great Maw. And that should potentially help break these guys as they're at negative 10 leadership. Scrag just rubbing his triple chins all over the Marauder Hell Scourges here. That's pretty cool attack animations. Look at him go. Look at him go, man. Yeah, the big old chops. No play on the third objective. Very, very conservative ogre play. Just making sure to kind of lock it down on these back objectives here. Spamming in what reinforcements and bank they had to secure objective three. And that is going to be GG in a couple seconds. So, yeah, game one is going to be going to the menacing platypus. Who clearly has been practicing in the shadows, training with RTK. And they are now here in the grand finals with uh, game one victory. Ogres are annoying. Is Yeah, the green skins were pretty annoying for sure at the end of uh, Warhammer 2. When Grom the Paunch was really overpowered. That was like... And the Spider Rider spam, that was probably the worst meta we've ever had in this game. I think that was the worst. That was just like, that almost made me just not want to cast tournaments back then. I remember that. I was like, oh god, we have to deal with Grom and a million Spider Riders again? But yeah, the Maneater Pistols are just so good. So good. Look at that. 2,000 value on that one. Scrag got 2,000. How'd the Gorgers actually end up doing? Probably not that crazy. Yeah, against Slanesh, they're not like super insane. But really, I thought Hugo played a pretty tight game in the beginning. I just think that Hugo needed to not lose the Lord and maybe play the middle a little bit more instead of committing more to that hill fight on objective number three. GG, well played. So that is going to be game one, going to the Platypus. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be moving on to game two, which is going to be on the uh, Death Pass. Map set. Players can do their picks and bans for the next game. GG. And that is that. So now we can hang out talk and chat a little bit and uh, have some fun how are you guys all doing by the way life treating you well when did this start the this was the first game so the tournament started this morning um and we only cast the top four so i only cast top four of most tournaments sometimes i'll do top eight depends on the format but we'll see do you think you'll make changes to the pick and ban system to account for the number of factions we have yeah yeah absolutely once we get more factions added it's going to be probably a double ban or something yeah, Dactor, I think that I think that RTK does have two Platypus players. Yeah, I think they do. I could be wrong, though. My prediction for the Old World factions is that Vampire Counts are going to be egregiously OP. Like, how are you going to beat Vampire Counts in Domination Mode, at least on these maps, if they just simply... There's too many choke points. Vampire Counts are just going to roadblock you with summons. They're going to bring a double Vampire Lord, both of which will have, like, zombie summons on them, and they're just going to be, like, dropping zombie summons to block you. And you'll like never be able to get to the objectives. And their gooning is insane too. I feel like vampire counts are going to be mega gross in this game mode. Yeah. Uh, Barak, you just missed the first game. Yep, you're just getting here. We had the first match and now it's going to be game two on Death's Pass. So players are going to be doing their picks and bans. Uh, we saw Ogres versus Slanesh in the first game, which was a pretty close game in the beginning. But 
Ogre Kingdoms, as expected, did run away with the game as it did progress. And yeah. What's that thumbnail picture? It is a picture of uh, Kugath Plaguefather with aviator glasses on. Yeah. Can we look at the bracket? Yeah, sure. You can take a look at the bracket if you want. Um, let me go ahead and see. So this is the bracket for the top four. Let me go ahead and switch it on over. So we have Platypus versus Hugo, and we have Void Laws versus Big Bees. On the bottom side of the bracket, the two individuals who win these best of fours will advance on to the grand finals to play for the big cheese, the big prize. Should be pretty great for sure. And that's the story. That's the tale of the tape. <laughs> now there's two of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely digging Domination. I think it needs some minor changes like to the starting funds and to the map pool. And I think it could be a really, really good format. It's close. It's close to it's close to hitting the mark. Very, very close. But needs some changes. Uh, wait, will they merge Total War Warhammer one, two, and three? Andrea, yes, they will. Uh, we don't know when. I would imagine in the next two months, we'll probably see that, like getting the old world factions back and being able to play them in multiplayer. But hopefully sooner. How do you feel about Dawi in domination mode? I think they're going to be decent. I think Dawi will be a very map dependent faction. Like, I think on the ones with choke points, they'll actually be better. Like, just like, just think of, like, Cathay. Cathay holds the back objective and then plays the middle objective with artillery, typically. So, like, maps where Cathay is good, dwarves will be good. But dwarves are much better than Cathay. The dwarven infantry are exponentially stronger and, like, harder hitting, tankier, like, better leadership. Um, dwarven shooting is better. Like, dwarven artillery is better. Yeah, so I, I think dwarves are going to be decent. I don't think they'll be top tier. I think dwarves will be very much a middle of the road kind of like, depends on the map kind of faction. Lizardmen, I think, will be very strong. Yeah, I agree with you. I think lizardmen have like great healing, great blobbing, like really strong durable infantry, fast infantry, stocking units. Like lizardmen have such a dynamic roster. I think they're going to be really good. Cipe, yes, the ogres did win. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Medi, I hear you for sure. I think everybody kind of feels that way. We need our we need our old world factions. Hey, Alan! Shout out from New Zealand on Saturday morning. Finally caught one live. Hey, man! Must be pretty early for you, right? New Zealand right now is it like super early in the morning? You're in the land of Tolkien. You're in Middle Earth. Man, pretty great stuff. I w I would definitely enjoy going to New Zealand someday. I'd like to see all the Lord of the Rings stuff. I I know that's like the most campy tourist thing ever, but like Lord of the Rings was such a defining part of my life. Uh, the movies and the, the films and the trilogy that like I, I would just I don't even care sign me up as a tourist I'll wear I'll wear a fanny pack I'll go the full mile you know we'll, we'll do it dark elves I think will be fine I think dark elves could be good potentially like a lot of units that aren't good in normal like battle land battles I think will be pretty good in this game mode like I think that like pegasus knights for bretonia for example like why are long riders 1400 and pegasus knights are like 1100 royal pegasus knights are 1600 and they would just like absolutely annihilate long riders you know it's like i feel like there's some weird stuff there have to imagine would also be deadly in domination mode yeah i think i think that would also be pretty good because what else can play a very diverse way if they want to too if what else want to go like like elite tree spam and like play a blob they can totally do that or if they want to go missiles and the fact that you can react to threats like with your reinforcements i think makes wood elves much much stronger What's Lord of the Rings, Precious? I have a fanny pack. I have one. I do own one. Yeah, for my old job. My old job, I used to wear a fanny pack. It was uh, it was kind of necessary, actually, when I was when I was out running events and things like that. Because I was an athletic director, so I would be running like a track and field competition or a basketball tournament or, or you know, a soccer tournament. So I would have my fanny pack and it would have various things in it. Like it would have my notepad or it would have like, uh, yeah, I would keep my like cell phone in there. Fanny packs are pretty sweet, dude. People people give them a lot of crap, but... Okay, so we have a switch up now. We have uh, the Platypus on Grand Cathay facing off against Ogre Kingdoms, which I think is still massively Ogre-favored, but Cathay can sometimes pinch out a, a win here and there. It's it's not easy, but it's certainly possible. I have the same love for Lord of the Rings from growing up. I have the original Lord of the Rings uh, fight made by the same guys that made... Oh, right on, man. That's cool, Tobias. Yeah, Lord of the Rings is great. I never, though, had a mullet and a fanny pack at the same time. Although that's something I could do now. My hair is really long right now. It's like, it's getting biblical. Not biblical yet. You know, biblical hair is like straight up just like going down your shoulders and down your back. But uh, right now it's like, it's like middle of the road. <laughs> Coo dad with sunglasses is nice. Yeah. Nowadays. Oh, that's funny, Sipe. I never, never would have thought about that. 
Zeke, oh, you work in athletics? Right on, man. Uh, so I worked for a nonprofit in Northern California. Uh, and basically, I, I, yeah, I just ran sports tournaments. And I, I worked with a bunch of, uh, so my nonprofit also worked with the, uh, the Warriors and the San Jose Sharks. And we did a lot of stuff like that. Hey, Nakamura, how you doing? Fanny pack in the next tournament prize. I would actually, okay. You know, Nakamura, you joke about that, but that's very possible. The only, only issue would be shipping, the shipping cost. But I suppose that could be included in the prize. Like maybe I could give the players an option. I would straight up make custom fanny packs. You know, I would straight up do that. Yeah. And then like give those away as prizes. But I think players would rather have the cash. Because what I do right now is I just, I give a PayPal prize. So they just get straight cash or a Steam gift card, which I think they would prefer to a fanny pack. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the next match. It's going to be Grand Cafe facing off against the Chungus Kingdoms. No surprises there. Ogres are pretty much an auto pick in every... They're an auto pick and auto ban in like pretty much every format. The only reason we you know didn't see them banned here is because the other player had played them. So We got two Grand Cannons, which is a very good choice. They're excellent against the Ogre roster. And aside from that, what you do is you spam Peasant Long Spearmen and Halberds, and that's it. That's like the only chance you have. The problem is Gorders actually kill your Halberds and Spears very effectively, especially if they have a little bit of Chaff support. Dragonblooded Lord of Yen. So this is relatively common. We do see the Missile Mirror coming in. So Missile Mirror is a counter against the Iron Blaster. You pop it on that bad boy and it can like two or three shot itself. It's really hilarious. And the other spell is going to be Talents of the Night, which is kind of a curious one. I feel like it's not very good against Ogres, but we'll have to see. Now for the Ogre Kingdoms, it's going to be Ogre Bulls with dual weapons to just fight against the Spears. We got Saber Tusks, uh, Scrag, Gorgers, and I think we have more Gorgers over here as well. Like Gorgers are such a pain to remove. We have one of them here. We have some Noblars and more Ogre Bulls with dual weapons. So it looks like the... Oh no, don't land there. Oh for, man, for a second, I got like so scared. I thought the Dragon, Blood, Blood, Dragon Blooded Lord, a little bit early in the day. My voice will warm up eventually. But I thought that the Lord was going to be landing on the Gorgers and that would have been just like a straight GG punishment. So big shots going downtown, shooting into ye old Noblars. Big value from those cannons, accruing 29 value, baby. Sign me up for these bad boys. But good play from the Ogres. This is correct from Hugo. Basically, like, if you just move into the middle, you're going to get last samurai horribly. Uh, for the cannons, you want to set them back a little bit more deep set. Like, if they scoot up too much here, they might just, like, get crashed on here from the forest. Because that's what the Ogre Kingdoms want to be doing, right? But sitting back here and just kind of chilling and making sure that the cannons can cover objective number one as well as objective two is your play. This is, like, the best way to play Kislev. Not Kislev, excuse me. Cathay in this matchup. And what you probably want to do... On top of that is summon in a couple spear units and send them on over to objective number one with some jade warriors. And then when the ogres come and try and take your objective one, you can support with the cannons from downtown. That's pretty much your best bet. But yeah, there's going to be a big amount of flank pressure coming in. We have peasant archers. Gorgers are lining up in the bushes here, just waiting and cackling in the night. And ogre bulls with iron fist too. If you're going to be going for ogre bull variants, these guys are quite good against Cathay. Cathay often has a lot of missiles, so having the iron fist to give you the bronze shields, which imbues a 35% block chance, I think is quite incredible for sure. I would take the fanny pack if you had some kind of... Uh, okay, Ledron. That's good to know. I think a fanny pack would be pretty cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll think about it. I don't know. I, I We did we did some like channel merchandise stuff a long time ago, but um, yeah, most of it we don't have up anymore. That was like two years ago. Just We just did it for a couple streams, but uh, it's something to think about. I don't know. I don't know. Like I would do I would do it if it could be like more Warhammer focused, but obviously I can't like have Warhammer IP on my merchandise. So I don't know. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll think about it. Grand Cannons, just waiting for the Ogres to emerge. This objective could be held pretty comfortably by Cathay. But this is the problem. Cathay is one of the worst factions in the game at taking objectives. Like, their stopping power is, is just, like, almost non-existent. Like, if the Ogres get a really big foothold on this objective, it's gonna, Cathay might get it eventually, but it's going to take so long that they're just going to fall massively behind in points. The middle objective is being taken. The back objective is being taken by Ogres as well. So two going to Cathay, three for the Ogres, and one for the Ogres as well. Cannon shots, shoot again. Going to be nailing into the saber test packs of Hugo. Hugo juking about pretty well. And the dragon blooded lord here. I wonder if that lord is just going to be used to like kill Noblars with the Talons of the Night? We don't see an Iron Blaster being summoned. I think the Iron Blaster probably will be held in reserves. Probably because the dragon blooded lord does have access to the Missile Mirror. So Cathay has a pretty good defensible position though. They have like a big spear and halberd wall kind of screening out the forest here. Looks like the Ogres may be going to be rotating around the middle to try and pressure there. Meanwhile, on the side objective, we do have the Jade Warriors plus the uh, Peasant Long Spearmen moving towards that objective. Saber Tusks, Gorgers, and Ogre Bulls with dual weapons. Certainly very, very tough. I mean, those are a lot of very strong units, but I think this Cathay Force, if the Lord helps, should be able to take this objective. Now in the middle, 
We do have the cannon shoot again, getting some really good shots against the ogre bulls. This is this is where they shine. The power fist of the ogre is going to be coming down. The great maw with the big fist. Boom, right on the face of the Jade Warrior Halberds. Not enough time to really dodge that. Pretty good cast right there. But the spears move in to battle the ogres. Should trade pretty darn effectively as those peasant spearmen do brace for the charge, it looks like, at the last second. And Cathay is still holding on to the objective, but the ogres are going to be pouring on pretty heavily. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but ogres and base ogre infantry in general do have the capture weight of basic infantry. So you could have a unit of like 160 peasant spearmen, but like a unit of 24 ogres has the same capture weight. So you have to be kind of privy to that when you're fighting against them. But the ogres really bum rushing the middle, which I think is good for Cathay. Like, I think the ogres playing the side objectives was more the correct play. I feel like this is giving Cathay a good Royal Rumble here. Although in the back, it looks like some Gorgers did kind of creep into the shadows. And somehow there was a little bit of a lapse in micro. And Hugo was able to get a really nice engagement on that Grand Cannon. And the Saber Tusk pack is going to be nibbling on those guys. So losing one Grand Cannon here, a big disaster for sure. And if Hugo is able to just kind of keep raining and just going rampant with this uh, Saber Tusk pack, I think that's going to be potentially GG. Like, Cathay needs these cannons shooting. They're the big answer here against the Chungus Kingdoms, and in this case, the single Saber Tusk just mulching on all of them, and it looks like uh, Platypus is not responding to this. Like, the Halberds haven't moved, they're sitting kind of still. And, yeah, and that's the thing, like, you have to allocate so many resources to dealing with the Gorgers, right? Like, the Gorgers are going to defeat these Spears and these Peasant Horsemen, and potentially, like, take these Halberds down to, like, 40% before they go down, which is pretty crazy. And Objective 1 is being taken as well, and, you know... I've had a lot of experiences on ladder where basically I have been like, oh yeah, you know, Cathay is good against ogres. They have cheap spears, they have bows, they have cannons. But when you get to the higher level of play, and obviously this is the grand finals of a very competitive tournament, you're starting to see that like, even though you have a ton of things that theoretically should be good against ogres, due to the power level of said units, it's just kind of like you just get run over and uh, they just get the objectives. Maybe if this were a land battle, it would be a little bit different. I think in land battles, Cathay has an exponentially better matchup against ogre kingdoms. But um, here you're starting to see the cannons falter, the Cathay spears were pushed off the middle objective, and the ogres did take some damage in the process. And honestly, I would, uh, you know, I normally don't call games this quickly, but this is GG. There's literally no chance Cathay can come back. Cathay is one of the worst factions at pushing people back. They're just terrible at it. They're only good at holding a position, you know, if they can get a nice entrenchment. But once they lose that position, Cathay is probably the worst at, do, at, at getting them back. Like, at this point, the ogres are just going to keep spamming units. They're going to spam Noblars and Ogre Bulls all day and just stuff Cathay into its deployment zone. And even if Cathay can accrue decent trading value, they'll never get those objectives back, and they're falling too far behind here. So it looks like Ogre Kingdoms, uh, no surprises in this best of three, are going to be going 2-0. And uh, we will be seeing another match here soon. I wouldn't be surprised to see Cathay leave here. Like, I, I don't feel like there's too many points in fighting any longer. Ogres just have you stuffed. And it's only going to get worse. Hugo is pulling up in value. Cathay, once their harmony falls apart, once their missiles uh, are not protected anymore, there's no way they can keep up with ogres in value. A lot of Cathay players, too, also forget to turn off the formation attacks. Formation attacks are a little bit bugged right now. They don't work. They actually uh, lower your DPS and just make the unit just fight way worse. So if you are a Cathay player, make sure you turn off all of your formation attacks on these units. Yeah, Cathay was looking okay at first, but that's the problem. Like, it's just... You just lose the objectives, and uh, even if you get decent value trades, I've had a lot of games with Cathay against Ogres where I'm crushing them on value, but they still beat me because I just can't get the objectives from them. Like, in order for Cathay to get that good value, you have to play so defensively and so uniform that you can't spread out. So therefore, you give up all the objectives, and you basically just lose in domination mode. So, Jade Warrior Halberd's here. Going to be fighting some of the Iron Fists, moving out onto the objective. Cathay threatening to capture it back, but as soon as the Ogres see this, it's just going to be, the Ogres is coming to get you. And they're going to be just taking these uh, these Jade Warriors to Pound Town for sure. The Great Maw feasting once again. They feasted on Slanesh today, and now they're going to be feasting on Cathay. Cathay getting a little bit of a fourth quarter rally, pushing some units back, but it is actually to the point where Cathay would basically have to triple cap the Ogres to win, and, you know, that's not possible. It's, it's Their units are too slow on top of that. Like, yeah, you can get some Peasant Horsemen over here, but, like, Peasant Horsemen are going to take, like, five minutes to kill some Noblars. So there's uh, there's more or less no chance for that. Talons of the Night going down. Hugo going to be claiming victory. And I'm curious what they'll be doing in the third game. I would imagine we'll be seeing some Zinch. You know, could even see like a dreaded Zinch mirror match or something like that. Uh, yeah, Gorders are limited to two in the tournament. Yeah. No, they don't count as uh, SEMs. Oh, are you talking about in tabletop? I I've actually never seen Gorger models in tabletop. I don't, I don't really know how they play or how strong they are and all those sort of things like that. So... so looking over here, we do have the Celestial Dragon Guard moving on over to objective number one. More and more Jade Warrior Halberds also moving on over to Objective 1. A little bit of shooting as well, and the Spheres moving up, but you can see even the Cathay Halberds just get, like, annihilated by the Ogres. They don't have any fighting chance, and uh, that's going to be GG. Ogre Kingdom's OP. <laughs> and that is Game 1, or Game 2.
Yeah, it's really, really tough. I'm trying to think, like, I really actually like the build of Cathay. I think the one thing that was very suboptimal was the Lord choice. I think you actually do need a big Dragon Lord to, like, get those big uh, those big routes on the Ogres and things like that. Uh, probably cut the Crossbowmen, cut, the cut like, uh, an Archer unit and get, like, a big Dragon Lord and maybe, like, a little bit of mobility, like Peasant Horseman to intercept things. Yeah, it's very, very tough. All right, so that is game two. And now we are going to the rubber match. And we are going to be on the Eye in the North for our next map. So now that we've gotten the Ogre Kingdoms out of the way, we can have a normal fair game. Well, I guess Zinch is still here, so we'll have to see how that goes. We will have to see how that goes. What good times will be here? What will we have? The single Gorger unit. Yeah, it, got, it must have gotten a lot of value for sure. Because with Scrag, they heal passively too, which is pretty insane. Those things are just a, they're just a nightmare to deal with. Probably one of the most feel-bad things to play against, too, is those guys, man. It's like, when they have you stuffed in your deployment zone and you just can't kill them, you're like, oh, <laughs> it's a rough feeling. So what are we going to see here for the next matchup? Players, I believe, are doing their picks and bans now. Let's see what they got going. I would imagine Zinch, Korn, Kislev. Some combination of those three factions. Kislev has a decent trade against Ogre Kingdoms, actually. You can use all the Kossars with Spears. Um, you know, their cavalry are quite good against Ogre Kingdoms, War Bear Riders, uh, Winged Lancers are really good against basic Ogre Bulls. They have good missile shooting and hybrid units to actually fight back against Gorgers. I feel like Kislev should be used more often against Ogre Kingdoms. I don't know where they're not. Little Grom is also very good too. Little Grom is incredible against those guys. Lion say, says, I'm finding it hard to play ranked right now because I'm both new to the game and my favorite factions are both Cathay and Nurgle. Yeah, Nurgle is one of my favorite factions too. Being a Nurgle main is kind of like being a High Elf main in Warhammer 2. Like, High Elves, the High Elf lifestyle was just, like, suffering and then occasionally getting a big surprise win. And, like, I feel like High Elf mains lived off that, like, that momentary hype they got from, like, a win, a big win in a tournament every now and then. And then they would just suffer for, like, a couple months. And then there would be, like, another big hype that, like, kept them going, you know? Yeah, that, that was, like, that was, like, the main thing. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. So what will we have here? The Menacing Platypus. Seeking Vengeance. Has anybody actually like seen a platypus in person? How big are they? They're not like that big, right? Are they actually friendly? Are they hostile? Are they like one of those things like geese that will like attack you and just be all ferocious? I've always kind of wondered about that. So Gorgers were single entities in tabletop. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I can see Gorgers being like a, like a hero character instead. I think mean, but I mean, I think it's too late now. I think they're going to stay in their current form. Because obviously they're a big part of uh, Scrag's campaign as like the core infantry unit. So, yeah. Yeah, kind of cool. I had a friend who played Ogres. Uh, he plays the Ogre Maw Tribes in Age of Sigmar. We had a pretty a couple of pretty fun games in LA. It was his, we played his Ogre Kingdoms and I played my Cities of Sigmar. But really, I just played them as Empire. So I had like Karl Franz. I had Demogriff Knights. I had State Troopers. It was really fun, actually. It was a super, super cool match with my old Empire boys. They have poison barbs, are you serious? Oh my god, that's pretty terrifying. Yeah, so there's only seven maps for Domination right now, but they're going to be adding more. I mean, it's not that different from Age of Empires 4, if you think about it. Like, Age of Empires 4 launched with, like, what, seven or eight maps? Yeah, like, a lot of competitive RTS games will start, like, when they first come out, we'll have a pretty small map pool, and then they expand over time, so. Fun fact, Platypus is venomous with a very painful sting. Dude, that's crazy, Romulan. Yeah, I would never have expected that. I would never have expected that. <laughs> they're adorable when they're little. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, a lot of things are, right? Yeah, Gorgers, Morngulls were kind of overpowered when they first came out too. Depth Guard were OP. Like, Vampire Coast was mega overpowered when they first came out. Like, probably just as bad as Ogre Kingdoms. And we had them in an ever-chosen tournament, just absolutely karate chopping everyone. The only time we saw the uh, Ogre... Like, I'm, I think in that tournament... Yeah, that was probably one of the best ever-chosens we had. It was so fun. Just in terms of having fun. Like, Vampire Coast was, like, super overpowered, right? They were, like, stomping everyone in this tournament. And then suddenly, Aerocrastic comes in and brings this, like, glorious Empire Cannon build with, like, the Banner of Fire and uh, Volkmar the Grim, I think. And he just crushed the Vampire Coast opponent. Just crushed. Yeah, it was, like, that was one of the cooler moments, for sure. So, do you, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm trying to see here. Oh, you're, ta you're talking to a Ledron. Got it. You've seen a platypus uh, in its final form, yeah. 
Yeah, interesting creatures for sure. We have a lot of wildlife here in town. Oh my god, it's a Zinch mirror match. Yeah. I kind of expected this to be honest. I'm surprised we're not seeing Kislev being picked. I think I think one of the players probably picked Kislev and maybe it was banned out or something, but it looks like we're gonna be getting a Zinch mirror, which has been very common in tournaments. We've been seeing people instead of taking a bad matchup like against these OP factions, like Zinch and Ogres, they're just gonna they're just gonna mirror match you. There's there's no other choice really. Yeah. That's kind of the jam. They also sweat milk. Oh my god, these facts are crazy. So we have uh, we have some crazy wildlife where I live. We we have raccoons, which are always out and about. Like every night, the raccoons are lurking in our backyard. Yeah, we have raccoons back there. We have a ton of squirrels. We have a ton of different bird species, like blue jays and red-headed birds, and uh, like mountain lions, bobcats, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. The raccoon raccoons are pretty adorable little creatures for sure. It's pretty trippy to see a raccoon like sitting there eating something with its little hands, like grabbing it. You know, it always like kind of trips me out. I'm like, oh man, it's like, yeah, they're getting getting in on that. I'm glad they nerfed Depth Guard. Yeah, Depth Guard was pretty brutal, but like, yeah, and deck hands. Oh my god, deck hands are pretty insane too. I'm trying to think how long it like Vampire Coast was overpowered for. I think, I think with that Ever Chosen, it got fixed pretty quickly because the Ever Chosen took place in the early access for the Vampire Coast DLC. So then I think Creative Assembly fixed it like right away before launch. So we were like in good shape. It wasn't quite like this where it's just like, we're probably gonna have a bit of suffering for, for a little while here, maybe like a month. Everyone's gangster until a raccoon tea poses on you. Yeah. We've got giant flying spiders in the Southeast. Oh my God, no. Don't even say that to me. I'm never gonna go there now. I Spiders are like my, my, my bane. I hate spiders so much. They freak me out. Oh, no. If one of those landed on me? Oh, man. Hey, Turin, who would you say is favorite in the Zinch for Zinch matchup? Um, whoever brings more blue and pink horrors is fa and, and Kindle Flame. That's the best way to play this matchup. You basically just go with, like, mass blues and pinks, and you use the Kindle Flame caster, the cultist, who has lure of fire, and then that gives your entire army, like, a 20% damage buff. It's pretty insane. Uh, Nakamura asking, is it legal to domesticate raccoons? Um... I, I think some states you can. I think in California it is for sure. I think in probably 80% of the states in the United States, it's illegal to have a raccoon as a pet. But I know there's a couple. I think in like Louisiana or somewhere, like I'm not sure. Maybe maybe Kentucky. There's, there's a couple states where there's not like any law against it. Yeah. But like we have we have some pretty friendly little raccoons for sure. I, I had a standoff against one. They're, they can be really, really like like brazen for sure. When I was in college once, I remember I was uh, I lived in an apartment and I was taking uh, I was taking the trash out to the dumpster, and as I approached the dumpster, there was just this T-posing raccoon standing in front of the dumpster, and he's just like, I, I I was like standing there with my trash bag, and he was just like staring at me and wouldn't like move, and I was like trying to get the trash in the dumpster, and he was like like making these sounds at me and just like being super aggressive. I was like, all right, buddy, I'm just gonna go back until you leave, and then I just came back like ten minutes later. Imagine if goblin spider riders could fly, dude. That'd be pretty scary. That would be so overpowered. Those units were already super good. More so in land battles. I don't know how good they'll be in domination mode, but it's something to consider for sure. Oh yeah, spiders freak me out. Spiders are pretty scary. So Medi says, yeah, they spin webs and, and catch the wind so they can fly by riding their webs. Oh my god. The apocalypse is truly coming. <laughs> Here comes the mirror match. It is going to be uh, very, yeah, see this play style here, like blues with the cultist to get the fire synergy is so good. Like, I feel like that's the favored build. So this is the platypus, basically just Forsaken, which are super good. They have spell resist, which is really strong. So like against any sort of Zinch magic, they're going to be incredibly durable. And on top of that, they are just great fighters for objectives. And we got blues and pinks and the cultist, you bring it as your Lord and you just spam spells. And what's really broken about the cultist, which I think needs to be nerfed pretty heavily, is the fact that if you bring a cultist with its bare bones kit, it costs like 600 gold. And it can summon a 700 gold unit, with a pa and it comes with a power stone too. So you summon it, you summon a unit of pink horrors, you activate the power stone, you get a ton of free winds of magic, and then you unsummon it, resummon it again, like within 30 seconds. And then you can summon another pink, and then another power stone comes with it. So you basically, with Zinch, can get infinite winds of magic. It's really, really uh, strong and definitely overpowered, I think. Uh, a lot of the competitive Zinch builds are using double cultists and they're just like dropping, getting the double power stone and the double pink horrors. It's it's insane. But uh, that's going to be the build. Very, very strong. 
And now over here for the forces of Hugo, a very different playstyle, which I'm curious if, curious if it's going to be having the uh, the punishing ability here. Is it going to be able to like punish this blob? I don't know. It does have a lot of uh, the Chaos Furies backed up by some Doom Knights. Doom Knights are pretty good against light armor for sure. We have a big chicken of metal. So final transmutation, even though there is spell resist here, if it's able to hit that whole blob, could be really good. Although you don't want to use it when the shields are up because the shields will absorb like 80% of it. And then from there, it's just going to heal and you'll have done nothing. You basically need to get these shields much, much lower before you go in for those big blows. So on the other side, we got blue horrors of Zinch more and more. And we do also more blues there. And that's pretty much the whole party. Yeah, the crew's hanging out. They're enjoying their best life and the exalted Lord of Change sitting. As far as reinforcements go, we see more blues being summoned in and more pinks, which is, I think, the way to go. And we do also get some pinks as well from Hugo. So the middle objective is going to be tar pitted pretty, pretty heavily here. But uh, also you have to remember that the Zinch player here, Hugo, uh, the pink Zinch player, is going to be very, very uh, strong with the final transmutation. Uh, did you see Anticity's video on the Flaming Chariot for single entities? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's, it's something we were doing a lot in the early beta. We were using the Burning Chariots to park over the top of SEMs and just snipe them. Especially with Gaze of Fate. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy indeed. Yeah. It is pretty crazy indeed. Crown Cert. You know, I, I know a lot of people didn't like Dawn of War 3, but I actually enjoyed that game. Like, I feel like if Relic had actually fleshed out Dawn of War 3, added more factions, um, and made it like more of a multiplayer-focused game, the campaign was pretty poor, and I think that's what turned a lot of people off. But I actually really had a good time with Dawn of War 3 PvP in the beginning. But it was very bare bones. I, I loved the way that the objectives were done in that. I thought that was pretty good. Um, I do think that the uh, they needed to add a couple more factions. Like if they had five factions instead of three, I think you could have had a nice little multiplayer scene. Like it had some really epic moments. I, man, it's such a bummer. Like so many RTS games are on the cusp of greatness. You know, you have games like Age of Empires and, uh, and Dawn of War 3 that like with a couple minor tweaks and a little bit more effort could just be masterful. And then they just like they kind of get abandoned, you know, and you just like you just see them go into the pits. And then like all of us RTS enjoyers, which, of course, are you know typically a much smaller niche within the gaming community are just left in the shadows. It's, it's really a shame. I enjoyed Dawn of War 3. I did. I also really liked Battlefleet Gothic. But again, that was more of like a, you know, a short term type game. But. Objective's going to be opening up here in about 10 seconds. So it looks like the Platypus is going to be holding Objective 2. And Objective 1 is, or 3, is going to be held by the Platypus as well. And that's kind of the thing about these wider Zinch armies, is just having, like, objective control is so strong with them. It's really tough to remove them. Like, the Doom Knights are certainly going to be struggling to find an engagement, as are the Furies. Like, I remember playing a Dawn of War 3 game, and I was playing against the In Control. And it was like some of the most fun I'd had. It was super cool. Like the, the drop pods coming in was really like impactful when you would drop the death company and like playing the orcs and getting the jump packs was like super fun. Yeah. I don't, yeah, no, it didn't even get patched. Dawn of War 3 basically got abandoned. Yeah, basically got abandoned. Yeah, absolutely. So back to the business here, focusing on the action at hand. We got the Forsaken on the edge of the map. Going to be screaming in, attacking the blue horrors and uh, certainly getting some nice work there. So we do get a bit of raining firepower coming in from the uh, other Zinch units. Doom Knight's going to be landing on the objective with the Furies going for a big Alpha Strike. But the Blue Horrors are deceivingly tanky. You can see the Doom Knights on the charge don't even get through the HP of the shields. And uh, honestly, the shields might start regenerating if they don't take a little bit more damage. And yep, objective 2 and 3 are being held by the Platypus while the Zinch forces of Hugo are trying to push their way in. But it's going to take a hot minute to wrestle this objective for sure. My experience in this matchup has been is that if you go for a more elite Zinch build, if you go for, and I actually played this against Ice Power Total War, we had a pretty interesting matchup. He did the very wide build. Although he didn't use the Forsaken of Platypus, he basically went for like a mass pink and blue build with the Occultist spam and uh, really was able to just lock down the objectives. And I went for a more elite kind of gooning build and I really wasn't able to do too much. In this case though, value is trading pretty even and that's exactly what the Platypus wants. Platypus does have the Kindle Flame active. So the entire army here of Zinch for Platypus is going to be getting a damage spike. Anything that does fire damage is going to be getting buffed up. And now look at this. On the back objective as well, due to the fact that its proximity is very, very close here for the Platypus, Platypus is able to come in and take this and push off the blues. And it looks like the other blue horrors will be taken out here as well by some Forsaken. And that looks like it's going to be a triple cap. Clearly, uh, he's very familiar with the Zinch mirror match. And this is like the meta. I think both players are going to be doing that. Nakamura is saying, I think it's wrong to abandon games when you're 90% of the way to success. Tough life for RTS folks. I agree. We kind of see that with a lot of games. Like, I've heard similar things about Spellforce 3, 
Like I've heard it's really good, but it just doesn't get much support from the developers. I've, I've been told that by folks I'm friends with. I've had uh, a lot of folks who I met in the Age of Empires community who said the same thing. They're, they're like, I played Spellforce competitively, but it just wasn't like supported very well. And it's a shame because they're always like on the cusp of greatness. Yeah. And like Total War in many ways kind of has been like, I mean, Total War was a single player game and we made a really cool multiplayer community. We've certainly come a long way. So I'm excited to see what the future holds, especially when we get all the uh, old world factions added back. I think a big thing about Domination Mode 2 is I think once we get all the old world factions added in, it'll be much more dynamic. Like the matchups in the meta is certainly already quite stagnant with the certain factions just being so egregiously uh, stronger. But again, there still are some very fun matchups every now and then. But yeah, triple cap here for Platypus. Platypus is up on value. And just like we articulated here in the beginning, the wider shooting build is exponentially stronger than the more elite build. The Doom Knights were pretty much next to useless. They didn't do much of anything. They just tar pitted on the objective. They have no capture weight. And honestly, they don't do enough damage to really even get through the Zinc Shield. So it looks like a nice bombardment going to be coming down here. I think that's the Searing Doom. That was a really good cast there by Hugo. But Hugo is down by about 1,000 value and is being triple capped right now. 100%. So the Dreaded Triple Cap is here. Like, there are some flying units here. We have the Big Bird and we have some Furies of Zinch, I think. Or no, just basic Chaos Furies from the Herald. But there's no way for them to capture the objective. Like, none whatsoever. And this is a beautiful play by Platypus. If you guys are, like, playing Domination Mode, it's really, really important to actually stuff objectives. So as these pinks try and move on to the objective here, the Chaos Furies of Zinch are going to be able to just keep them back off the objective. And it's getting to the point where it's going to be a triple capper or, or go home. And uh, I think that's going to be happening very, very soon. And it's going to be tough to remove this entrenched position of all these shooting units. Zinch is uh, actually one of the tankiest factions in the game. Even though, you know, Nurgle's supposed to be the tanky faction, like, Zinch is way harder to remove. Nurgle, you know has light armor and no sort of like passive healing on their units. And Zinch is just like passive healing, great shooting. Loose formations makes them very, very tough to shoot because missile traditional missile attacks against loose formations aren't super good. And artillery is also quite terrible against Zinch. Uh, I mean, the, the the fire rain rocket is okay, but it's too expensive and uh, too easy to shut down. So Zinch is just so tanky and tough to remove. Like once they get they're they're good at pushing you off objectives and taking them, which is one of the reasons why they're so strong. Nakamura saying Spellforce 3 is awesome. They basically remastered the original campaign. Just needs marketing, but it seems to not happen. Yeah, it's the nature of the beast, man. It's the nature of the beast. Up here on the hills, menacing Platypus using the Forsaken to great effectiveness. They've been excellent this uh, this battle. I don't know about their value, but they've been able to push back these forces very, very effectively. The Forsaken were able to peel the back objective. And this looks like it could be not quite a shutout per se, but certainly going to be a, a borderline uh, shutout here as the third objective is still not being taken by Hugo. Hugo trying his best. Pushing on to the Forsaken of Zinch. We do get more and more of the pinks moving on. And it looks like Platypus is going to be rallying some reinforcements over here. Uh, you know, pink and blue horrors aren't slow either. They have 38 speed. They look slow just because of the way they move. But they're actually pretty quick. Uh, Nurglings, I think, have 30, like 30 something speed. 32 or maybe it's a little bit more like 36. Nurglings are pretty quick as well. But yeah, that is it. What is the best way to learn to counter units? Uh, just practice and repetitions and learning matchups and all that sort of good stuff. So... The big Exalted Lord of Change, the chicken is being cooked a little bit by some of the shooting here in the back. We have 4,000 points, so it's a triple cap, and it's virtually impossible. So I think in other RTS games, like if this were like Age of Empires or Warcraft 3, you would pretty much know you had been karate chopped at this point. You'd be like, okay, I am, I'm done for. Uh, <laughs> that's game blouses. I'm going to withdraw. Like I lost the main engagement, but I think Total War players haven't quite adjusted to leaving games early until like army losses kick in. Because this game has been over for a while. And I, like, I wouldn't hate it if the people just, like, withdrew from the game here, you know? Uh, up in the high ground, we do have pink horrors and blues, like, trying to push on the middle, but, like, a beautiful roadblock. And like I said, Zinch units take a long, long time to remove. A long, long time. Uh, Turin, is Zinch versus Zinch the only balance? Okay, so Zinch actually gets hard countered by, uh, by Kislev. Kislev is incredible against Zinch, but in a tournament, players get one pick and one ban. So unless somebody picks Zinch into Kislev, Kislev is always going to be banned for Zinch because otherwise Zinch beats Ogres and Zinch has a favorite matchup versus everyone else. Everyone else. Um, like Zinch might have some troubles with Corn if it's a really good Corn player, but I think Zinch is still favored there. 100%. Yeah, Nurglings have 34 speed. That's what it is, yeah. So yeah, GG well played. That is going to be a victory for the dreaded Platypus. A 2-1. And Platypus will move on to the Grand Finals. So if you guys are getting used to this uh, Zinch mirror match, now you know what to do. Use a build like this. It can either be Forsaken. You can cut two Forsaken, get some more pinks. Whatever works best for you. But the Cultist build is way better than the more elite build. And uh, I think uh, Hugo learned that today. Great series. Very well played to Hugo. I've seen Hugo playing on ladder and doing very well. He's a very, very solid player. And Platypus, of course, is a, a finalist from before. So no small feat. 2-1 series. There you go.
Maybe his game will crash. Never surrender. Yeah, absolutely. So now through the power of technology, we are going to go update our bracket. Brackets for the bracket gods. And Platypus will advance to the grand finals to face the winner of Void Lulls and Big Bs. All right. So here we go. Let me go ahead and grab those players. Let's find it. And uh, we'll get them in here. All right. Thanks for playing. Now it is time for the next best of three. It is going to be a duel of fates. Some top players. I've never seen big Bs, actually, I don't think. Unless it's somebody playing under a smurf or something, which I usually have rules against, but you never know. There's a lot of... That's a, that's one of the big positives about Domination is it's brought in a lot of new people who... You know, the Warhammer 2 meta before was really hard to get into. Like, land battles are certainly a much bigger learning curve. Uh, Domination has been really good for getting a lot of people into the multiplayer scene, so I think it's pretty great. And we'll see who joins first, and we'll go from there. Uh, Shy Guy says, do you think Zine Shields need to be toned down in multiplayer? Yes, I do, 100%. I think you either uh, increase the recharge time on the shields, or you make it so you increase the recharge time, and you make it so the um, the shields only block a certain percentage of damage. So like maybe the shields only block 80% of incoming damage, because like right now, poking Zinch is worthless. I've had games where I get a mortar shot on Zinch, it takes their shields down, and then they just heal back up to full. Before the artillery can hit them again. Like, it's it feels so bad. And, like, poking Zinch with magic is, is pointless. If you poke Zinch with magic, it's like... They just heal before you get to do damage to them. You have to, like, wait till the shields are down. It really, like, gives them a ton of agency. Yeah, so I think I think the shields need a pretty big nerf. Like, either, like, a re much slower recharge time, a cap on the recharge amount, or, uh, or, like, it doesn't block all the damage. But I'm putting together some patch notes that I think we're, I'm going to be submitting, so hopefully those will be helpful. I'm, I've been meeting with a lot of really high-level players who have been making it to the top of these tournaments, and uh, yeah, trying to get some good feedback for you all. All right, so loading back on over to the lobby, let's go ahead and do the, uh, we can do not the Galleon's Cove. We have not done, we did do Death's Pass. We'll do Crossing of the Sea of Claws. It's actually a really fun map. All right, so map set. So they can do their picks and bans, and uh, we'll hang tight and enjoy each other's company. Nakamura thinks we're getting rot flies from Big Bs. A very ambitious thought to think that we will see Nurgle in the Grand Finals. Um, we did have, you know, interestingly enough though, in last the last Domination tournament we had, we did actually have a Nurgle mirror match, which was really weird. That was a super good game. Like last the last week's Domination tournament, we had some amazing games. There was a really good series between Void Laws and Evenstar. It was, uh, it was very, very strong for sure. Yeah. Yeah, the shields definitely need some rework, though. So. Are demons allowed? Uh, no, not not at this point. I think when like maybe the old world gets added, like I need to do more playtesting with demons to see if I want to allow them in my tournaments. But um, it would be interesting because it could mix the meta up a little bit. That's like the main thing, reason why I'd want to add demons of chaos. Yeah. But in land battle tournaments, I'm like demons of chaos don't seem overpowered in land battle tournaments, actually. Because you know their whole roster is lightly armored, so it's not that hard to build against them. And they're still strong, though. Like, Bellicor is really good. Bellicor is like an unholy terror. That bad boy just causes a ton of problems. Thank you all for joining, by the way. It's been a fun stream so far. We've had some uh, interesting matches. Ogres just dominating and uh, some mirror matches at the end there. It looks like it's going to be Kislev for Big Bs facing off against Ogre Kingdoms, which I think is in a decent matchup. I think it's Ogre favored for sure, just like every single matchup in the game except Zinch. And, uh, but Kislev can fight back here. They have some tools. <clears throat> yeah, Void Laws versus Evenstar was really fun. That was a great matchup. Evenstar was playing today, actually. If I'm not mistaken, he got eliminated in the first round, which was super trippy. First or second round. I don't know if I've seen the Big B. Let's see what the Big B will bring. Void Laws, of course, has won countless tournaments. We've seen Void Laws uh, do very, very well. Demons with no mortal seems much weaker than I expected. Yeah, they're they're good, but it's not like it's not like OP by any stretch. Who would win an OBS feed Total War tournament? I would for sure win that. I'm the only one with any experience there. Is the website working? Almost, Adam. Almost. I like we're we're fine tuning it this weekend, and then it should be up by the beginning of next week, like Monday or Tuesday. I've been trying to get better at Total War Warhammer since I keep getting uh, stomped on by my friends. It's just repetitions, man. It's just like any other RTS game. Just get those reps in, and you'll be you'll be all good, you know. 
I wouldn't say lead belters are OP. As a matter of fact, I think lead belters are one of the more balanced units on the Ogre Kingdoms roster. I think that man eater pistols are exponentially more overpowered, uh, as are gorgers and uh, iron blasters. Yeah. Um, so rusty, basically how that's going to work is like when, when I am able to provide it, 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 I'll send it. So it's just kind of like, you know, a savings being built up there. Yeah. What's the demon concern? So the concern with the demons of chaos is they have access to every single demons roster. So theoretically they could take the best from each roster and have like a superhero force. But in, in my experience in, uh, in land battles, demons of chaos aren't really that OP, but in domination mode, demons of chaos the games I played them, they seem very strong. Because what Demons of Chaos do is they bring Bellicor, who's like a freakishly strong, borderline overtuned. They bring a mass army of Zinch units, so they just bring pink and blue horrors, and then they use like Cornhounds. That's that's what you see. You don't see any Nurgle units being used, because Nurgle units are pretty trash. Um, so you're just seeing Zinch units, and you're seeing corn like corn demons being used with uh, with Zinch, and it's really really strong. Yeah, yeah, Rusty, exactly. How many gorgers are allowed? Two. There are two. Hey, Nick. Nick Rosale, appreciate that, man. Some kind words. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the old world in domination. I think that's really going to be super fun. And in land battles, too. Like, I think the old world factions, many of them will be quite a bit better than what we're seeing now. Like, just because the rosters are much more developed. But as we get content for the demons and things like that, I think we're going to be seeing some really interesting metas. Uh, Lich109, I don't think I don't think I was. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's the case, like in the beginning. I think in Warhammer 2, I did say Maneater Pistol sucked because as a mercenary unit, they weren't good in land battles. But with the Ogre Kingdom's roster and everything having like 54 speed, and uh, yeah, I, I don't remember talking badly about Maneater Pistols though. Maybe, I was talking badly about basic Maneaters, which I think is a fair criticism, but I don't remember talking poorly about Pistols. Could I get a link to the Discord? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to get you a link. Hang tight, my friends. Anybody who wants to participate in multiplayer, now or in the future, this is the place to be. We uh, got a lot of tournaments going. There's a section at the top of the Discord called Upcoming Tournaments, where you can see my tournaments as well as uh, folks in the community. So like if you guys want to play in a land battle tournament, tomorrow we have uh, my son, Herbert Walker. He's running a land battle tournament, which I might play in myself. Uh, there's a 2v2 domination mode tournament on Sunday being hosted by, uh, uh, Quaden. So yeah, like there's constantly events going on. There's constantly events. Not all of them like stream, you know, some, some folks just like host the tournaments, but don't like show them. But, um, yeah, there's, there's always some goodies going. There's always some goodies. All right. Perfect. And now we're loading in. It is going to be Slanesh versus Ogre Kingdoms. I wasn't sure if they were set on that, but we have seen Ogre Kingdoms lose before, especially on this map. I would say this map is excep exceptionally good for Slanesh. The line of sight blocking for the Ogre shooting, the flanking opportunities, and all that sort of good stuff. Granted, there are a fair amount of choke points. Uh, Matthias has been sick and absolutely miserable. Hey, man, I'm, I'm, glad that, I'm glad the streams have been helping you get through it. Hope you feel better quick. No, there's a new season of Uhtred, Son of Uhtred. I haven't seen that. Oh my god, I, I gotta tell. I gotta tell the lady, my wife and I. That's one of our favorite shows. We will. We love that show. Ah, okay, Red. Well, in that case, I've, I've changed my. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then I was completely wrong about that. Okay, so there's a desync, which often happens. So what we'll do is, uh, hang on. Yeah, I got a screenshot of their builds, and build and build. So once they rejoin. The desync will no longer be a problem. Okay, so we got it rehosted. And we'll do this. And let's get those bad boys. And get them to rejoin. I'm just letting him know to rejoin. Cool. So they're on their way back in, and we'll uh, we'll get this going here. Hopefully, they join in the same spot. And the map was going to be crossing of Sea of Claws. Cool. So we'll get started here in a second. 
Do you think that the bloated uh, bloated boys from Vampire Coast will be good in Domination? No, I don't think so. I think they'll be okay. Yeah, like you could surprise somebody. Like I can see Vampire Coast taking a bunch of the bloaty boys and like trying to push you off an objective. Like that's what's so exciting, seeing the theory crafting of all the old world factions. Yeah, I think that's going to be really, really fun. Void Laws has been so strong lately. Not only lately, but Void Laws was like at the end of Warhammer 2, he was winning like almost every tournament. Like at least like... You know, like two of two of the four tournaments he would play in a month, he would win. You know, he was he was a real, real world beater, for sure, and still is. Clearly, I mean, Void Laws won last week, I think, versus Evenstar. Yeah, very, very close series. Or no, it wasn't versus Evenstar. Evenstar was in the top four. Yeah, he won the grand finals pretty decisively, three one versus Ulrich Roll. Yeah. Man eaters have man eater pistols have shooting while moving now, do they? Oh yeah, yeah, I think they do. All right, so players will load in. Uh, you never desync twice in a row, which is very strange. I don't know why that is, but I would imagine it's on the uh, list of things for CA to fix. So hopefully that'll be something that gets fixed. There's been quite a few desyncs. Like even in the uh, official tournament we held, the Chaos Clash, like we had desyncs like every single game in that one, but it, it got better since then. Yeah, I think bloaty boys could have some teeth, especially since they have Vanguard deployment, I think. So you can, I think you can Vanguard bloat boys and that would make them pretty decent. Like. If you're playing a melee faction like Korn and they just have like some halberds guarding an objective, oh my god, that's so exciting to think about actually. Yeah. It would be awesome to see a bloaty boy take out an entire objective for sure. For sure. That would be huge. Yeah, how is Slanesh going to deal with bloats? Okay, Slanesh will have to use cultists. A cultist and lords. If Slanesh can use their cultists and lords to take him out, that's going to be pretty strong. Yeah, the Man Eater Pistols seem quite a bit stronger than they were in Warhammer 2. I agree, because I had used them in Warhammer 2 in, like, like joke battles, and they seemed uh, they seemed pretty uh, pretty pretty poor back then. Uh, high Elves might not be that bad in this game mode. Like, I honestly think High Elves will be a lot better than some of the factions we have now. Like, High Elves will 100% be better than Nurgle and Cathay. Like, 100%. You know? Uh, so I, I think that'll be pretty good for them. Like they have, they have good chariots. They have good blobs. They have, um, they have some elite units that can hold objectives. They have really good gooning potentially, like with phoenixes. I think when you make the game mode a little bit smaller, like with like smaller starting armies, Hiles might become stronger. Mm. Yeah, Optimus fine. That would be going to be awesome. Park an Ironbreaker unit on each capture point. <clears throat> So for this build here, we do have the double cultists of Slanesh, which are going to be dropping, as you would expect, cultists, uh, or excuse me, uh, demonettes, yes. Spears into the sunset, and we got Hellstriders and Heartseekers, or Basic Seekers on each side. Yeah, so just looking to play the flanks. Ogres are going to push up in the middle, as they usually do. Slanesh will play the flanks, and you just try and catch the Ogres out of position when they uh, transition over it. Now, the burden of efficiency is much more on Big Beast here. I think Ogres can kind of just mouth breathe a little bit and do as they please. But, like, if Slanesh plays like a god, they can certainly win this matchup. We've seen Ogres lose a couple times in some very, very close games in this matchup. So this is the first game. Did I update the scorecard? Yeah, I did. This is uh, the second best of three of the day. We already had one. And this is the second best of three, and it's game one in that series. Dark Elves also might be okay. Dark Elves will uh, potentially be a player. I think Scourge Runners will be quite nice in this game mode. I think uh, I think their basic infantry, like Dread Spears, you know. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. We will have to see. So Hellstriders of Slanesh getting popped by the dreaded Ironbreaker in the middle. We do have a single Hunter and Scrag, Gorgers, and some Ogre Bulls. And no Noblars. So right now, the Slanesh player should know what the army is. Because what you can do, and the first thing I always do when I'm playing against an army with stock, is I look at the starting units they have, and I count how many units I can see. And then immediately I'll know they have Gorgers. Because you can do the quick mental math in your head and know that it's not Trappers, it's Gorgers, based on the uh, numbers. So that'll give you some pretty good intel on them. But again, you can always assume that most Ogre players are going to be bringing two Gorgers anyways now. The first unit of Spears kind of sitting here, eating the shots of the Iron Blaster, which is relatively cost-effective for Slanesh, just to, you know, have the ammo wasted on, like, a cheap Spear unit. The main thing you want to do if you're Big Bs is make sure that your Cultists and your expensive Cavalry don't get hammered by those uh, Iron Blaster shots. Now, objectives will be opening up soon. Slanesh is parked down on the low ground objective here. Hellstriders of Slanesh hiding behind this rock face. And here come the old Marauder Spears. Should be able to get that objective. I think Ogres will obviously contest two and one. That's a much easier play for them to have this like really nice path between them. Whereas this objective is a little bit more kind of convoluted down here and seems a little bit further away, even though it isn't. I think that this is uh, this is the way you want to go. 
So Marauders of Slanesh moving in. We do have the Ogre Bulls as well as the Gorgers. Screaming on across. Scrag the Slaughterer here is uh, is holding the middle objective. And Slanesh, Slanesh can often give up control of objectives early and just try and alpha strike you in certain positions for value. So value trade, and then they can play the objective game as well. Slanesh certainly has a couple options for that. And I think this is the best play hands down. For Slanesh, you alpha strike this position. You kill all these Ogres and the Gorgers. You roadblock this avenue here with a summon or a spear unit and you just prosper like that is 100 percent the play so the slow ground objective is going to be taken slanesh has currently 2300 banked up so i'm surprised we're not seeing more summons coming out but the spears have saturated in and now the hunter is going to be hustling across but ogres are summoning more reinforcements i don't know what slanesh is waiting for i feel like they're going to lose this fight simply because they're not bringing more units in now the hellstriders get a good charge anti-large into iron fist is pretty good and the Seekers of Slanesh charge into Gorgers, which obviously isn't going to feel great. We are getting a Cult to Summon in 2700. What is this Slanesh army doing? This is, I mean, they're trading pretty okay in value considering, but like Slanesh could have a couple Heart Seekers here right now, like two of them. They could be doing some big damage. Like you, you don't want to mess with the mess with the bull here against Void Laws. And now we get Hellstriders Riders and Chaos Furies. Maybe he was banking and waiting to try and surprise Void Laws. But with Slanesh, you have to, there's a lot of finesse. Because if you take too long, like now the Ogres have gotten their Lords in here, which of course didn't really need to happen. Slanesh is fighting kind of a losing fight here, and the Ogres are, you know, crawling ahead on value here. It is one to one on objectives, and it looks like they're going to be rotating towards the middle with a big Alpha Strike. So potentially they can do something, but you can't really Alpha Strike Gorders. They're, they're too strong. And with the healing on the table, it's going to be a lot of problems. So we do get the Hellstriders move again, getting good damage against the Ogre Bulls, but the Ogres can respond pretty quickly. They're a very fast faction, 54 speed, and Slanesh is being folded like a piece of paper up here. The uh, Cult is here being absolutely slammed by the Hunter, as well as the uh, the, the big man himself, the, the Lord of Triple Chins, Scrag. And the other Cultist is going to be hustling back to the middle. Slanesh Fury is also decent against the Iron Blaster, and it looks like some of the Slaneshi cavalry, the Hellstriders, is going to be trying to jump on top of the Iron Blaster here, while we do get some Cav from the other side. Seekers moving across, and Spears are being left to defend that point. Now, Slanesh did have two objectives for a minute, but it looks like the Ogres are going to be taking control of that one. I think you really need to see a roadblock in this avenue to make sure to, to keep the Ogres back. Ogres are up by about 1,600 value right now. And down here, the uh, the Gorgers just tearing them to shreds. No surprises. Spears, of course, moving in, but Gorgers took almost no damage from that. And uh, yeah, this this game, you know, it, it's much... I feel like it's much easier in Domination to call these games quickly. Uh, you know, I, I, I feel like this uh, has already gone... Well, I guess that's more of a Slanesh thing, too. Because the Furies get an okay engagement here. We do get a Cultist Summon coming down. Where is that going to go? Like, I think you got to roadblock this avenue. Because if the Ogres pour through here and just slam into what little resistance you're giving in the middle, I think that's going to be game blouses. And now there's a 2,000 gold lead. I think the Ogres are in such a commanding position right now. Uh, it just feels like Slanesh... The Slanesh banking of points was cool, I guess. But with the way they played, it wasn't. Because trying to take a forward aggressive fight here... You needed to use that 2400 bank you had to try and win that fight. Because in that case, it was just like the starting Slanesh force versus a reinforced ogre position, you know? And uh, it just wasn't wasn't enough, really. So Furies are swarming from all directions. Uh, more and more Gorgers coming in. I could have sworn he already had two on the battlefield. We'll have to double check after the fact. But we do have one Gorger here. And uh, I guess that actually was just his second Gorger. Yeah, I'm not seeing his second one. So I could have sworn he had already had two on the battlefield. But yeah, Slanesh getting hammered pretty good. Iron Blaster is alive. The Cultists are very much kind of like a build that is uh, designed to, you know, win these early engagements quickly. And if, if they blow their payload, you know, Slanesh is all about that stuff. Uh, and they don't get what they're looking for. It's going to be a really, really tough fight. Now, the Hunter here is being surrounded by the Demonettes as well as the Furies, taking a little bit of damage. Up on the high ground objective, we do have some Marauder Spears battling against uh, what appears to be Ogre Bulls and Iron Fists and some Trappers. Clearly going to be losing that fight pretty badly here. And uh, the objective is being contested by Slanesh, but certainly not going to be enough as the Chungus Kingdoms are now pouring in. We have a full health unit of Gorgers, probably one of the worst feelings in the world to see. And uh, they're going to be just pouring in and just absolutely tearing the Slanesh army apart. Slanesh is doing an okay job of keeping with the value here. They're holding on like to their, their, their deficit, like it's not getting worse, but it will start getting worse soon. And Slanesh is really one of those factions that's like either steamrolls you and, and like wins quickly or they get they lose the fight and then they just like can't come back. Hunter is quite good too. He's got that nice anti-large. So against all the Slanesh cavalry, he's going to be able to drop some serious shots. As some ogres do fall, but the Hellstriders and Seekers and all those bad boys are going to be forced back. Big value lead here for Void. And looking up into the hills, we have the Cultists of Slanesh battling ye old ogre bulls as well as these Iron Fists. Still not going to be able to get through. More and more Slanesh cavalry. I like this. Seekers could actually crumble this position. Definitely should send those in right now. That's a lot of free real estate. Maybe that objective could be contested, but right now the ogres are pretty far ahead. 
in terms of points. Yes, ogres are favored in every single matchup except Slen except Zinch. Zinch is the only one that like probably ogres don't want to play because uh, Zinch is really strong too, and the Zinch blue horrors can actually defeat them. Like I've been playing quite a few land battles on Anticity's ladder, and every time uh, you know, every time somebody, I always whenever I pick ogres, I'm always facing Zinch. And uh, it's a really, really hard matchup. It's actually Zinch favored, like 100%. Even in Domination, it's the same thing. So, two objectives being held. Slanesh is moving out with some Marauder Spears to try and maybe grind them down. Um, value is still being held to 2,000. Seekers here get a nice little fight. Cultists uh, helping out as well. Maybe you're going to be able to hit these Noblar Trappers. I, like, maybe a Shimmer of Hope for Slanesh. With the speed and mobility they have on the table, like, there's maybe an opportunity for them to secure some of these high ground objectives. The Noblar Trappers are deceivingly tanky as well, so those guys are able to hold on like absolute champions. And looking down here, a couple Spears and Marauders moving in, but just getting Iron Blasted in the face. Gorgers are uh, damaged, but still very functional. Fury's going to be rotating around the top. Slanesh going to be going for the flank objective play. They do have a nice little stranglehold on three, though. They do have their spears here. And some Hell Striders, you need to unsummon those. If you guys, if you just leave them here, you're going to be in uh, kind of poor shape for sure. More and more Marauder Spears fighting. Cultists being beaten down. Slanesh able to potentially overwhelm this top objective. We do have a couple Ogre Bulls fighting who are shaken. But now the Ogre Tide is going to be moving up and through. Nice Narcissism use. So Slanesh actually used the Narcissism to lock down the Gorgers that were trying to make their way across. And uh, that is going to be pretty strong. Troll Guts being used by Scrag to heal them up. That's incredibly powerful as well. Troll Guts is a really, really big heal. It costs a ton of Winds of Magic, but it is uh, very, very functional for sure and gets the job done. But is there hope for Slanesh to capture this objective? I think if Slanesh captured Objective 1 soon and was able to hold it to the rest of the game, there would maybe be a chance that Slanesh could have a comeback here, which would certainly be super impressive. I mean, that would be pretty big. But I mean, they're, they're getting a little bit danger close to the point where they would need a triple cap. It's... Getting very, very close to that. Very, very close. We got some Furies in here, Char Pitting. Seekers of Slanesh fighting against Saber Tusk Packs. Should have a pretty decent fight. The Cultist here also uh, does not have any summons, but still is a decent combat presence. Does have a bonus for his infantry, which is pretty useless against Ogres, although decent against Noblars and things like that. And the Gorgers are being swarmed by Haggard Furies, while the objective is now going to be taken by Slanesh here. Very, very impressive play, but the Ogres are also threatening the back objective, and Slanesh is going pretty deep and trying to get that... Uh, that top objective, so probably don't have the elements to hold these back. But Marauder Spears, I would be super surprised if they actually lost to these trappers. I would be super, super surprised. You know, it's kind of interesting. Noblar trappers have like a mortise engine type effect. Yeah, look at that. They do damage per second, which seems a little bit, a little bit crazy. Yeah, I did not know that. Wow. Maybe maybe that's why Noblar trappers always trade so well. They have their little traps doing damage over time. So, Hellstriders of Slanesh going to be charging into something they theoretically should be very, very good against, which are Gorgers, but uh, they're probably still going to lose that fight. Big Surround here, double Hellstrider on them. Okay, the Surround might be able to do it, since you have two of them surrounding the Gorgers, but look how quickly the Gorgers melt those units. Uh, going to be some sort of a spell from the Hunter. That is the activated item on the Hunter, the Cannonballs, and Slanesh trying to pour in, but man, they didn't quite get the objective. Good play there by the Ogres, making sure to hold that down. So, the Unsummoned mechanic basically sends the unit back to your, uh, your pool. It heals them. And after a period of time, you can resummon them. So if you have like a really beat up unit, like that isn't providing you anything on the battlefield, you should unsummon it to bring it back to your pool so you can resummon it later. It, it kind of refreshes the unit. If you unsummon a unit that has like close to full health, uh, you also get a partial refund in terms of its cost. But that's GG there. That was pretty much Lanesh's last hope, like trying to capture that objective there, but the Ogre Kingdom's able to just crump. Uh, still though, really impressive by Big B's keeping this like value kind of close, but it is unfortunately right now a triple cap opportunity for the... Uh, for Slanesh, it's what they have to do. They have to get the triple cap. The little Noblar Trappers here do end up losing. The Saber Tusks also going to be losing that fight. And uh, Slanesh, any opportunity for them to get the middle? They do have a couple of Marauder Infantry and some Furies coming down here, but a triple cap seems very, very impossible at this point. The Ogres have been fighting pretty hard to control all these objectives and certainly have not been giving too much ground. They have not been giving much ground at all. So GG. That's got to be it. I don't see any way for Slanesh to come back at this point. The Ogres, once again, have dominated dominated their matchup. Although, this was actually a closer fight. I'm really impressed with Big B's play. 1,300, like, only down by 2,000 and still fighting to the bitter end and threatening the double cap, I think was really, really good. I think against a lesser player, like, here's the thing. Void Lols is, hands down, one of the best players in all of Total War Warhammer. Like, like potentially, like, a contender for GOAT status right now, right? Um, so... You have that being the case, like he's on the strongest faction and you're playing a weaker faction and you still perform that well against him. I think that's a huge testament to the play of Big B. So big shout out there, but that's going to be the end of the road. Slanesh has officially run out of steam. They have blown their metaphorical payload and that is going to be game blouses. Noblar's OP. 
Yes. Gorgers quite scary. They have a couple left, I think. Yeah, they're still here. We got five Gorgers here. I would imagine they didn't get crazy value, but it's more their staying power and their capture weight. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, 20, 2200 on this Gorger is really insane. Like, they're, they're not supposed to be that good against, like, light armor, right? But they are. Oh my god, these Gorgers. Yeah, it's crazy. They get a big damage buff from Scrag, because as Scrag gets more and more kills, Gorgers get a buff as well. So it's a pretty insane combo. And that's going to be game one in the second best of three. <laughs> yeah. Gorgers are heavily limited in the tournaments. There was a time in the beginning when you could bring four of them. Talk about Toxic. Yeah, Iron Blaster did good. It's just, uh, yeah. I think that game was actually winnable. I think that game was winnable for Slanesh. I think it was a huge blunder to not reinforce that side fight. Like, saving up the 2400 for the Juke. I, I saw the principle of it. Big Beast wanted to go to the middle and, like, surprise with, like, you know, 3,000 resources and surprise void. But I think... He took too much damage on that side fight and was just then too far behind on value. But after that, I think Big B's played super well. Void Lalzo again, showing the strength of the Ogres and claiming victory there. Galleon's Cove is going to be the next map. Let's see what the players pick, and we can go from there. Thank you all for joining once again, and let us see how much Shilnesh we're going to find. I want to see Nurgle. Who is going to be the hero that not only picks Nurgle, but wins with Nurgle? That is, that is the jam. Hmm. Hmm. Some delicious water right there. Damn. You would think the gluttonous nature of ogres would make them more vulnerable to Slanesh. Yeah. Yeah, but Slanesh isn't really offering food. Slanesh is offering other, you know, other types of pleasures. I think, I think the ogres are like, you guys don't have food for us? Okay, well, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, so that's the thing. Noblars and, like, are really cost-effective because they, um, not only do they last a while, but... Their capture weight is really good. So if you have like a Noblar, it has the same capture weight as like a Corn Warrior, right? So capture weight isn't based on the cost of infantry. So like two Noblars can outcap a Chaos Warrior of Corn for 400 gold against like 800 or 900. It's pretty insane. And then if the Chaos Warrior tries to chase you, you just run away and then like capture with the other one. It's really strong. Very, very strong indeed. Uh, PJ, it's something we've considered, but I, I'm, I'm hoping there will be a balance patch soon that addresses that. Uh, we haven't decided on Demons of Chaos yet, so in due time, in due time. Players are going to be doing their picks and bans here for the next match. We will see, and then we're going on over to the best of five. And uh, yeah, we'll hope for the best. We'll hope for the best. How do you suggest they nerf Gorgers? Uh, they could reduce the model count, because Gorgers have 16 models. If you took away like, you know, four or five models, like then they suddenly would be a lot weaker and easier to kill. And also giving them a cost increase as well. So I would like maybe reduce their model count and then make them cost like two or three hundred more. And I think you have a fair unit. Yeah. Alrighty. Cool, cool. Taking a look at some of the uh, patch note stuff that we're working on here. Pretty excited. Yeah, I've been meeting with a couple uh, strong players to get some patch suggestions so hopefully we can uh fine tune those trusty says i want a nurgle game in the tourney today sorry i can't represent yeah man trusty I i'm proud of you though props big props so big bees is going ogre kingdoms and void is going zinch so the battle of two very sweaty factions but you know i honestly enjoy watching this matchup i think it's fun because you have two really overtuned factions fighting so at least it's not like an underdog situation and uh, it's kind of interesting to watch for sure Void took a game last time with Nurgle. He needs to do it again. Uh, I don't think it's a secret weapon. I think he just picked Nurgle because Void Laws is like one of the few people in the community who trains in mirror matches. Like if Void Laws gets a bad pick and ban and doesn't like the options on the table, Void will often pick a mirror match and just like mirror match you and is like really good at them. That's happened to me against Void Laws before. I played I played against him in some uh, in, in some Swiss League stuff and uh, yeah, it was very strong. By the way, Swiss League is going to be starting this week, so that's going to be really fun. Basically, it's six weeks of competition. Uh, anyone's welcome to join. You play one opponent per week in a best of five, and the winner at the end of the six weeks gets a $100 cash prize. So I'm going to be starting that up, and uh, that'll be really cool. I really like Nurgle. I really do like Nurgle. The Swiss League will probably be uh, land battles, I'm thinking, though, because we've been doing a lot of domination tournaments, so I think I want to like you know make sure to cater to both communities because I really enjoy both formats, to be completely honest. Ledron, if somebody in the last matchup picks Nurgle, I'll give them 20 bucks. <laughs> oh man, the bribery. I, I don't think it's going to happen. 
uh, Aerocrastic says, do people voluntarily pick corn and ogres? Seems a little bit suspicious. Yeah, I know. I'm surprised. Maybe Void Laws has some scheme. I'm like, ogres are a hard, like a really good counter against corn. Basically what ogre players do is they just bring like double man eater pistol and just like shoot your halberds and spawn to death and kite you and then just run you over once you're weak. Like it's, uh, and Gorgers like just annihilate most of the corn roster too, except the cornate halberds actually are one of the few halberd units that trade okay into Gorgers from a cost perspective. So no, it's it's a different matchup, guys. We're actually getting corn, which I'm very excited for. So maybe Void just wants to give us a, a game three. We will see, or maybe Void doesn't have enough respect for the opponent's uh, ogres here. You never know. Twenty bucks for someone to pick Nurgle in the finals. <laughs> Can you play Undivided in Domination? No, not in our tournaments right now. No, because we haven't we haven't like see, tested. They they haven't really been tested to see if they're balanced yet. So, all right. So this is exciting. We get ogres versus corn. Uh, we, we get a little bit of an off-meta matchup here. Grandfather's uh, Grandfather does love us, yes. If I were playing, I would pick Nurgle for all of you. I would suffer. I would sacrifice myself for your enjoyment against the Ogre Kingdoms. Although, it would just feel bad. Ogres just absolutely annihilate Nurgle. Pretty much everything annihilates Nurgle, except maybe Corn. Yeah, Slanesh loses to Nurgle in, do in land battles. In domination, Slanesh dominates Nurgle, so yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like the man eater pistols, they kill spawn, they kill halberds, they snipe the big beasties. Like they're good against everything. And like even if you catch man eaters with corn hounds, the man eaters beat them in combat. So it's like it's like oh, it feels like you can do nothing against them. It's really hard, really really hard. I, I'm not sure what the corn answer is going to be from Void. Is it going to be the the double skull cannon? I uh, I don't think so. Skull cannons are pretty poor right now. Very weak unit. Very very weak unit indeed. Everyone thinks halberd to the way until they get gunned down by ogre scrap. Well, they kind of are though, because if you don't bring halberds, then like your other infantry just get shrekt by the ogres, you know. Like what? Do you, like lead belchers do like artillery style shooting, so shields don't help against them. I think can, are man eater pistols affected by shields arrow? That was a question I was wondering. Like it feel I feel like their shots are like almost like heavier, but yeah, I mean I mean I don't know. Maybe like shielded corn warriors to like surprise your opponent, and then like I don't know. Does Nurgle destroy Nurgle? Yeah, for sure. It's it's Nurgle's best matchup is the mirror match. Yes. It probably is, sadly. What would make Nurgle better except for some anti-large? So I have a lot of thoughts on Nurgle. Um, again, like I said, I'm putting together some patch notes right now that hopefully we can see some of them implemented. And Nurgle's getting a lot of buffs in those, for sure. Um, like cost reduction on some units. Plague. I think giving Plague Bearers passive regeneration would be a really, really good start for them. Nurglings need a cost reduction. Like, I don't see how a Nurgling can cost 350 and a Blue Horror, which is insanely better, can cost like 400. I think Nurglings need a cost reduction. Uh, Kugath needs some big buffs as well to give different playstyle options. There's a lot of things. But again, I'll have a video out soon once I fine tune those notes. Is Scarbrand useful? Uh, Scarbrand is amazing. Rampage is so good. But the Bloodthirst is really good too. They're both very strong. Turin, do you think Nurgle will see any mechanic updates? I think Nurgle will probably be buffed by DLCs. Like, there'll probably be a DLC coming, and Nurgle will get the get the goodies there. All right, so taking a look at the build for Void Lulls. Now, nor normally this is a matchup that most corn players avoid. It's double Fleshhound. Now, Fleshhounds are very good against Ogres. They defeat the Saber Tusks. They're really good against most of the Ogre roster. So, yeah, they're still a great choice. And then we have double Cultist. We have the Exalted Bloodthirster up in the sky and more corn dog. So it's literally triple corn dog and double Cultist. Interesting. Now, is he going to be trying to stuff the Ogres back here? And the Ogres did go for a pretty meta build. Yeah, double Maneater, double Bull, Noblars, Scrag, and an Iron Blaster. This is like, this is about as meta as you can possibly get. Many Ogre players, though, will sometimes not get the Iron Blaster and just get like another Maneater pistol instead. But um, yeah, this is this is very meta and very strong. Void Laws is going to be juking with the Cultist. Probably dropping a Bloodletter Summon here, which feels a little bit funky. I wonder if that's going to happen like right now. We have Corn Dogs moving in. And the, oh, sort of Antiheroes. Look at that, double sword of anti -heroes. 672 weapon strength on these guys. Moving in with iron blasters, and I would imagine there's gonna be some summons coming down as the corn dogs do charge into the ogres and do more or less no damage. Now, this is the problem. Fleshhounds do charge into the man eaters, but man eaters will actually defeat fleshhounds in combat. Unless the big bloodthirster maybe comes in and helps. So there's gonna be the first summon coming down, so there's gonna be one bloodletter summon. Corn dogs uh, still partially engaging. We get another corn dog coming in to try and swarm these ogre bulls. Might be able to get some work in there. 
And the big Exalted Bloodthirster does pop the Bloodthirst ability, which gives a pretty big charge bonus, and is able to get some big hurt on the Iron Blaster while now moving into the Maneaters. Now, as you can see, Maneaters, uh, I believe the Bloodthirster was helping there, but the Maneaters maybe didn't turn and attack the Corn Dogs quick enough, so it looks like Void might actually get the favorable fight here. And with the second Corn Dog coming in, he should be able to win this. And Scrag usually would use some sort of buffs to defend these, but Furies and Corn Dogs is pretty much the name of the game. As the uh, Bloodthirster obviously is more than up to the task of attacking the Maneaters, and there's no Gorgers back here. Typically, you would also see Gorgers like, be summoned in to kind of protect these units. But the Corn Dogs here, like I said, do lose to the Man Eaters, but get some decent damage in the process. The second summon is coming out right now, and the Iron Blaster is trapped up. And Void is even in value, but so too are the Ogres. The one big concerning issue for Void Lulls is that his army is going to run out of steam. So a little bit of a misplay there by Ogres. Using the Iron Fist ability on top of the summon units really isn't that great, especially considering they have spell resist. Should have been used or, you know, maybe use your Winds of Magic for, like, healing or something like that. But the Iron Blaster is free. The Greater Demon is back here causing some problems with some of the Corn Dogs. But the Maneater Pistols are now free. And you can see the Corn Dogs weren't able to quite kill them. They're very, very good in combat. And had there been a Troll Guts used on them, they wouldn't have lost probably a single model. So the Big Demon's going to be pulling back up in the sky. Big Bees is pulling ahead in value. And this this is a very, very good attempt by Void Lulls for sure. And... Maybe if he can goon this Iron Blaster here with the Demon. The Iron Blaster is pretty overexposed right here. It like really went to the danger zone. But these things are track stars. They have like 60 speed, which is really foul. So basically, Ogres have like huge mass on everything. So it's really hard to actually kill them because Ogres can uh, pin you off super well. And you can see the Corn Army is kind of crumbling across the board, right? The two Cultists are still fighting, but obviously the Demon units are summoned and uh, aren't going to be fighting for much longer. The Furies jump on top of the Man Eaters, but Man Eaters with high melee defense can just absolutely crush the... Uh, Crush the Furies. And yeah, it's looking like it's going to be an Ogre game again, guys. I uh, I think that was a really good attempt. But if some if someone of the caliber of Void Lulls, who's just like always really on top of like the sweatiest meta competitive builds. Like, he, I, I like this from Void Lulls. I like how he knows it's over and just like get, gets us on to the next matchup. But like, yeah, like he's one of the best players in the world. And like he can't like he can't deal with that. I don't know how experienced Big B's is, but that's just like that's so crazy. Yeah. GG. And Void, thank you for not sparing us, or sparing us like another 10 minutes of Ogres just pounding corn. That's going to be 1-1. One, one. And yeah, Maneater Pistols, crazy, crazy durable. Uh, you know, just everything was so strong. We had gor Gorgers in reserve as well. So um, yeah, that thing is fast as hell. There was, that was, oh, the game was over. The Maneater Pistols were just going to shoot the demon and then it was just going to be Gorgers after that. Yes. Yeah. Some of these domination games are over fast for sure, especially if you commit to a big Alpha Strike like that. Yeah, Ogres are super broken, Ulrich. It sucks for sure. In land battles, they're not quite as bad. In land battles, Ogres can be beaten. Like, much more efficiently, I would say. But in domination mode, Ogres are just so so gross. They're so gross. Oh! <laughs> o ogres counter their counters? No, Corn is not a counter. Corn is a weak matchup against uh, against them. So now we're in game three. I'm surprised we didn't see a Zinch, a Zinch pick there. I, I think that... He wanted to save Zinch for game three because he still felt as if his his Zinch might still lose to the Ogres. So he's saving Zinch for game three to like guarantee a victory, I think is what Void is doing. I think that's the plan. Yeah, Allegron saying exactly what I was saying. That's funny. I think Void Lulls intentionally threw against the Ogre matchups. Not intentionally threw, but he took a risky matchup. Cause like he was trying to win there. You know, he was trying to trying to win. Yeah. Would help if the starting armies weren't tiny, probably. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let us see what's going to be picked next. The old ogre kingdoms. Cackling in the sun. Just waiting. Yeah, ogres. Like, I'm trying to think. In land battle tournaments, I've had... So I've been playing a lot of best of threes in land battles on Anticity's Ladder, which is very competitive. And in my experience, Ogres have lost quite a few games there. Like, Cathay can actually beat them in land battles. Uh, Kislev can do good against them in land battles with Little Grom and a ton of, a ton of like, Kossars and Cavalry. Um, also, you know, Zinch can beat them too. Like, in land battles, Ogres aren't as bad. It's just domination. They're just really gross. Really, really gross. A Zinch mirror right now? Maybe so. Maybe so. Yeah, we could see Zinch. There were, there's going to be Zinch played in one capacity. Like, so right now the players do a blind pick, but they they get a, they both get a ban and they 
basically play from the remaining faction. So the odds of seeing Nurgle and or Cathay here... Oh, I need to switch the map. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the Broken Lake Gully. Yeah. Okay, map set. Uh, let me go ahead and tell the players. And uh, map set. Cool. So who will advance on to the Grand Finals here? It is the Broken Lake Gully. Could we see the dreaded Nurgle pick? Yeah, Kislev could be very much on the table here as well. We did see Void Laws pick Nurgle last week in the last Domination tournament that we had. How much do Maneater Pistols cost? Uh, like 1400 I think they should cost 1500 I think they need a cold increase. Yeah, they're really strong. Does Missile Mirror work on casted Missile spells? No, I don't think so. I think Missile Mirror only works on... Uh, yeah, it works on like artillery, like missile, missile infantry, that, that sort of stuff. I never actually tried that. Yeah, does Missile Mirror work on spells? I don't know. That's a good question. If it did, I don't think it'd be very good because it's a little bit too... Uh, if, it, if a faction cannot ban Kislev, they won't go Zinchir. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, that's that's good. Maybe we get we get, uh, we get get access to uh, Nurgle, which I'd be super stoked on. Do I think Nurgle will have any good matchups against the older factions? I think Nurgle might be a surprisingly decent pick against Vampire Counts, but my concern about Nurgle versus Vampire Counts in Domination Mode is that we will see... Um, we will probably see... We'll probably see Nurgle go for like a great unclean one blob in the middle. Okay. And then what happens is vampire counts just go for like blood knights and like zombies to like tarpet them there. And then they just like hammer the other two objectives and Nurgle won't be able to hold them because they have like crazy flying lords and really good summons. I I, I don't, I don't know who else, who, who can Nurgle, Nurgle might be good against like beastmen. Nurgle might be good against like Norska and warriors of chaos. Like any, anyone who's like a melee focused faction with very poor missile shooting, Nurgle might be good against. Yeah. It does if the spellcaster has a ranged attack. Okay, interesting. It does work on missile spells. Okay, very cool, guys. Thank you. I didn't know that. Yeah, I've never really, like... I usually only use it against, like, Iron Blasters and things like that. Like, Missile Mirror can win you the game against, like, Ogres for sure. If you pop it on an Iron Blaster and let it, like, two-shot itself, it can be pretty good. Yeah, I feel like Vampire Counts will still be favored. Like, they're just... Vampire Counts are so nasty. Okay, so we have Zinch versus Kislev. Wow, and Big Bees. I wonder if Big Bees knows this meta. Like, if Big B's just goes, like, Bear Chariot spam, Void Laws could be in danger, for sure. The dreaded Big B is here. All right. So it begins. Yeah, Will hey, Willow, how you doing, man? Hope you're doing good. Uh, mass summons, yeah. Absolutely. Vampire Count summons are going to be really foul on, on Domination Mode. Really foul. Because they're so cheap. Like, what do you have? Like, almost 100 wins of magic, and they cost, like, four apiece? You can literally bring three Vampire Casters with, like, Zombie Summons and just be, like, an unholy nightmare. Although summon units don't have capture weight, but it still seems very, very good. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Nurgle has the capacity to deal with Blood Knights either. I 100% agree, Guac. That's what I was just saying, is they'll just use Blood Knights to hit the flanks. The only way you could fight Blood Knights is probably with a great unclean one blob, with a Mortis Engine and his hard hitting and stuff, but um, it doesn't feel great. Yeah, it doesn't feel great for sure. All right. So Kislev versus Zinch. Wow. Void Law is getting picked into a corner twice. Like, this is a, a Kislev favorite matchup, but again, he's a very good player, so if, if somebody can make it work, he can. Is there a limit on Bariots? Uh, not at the moment. Bariots are something that's on the chopping block for potentially being nerfed. We're not sure, but yeah, we'll have to see. Please don't go for Chariot Spam. Well, Pedro, the thing is you kind of have to against Zinch. If you don't, you just, you're, that's like, it's the best way to play. Pendulum is banned too, though, so you can also go super wide with infantry. We'll have to see, but Bariots are really good. Guac, exactly. Exactly. All right. Here we are. Out of curiosity, how do you feel Bile Trolls, Plague Ogres, and Rot Knights, Monster Scav from the Tamarcon expansion would approve Nurgle's roster? I mean, if Nurgle got, if got some huge hard-hitting armor piercing from any of those units, dude, that'd be amazing. And Rot Knights would be so cool, dude. Oh my god. And Tamarcon himself? Like, yeah, that would like be a huge boon for Nurgle. That'd be a huge boon. 100%. Oh no, not the Bariots. It's going to be Bariots. Of course it is. Look at this. The Bariots are so good that the Kislev army brought a Bariot as its lord. So it's going to be one, two, three, and four. Uh, four five Bariots, one of which is a heavy war sled. We have a couple armored Kossars and then some basic Kossars, and that's it. And now, for the forces of Zinch, 
Definitely don't want to bring Forsaken here. Very risky. It's going to be blues, pinks backed up by the uh, Forsaken in the back. Forsaken will trade well against the infantry, as long as they don't get hit by the Bariots. And the Lord is going to be an exalted Lord of uh, Metal for Final Transmutation. Trying to punish the Chariot Blob. Quite curious. I mean, I think if we, I think if you have two equally skilled players, I think that this matchup is so, so favored for Kislev. But if Void Lulls, obviously with his countless tournament experiences, can summon the Micro of the Gods, maybe he'll be able to do it. No heals with the Chariot Blob. That's correct. But we also don't know what the reinforcements are for Kislev. They could summon in a Patriarch at any time and get the fat heals there and could certainly cause some problems. The dreaded sled spam. Hey, you know, bears are my favorite animal, so I do enjoy seeing them. And I have to say, anytime I can see Zinch get his butt kicked, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm definitely like, okay, well, you know, that, that's fine. Let's, let's Something can finally kill their blue horrors and stuff. But again, yeah, it's it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Heavy war sled's coming out. And uh, yeah, the variants are rolling. We do have the Kossars and Armored Kossars going for three. So what Kislev will do is they're simply just going to play the middle objective probably and just try and grind. What is the first summon going to be, by the way? Is it going to be a Patriarch for the healing? I feel like that would be a good idea. Because, you know, on this map, this is actually not bad for Zinch. Like, you can't really flank or surround them. They have, like, the, the little walls, the passage here, with which they can uh, they can hold the ground. Blue Horrors moving up, as are the Pink Horrors of Zinch. The Bear Sleds, thinking about creeping up and moving in. They're just sitting on the edge of the objective. And here they come. They are charging. We get Winged Lancers coming out. Winged Lancers could be pretty good for just shock damage. The bear shooting, quite nice, but again, you need to follow up and make sure to get through their shields because the shields will start recharging in 15 seconds. So you need to actually keep that damage consistent. Are the bear sleds going to go in there? It's a little bit risky. Like that shooting is quite nasty and Plague of Rust is quite good. Like if, if they overcommit and Plague of Rust goes down, one of the bear sleds could die very, very quickly here. So yeah, they get a little bit of damage. Yeah, definitely tickling the pickle of those units. Winged Lancers up on the high ground are sitting very defensively. Maybe just going to wait in the bushes here? Not sure. Kislev could also rotate up and go for... That would actually be my play right now if I were Kislev. So Kossar is going to start shooting. I would maybe consider going for objective one. Like get some winged lancers up there or something. Like when it starts to unlock. Because Zinch is going to have to commit everything in the middle to try and win this fight. So nice shooting there. Able to get through the shields of the chicken. But Void Laws, of course, is a very savvy veteran. Is going to be able to juke those shots. We do get some Forsaken pushing the high ground objective. Winged lancers up in the trees kind of hanging back. Kossar is ripping some shots into the blue horrors here, but uh, are going to be collapsed on very quickly by these Forsaken. So probably going to want to retreat these Kossars. So yeah, just like run them back. There's nothing to be won here. This is this is just like a losing fight. So Armored Kossar is up on the high ground being attacked by Furies. And the Winged Lancers are probably going to slam jam down on these units. Maybe go after the Forsaken here. It's hard to say. A little bit of damage being taken on the Forsaken. So damage value so far is a little bit in the favor of Zinch, but it's, uh, it's going to add up quickly as these uh, Kossars start to take some heavy damage. So one Fury summon is down to the can. Forsaken are making their way across, and it looks like the Winged Lancers are going to commit, and I think right now Big B's is going to go in for an Alpha Strike. I would probably actually consider maybe sending in the Winged Lancers here, but you got to watch out for these Screamers. Yeah, that's a problem. The Screamers with some Forsaken would be able to make quick work of these Winged Lancers, and Big B's better not forget about these guys. They're not a cheap unit. That's 850. So the Winged Lancers, maybe a downhill charge in these Forsaken would be good, or just like pulling away. Like, at the very least, maybe he's taking them on a Wild Goose Chase, so he could just run the Winged Lancers to the edge of the map, and like all these units are then going elsewhere. So right now, the top objective is being threatened by Winged Lancers, but there are some blues here and also some Chaos Furies of Zinch. I think the Bear Sleds are going to go up on the top. I think you could have maybe done an Alpha Strike there with all your Chariots, especially if you had a Patriarch going. So, so far, pretty good play here from Void Lulls. Able to get some decent trades, but here comes the Winged Lancer charge. Going to be hitting into the back of those Forsaken. Should do some okay work, but the Big Chicken is up here. And the Bariat Squad needs to get busy. They need to start doing something, because right now they're just kind of like, this is the whole army of of Kislev not really doing too much. Definitely playing it a little bit incorrect here. Winged Lancers, Battling Screamers, not a great trade, but the Bear Sleds need to just get in there, dude. Just like mulch in there, get the firepower, run them over, and get your value. Because Void is probably going to get Objective 3 here. It's hard to say. Another unit of Screamers coming in. Forsaken are on top of the objective. More Winged Lancers have been summoned in by the Big B. Should definitely go after those Forsaken. And now the War Sleds have moved in. If there are a Patriarch here too, this build will be exponentially stronger. So Final Transmutation going down. Got to split those units to make sure they don't all get popped, but I don't know if he knows about that. He does see it. That's an overcasted final transmutation, and that's going to send Void Lulls through the roof in terms of value. He's actually catching up. Winged Lancer's here. Probably going to lose this fight. The Blue's obviously getting a ton of stopping power, and the final transmutation pretty much nails that entire Kislevite army. 
Up on the high ground, this objective is owned by Kislev. Two are owned by Zinch right now. And the bear sleds are still doing good work, despite being nailed by a final transmutation. Basically, like a worst case scenario. And what is he doing with these Cossars? Is he trying to move them up on the objective right now? A little bit of sloppy control here for sure. Yeah, probably just want to have those guys shooting in the back. Forsaken are going to get through. He's got some winged lancers AFK in the forest uh, who need to charge down. Could probably have killed those Forsaken and backed up the Cossars here. Now they're going to be doing that. We get the double charge. While the bear sleds continue to just roll through this army. And obviously they're doing huge DPS. Like you can see, even despite the blunder, they're still doing good work. I do not know why the Cossars were moved into melee. I have no idea why. So looking over here on the hill, the valley is pretty even, but Void Laws is winning this game. Let us not be mistaken. He's got two objectives. We've seen some pretty massive blunders from Kislev with the uh, Light War Sleds being blobbed up for the final transmutation. And also, uh, no healing for the Sleds. That's one of the things that makes the Doom Stack just so abusive, is the fact that you can just get like a Patriarch healing them and you can just cackle in the night. So Armored Kossar is coming in, and you can see the War Sleds still doing some really good value despite, you know, taking some unfavorable engagements. The Big Chicken trying to get down there. Up on the high ground, we do have the Cavalry, the Kossai Dervishes, and the Winged Lancers trying to finish off these Forsaken, but they appear to be losing that fight. Blues are on their way up, and Kislev is currently banking about 600, so looks like they're going to be summoning some Kossai Dervishes and Zar Streltsy? Okay, Streltsy coming in. Interesting. Usually you would see bows, but Streltsy are a little bit harder to dodge, so they can potentially get you some work done there. The forces of Zinch on the middle have been kind of pushed off. More and more Forsaken are being used, but Forsaken will do very well against Kislev if the Bear Sleds aren't dealing with them. Like, typically Bear Sleds are, like, such a hard counter against those units. So Bear Sleds here trapped up. Big Chicken going in. Screamers of Zinch as well as the Chaos Furies trapping them down. We do get the Streltsy moving up as well. And Winged Lancers. Unleash them. Here they come. We have 90 of them. Winged Lancers going to get a decent little charge here. Capture Weight is actually almost going for Kislev here, which is pretty funny. Uh, but it is getting to the point where Zinch is probably going to triple cap them. I think Zinch is going to be wrestling this top objective. The Kislevite reinforcements have not been the best choices. Like, against the uh, Forsaken, like, you know, the, the Winged Lancers and different things like that aren't going to be doing terribly well. A Patriarch healing this blob of chariots, too, is so disgusting. And that's one of the ways that you just really absolutely crush Zinch is with uh, that style of play. So Bear Sled's still pulling back. Uh, the Streltsy, what are they even shooting in the middle? They're going to be ripping some shots up into the flyers, and now we do get the bear sleds coming back. Armored Kossar is moving on to that objective, and the bear sleds are holding on for dear life. We do have two of them here. Uh, looks like this one is about to break as well. Most of their passives have already been procced here, but Kislev is doing an okay job of kind of creeping their way back into the game. If they could somehow win this top engagement, but it looks like that's just like a disaster for them. As Void Loss is winning pretty heavily on the objectives here. Absolutely. Kossify Dervishes chilling in the back. Definitely need to be unsummoned here. Streltsy being shut down by just Haggard Furies as well as Summons, I believe. No, they're just actually both natural Furies. Wing Lancers are very good for like punishing like Furies and those type of units and are good in this matchup, but you don't want to use them against Forsaken. Against Forsaken, you just want to summon in like Bear Sleds or use your Bear Sleds to kill the Forsaken. That's what you 100% need to prioritize. And that's going to be GG. He knows it's over. So that was very much a case of a matchup that's very bad for Zinch, but Void Lol's just a little bit better execution and a tighter build is still able to win. So GG, final transmutation was crazy. It hit every single sled too. Like every single sled. It was very, very strong. All right, so that is going to be a 2-1 victory for Void Lulz. Let's see if he can win back-to-back -back domination mode tournaments. Of course, our next couple tournaments will be land battles. So this will be, uh, we'll see who's going to be the master of domination for now. Yes, yes. All right, so let us go ahead and go to the brackets. Make the top four official. It is going to be Void Lulz magically teleporting over with the power of technology to face the platypus here at the end of all things. Yeah, need a patriarch for sure. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and grab these gentlemen. And we can get Void Lulz and the platypus. Oh my god, like, I when I search platypus in my Discord, there's like four of them. There's the platypus bite. There's another 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 funny platypus name. Yeah, there's so many of them. Man. Uh, okay, so that one. And let's get the map set up. The map is going to be the Silver Spire. We haven't had that one on today, so we'll do that for the first map. Uh, Ojoil, today is just going to be the tournament. Do you feel like Streltsy need to buff? No, I don't think so. They're they're I think they're very good. Yeah, I love Streltsy. And let's update the score plates here. See who's going to be joining first. Reset score. 
Very good. All right. Hey, Pone, how you doing? It's good to see you, man. It's good to see you as always. All righty. So the platypus prepares for war. Uh, it's it's really funny when you look at like their two pictures in Discord. Void Lols has like a really scary blood knight, and then like the platypus is just like this cartoon platypus. It's so funny the contrast between those two pictures. Yeah, it's quite funny indeed. Uh, knight, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. I'm not. It's it's hard to say. So there's Void. Silver Spire is the map for game one, which can change up the meta a little bit. Silver Spire, of course, is different. So let's set this up. And then we have... Great. So switching back to the lobby. The names fit. Look at that. We'll update this to say finals. And it is going to be a best of five. Cool. So when the platypus arrives, they can do their picks and bans, and this is a best of five final. Nurgle, this if you guys if you guys want Nurgle, this is the place. This is the home of Nurgle. Eventually, if it does go to game five, the players will run out of factions that are actually good, and they will be forced to play the haggard junk. Cathay and Nurgle will rise once more from the ashes and reign tyranny on the old world. <laughs> the Protoss, yes, I will pick Zerg. I feel like, okay, what Warhammer Fantasy race could fight the Zerg? Like, or Tyranids for that matter. I don't know. It seems like, seems kind of rough. I don't, I feel like many of the human factions just wouldn't, would struggle. Because if like little like space marines and armor with guns can't like fight the Zerg effectively, you would need like some crazy, maybe some of the demonic factions. Like I feel like the demons could maybe fight Zerg, you know, like Nurgle, like a great unclean one for sure would be a problem. Like if we're talking lore. All I want, all I want, is is to see Nurgle being played. Cathay is better than Nurgle for sure. I agree. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. So yeah, but yeah, absolutely. If you join the Discord, there's a lot of people playing both domination and line battles. Yeah, correct. Who's it gonna be? It looks like it's gonna be. Hey, you guys ready for this? Ogres versus Kislev. But we have not seen Ogres lose yet today. So this is going to be an interesting one. Void Lols, of course, is facing against them. So if anybody can beat the Ogres, it's certainly him. Let's just get the Ogre games out of the way quick here, and then we can have a normal series. Skaven? Really? I don't think so. I don't think Skaven would really be able to. Yeah, Blood Letters would definitely hard counter like Zerglings for sure. Skaven would find a way. Really? You think, you think the Zerg would lose to Skaven? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the website isn't is not quite finished yet. It'll be ready on Monday. Yeah, like we had to reset everything, so I'm just like redoing the articles and all the blogs and everything, and it'll be ready soon. So, just hang tight, my friend. Hang tight. I'll announce it on stream. Yeah, Scarbrand for sure would be solid. Like I feel like the demons would. <clears throat> okay, Kislev versus. Oh no, it's actually Kislev versus Inch. Whoa, how did Platypus get stuck? No. Oh, it's Corn versus Zinch. So Void Law is apparently liking the Corn pick here. Going to be coming in and uh, trying to take down the Changer of Ways. Watching constant Ogre matchups can get a little tiring. I 100% agree. Uh, no, it's Corn versus Zinch. No Ogres in the first game. All right, let me get you guys a Discord link. So anybody who wants to join, here you go. Uh, you can't play Domination versus AI. You have to play with players, yeah. Zerg would eat Skaven and incorporate them into the swarm. Yeah, probably, probably something like that. <laughs> the, oh, your, your your name is Zergling. Of course, you got a little bias there, huh? Yeah, I agree though. I think Zerg, I think Zerg would annihilate the Skaven. Yeah, like if Protoss struggle against Zerg, then come on. Like Protoss are literally like have flying motherships with lasers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the 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 Protoss lost their homeworld to the Zerg, you know. The Green Tide versus the Chungus Kingdoms would be epic. Oh, are you talking about? Um, are you talking about Greenskins? Yeah, I feel like I feel like Greenskins will actually have a good matchup against Ogres because of Biggins. Like Orc Biggins are so good. Like they'll buzzsaw through pretty much the, most of the Ogre roster. Yeah, so it's going to be Corn versus Zinch. Interesting. 
Not what I expected. I have to admit, it feels very strange seeing no uh, no ogres in the first match here. Turin, do you think uh, Cathay's legendary lore, legendary lore transformations uh, missing their human form spells and abilities is a missed opportunity? You know, yeah, I kind of just wish they could just cast all their spells in their dragon form. I don't, I don't know why that restriction was necessary, but it would definitely be a lot more fun. Yeah. Like, because then you could have Iron Dragon constantly threatening the final transmutation without having to, like, switch to dragon form and telegraph it, or human form. Tomb Kings with Treadzerg, no resources for them to feed off, and either... Uh, I don't know, though. Like, can you really see, like, a skeleton warrior taking, like... Battling an Ultralisk? I mean, I guess I guess the big Sphinx might be able to fight an Ultralisk. And then, like, a Tomb Guard battling a Zergling seems like it could be fair, but I feel like Hydralisks would just, like, shred them. Like, Hydralisks, like, can eat bullets from, like, f like super advanced, like, bolt weaponry. So I don't know, like, what arrows would do against them. Yeah, Lich109 saying Zerg would destroy Skaven, and I say that as someone who prefers Skaven, yeah. <laughs> Grand Alliances of Elves, Dwarves, and Men versus the Tyranids. Yeah, yeah, if you had, like, a big 3v1 fight and, like... If if you if you incorporate like how overpowered magic is in Warhammer Fantasy, like I think you might be able to say that because like in forty in uh, in Starcraft there's no magic really. I mean Protoss kind of have it with like psi storms and things like that. But like if we're talking really op op fantasy magic, maybe that would help even the battle. There would be no reason to use human form. Yeah, that's certainly true, Jared. The one thing about human form though is it makes you a smaller target. So there are times you want to do it, but yeah. The Green Skunwa already fights Tyranids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do. That's true, but the green the, the orcs from 40k though, Pwn, have like advanced weaponry. Uh I should say that with air quotes. They have they have looted advanced weapon weaponry. Yeah. Uh I'll be streaming Age of Empires on Monday. That's that's what I have planned. I'll be doing two Age of Empires streams next week. I know, I know I feel bad I haven't been streaming it much, but Total War just came out, obviously, and got it, got it, got it. Get it rolling. Balthazar Gelt is battling the entire Tyranid Zerg horde by himself, just casting final transmutation on their blob. Magic would wreck most sci-fi races. Yeah, yeah, it definitely would. Although a lot of sci-fi universes, like 40k has magic. You know, Warhammer 40k has magic. Like you have psychers who can cast huge storms of fire and summon vortexes and like, you know. So 40k is a pretty OP universe for sure. <laughs> Croak, Lord Croak could take out the, the Nids. Yeah, maybe. It's kind of an interesting discussion. It kind of is. Ragnarok, how you doing, man? Bonjour from Kislev. Hey. Every time you post the King Lewin gif, it makes me, like, miss it. You know, I'm like, I, I... It's like that meme where Wolverine is, like, looking at the picture of, like, you know, of, like, his lost loved one or whatever laying in bed. That's, like, how I feel about, like, all the Warhammer 2 races when I lay in bed at night. I'm just, like, sitting there, like... Like watching one of my old like faction war tournaments, like rubbing <laughs> rubbing the screen with sorrow. <laughs> That's how I feel. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I was gonna cast at Age of Empires four tourney, but um, I have something really really uh, important I have to take care of next week. I have to go to the East Coast. I have to go to New Jersey and New York City. It's a big family matter, so uh, I wasn't able to go. It was the traveling was just too close. Yeah, it was too close. Pull a hero, hero escape and have sci-fi versus fantasy stuff. Yeah, you can, absolutely. I mean, you see a lot of like fantasy trope or like fantasy kind of elements incorporated into some sci-fi. Like you even see that in Dune a little bit, which I love how Dune did that. Like the Dune movies when they had, uh, you know how like in Dune they have that reactive like force field armor that if something comes at their armor with like high velocity, the shield blocks it. But if you move in slow, it like it, it can get through the shield. That that like that was probably my one of my favorite elements of the Dune movie, and like then you get to see them like that is actually like a cool justification for the soldiers in Dune to be using like hand to hand weapons. It was so rad. There's like a flashback scene, or not a flashback scene, but like a, a vision scene in that Dune movie where he uh, he has like a vision of himself like leading the Fremen in like the desert fighting against the Saudakar. That scene was so cool. I was like, holy shit, that fight scene was rad. Like there's. The Dune series, I think, has such a cool atmosphere. Like, the new ones, like, it's rare that there's, like, a movie I would say is, like, one of my, like, favorite movies now. But, like, Dune, the Dune movie was really good. Yeah, Flying, flying Taco. I've been, to, I've been to Jersey many times. My uh, 
my stepdad is from there. Yeah, he's from there. So I've been to I've been to Jersey many many times. I went to uh, I'm trying to think where I went. Yeah, I was in I was mostly like I landed in Newark and then we went to like this this small town. Uh, what was it called? Darn, I can't remember. Can't remember. But yeah, th that was really good. Oh my god! And the portrayal of the Saudikar on the uh, on on their military world when they're like having the the throat singing and like the like the whole big sacrifice thing that scene was intense and like the the language they gave to the Saudikar to make them sound like all scary was like super cool. I was like, oh dude, yeah, it was great. Dune is fantasy just in space. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like sci-fi and fantasy mixed together. Yeah. Dude, the Dune RTS game was so fun. I remember playing that back when I was a kid, and like I just used to love playing the Fremen and summoning the Sandworm. That was like my favorite thing. I remember getting so hyped. I was like, yes, the Sandworm is here. I wonder, oh, man, it'd be interesting to go back and try that. That game is so old. God, I remember like being a child picking that game up. Yeah, I read, I read, uh, I believe I read some of the dune books when i was a kid, like really young when i was in like sixth or seventh grade i tried to read them but like it was kind of like i didn't really grasp it or remember it well so I, th I need to go back and read those i did the same thing when i was in eighth grade i read all the tolkien books like the hobbit lord of the rings trilogy and then in eighth grade i also tried to read the cimmerillion and i was like what the hell is it like i it just was too much for me i was like there's too many names to remember so i need to go back and refresh on the cimmerillion before the show comes out <laughs> newark has a lovely smell does it yeah yeah, that's what I've heard. Jersey's countryside is pretty... Where I was in New Jersey, it was very industrial, though. It was, like, very gray and just, like, industrial buildings. And it just... It was... Uh, it definitely wasn't the beautiful countryside. Yeah, there's a new Dune game coming out. Yeah. Dune 2000. Yeah, it was 2000. So in the year 2000, I was 12 years old. Yeah. So I was, I was a munchkin. I was definitely a munchkin. Okay, so we get the dreaded desync. It won't happen again. Thank you. Okay. All right, I got screenshots of their armies. We'll rehost. The desync just happens once, and then we're all good. Uh, the map was a silver spire. Very good. Very very good. No, it's uh, it's the platypus playing. Yeah, it is the platypus. It is here in the grand finals. Same turn, way over my head, but I did it. Yeah, I know. I was kind of the same way. I like I force read through it. Like the books that I I read, like it was nobody's business. And when I was like like twelve years old, was the um, <clears throat> the Dritz Do Erden novels by R. A. Salvatore. That was like my childhood reading. Like I remember just like going deep reading like the first like thirteen books in the Dritz series, just like rapid fire, you know? Yeah, you have Brunor Battlehammer and Wolfgar and, and Caddy Bree and, uh, you know, the Halfling's Gem and and Sojourn in Exile. And then you have his his cat and, you know, Dritz goes and is trained by the, the blind monk when he reaches the surface who doesn't judge him based on, you know, his background as a drow. And uh, yeah, it was, dude, those books were amazing. I loved the R.A. Salvatore books and they were a pretty, like, easy read too. They were an easy read. Yeah. Because, like, a lot of those, a lot of books, like, I think the Salvatore books are, like, written, like, in a more simplistic writing style. So they're a little bit, like, easier to read. Yeah. Forgotten Realm, same. Yeah, Ryan, you guys know what's up. Yeah, look at everyone in chat's, like, love those books. Me too. God, I got to go back and reread those. They're so good. I have every single one of those on my shelf. Oh, you're making me sad now. Like, I feel like I need to go reread those. Uh, okay, so we need to switch this. Switch update. Cool. Make sure they have the same builds. Cool. They can change their flag color. I don't care about that. Yeah, the Dritz books were amazing. I'm trying to... Dude, there's so many good moments in the Dritz books. Yeah, the, fir the first trilogy was really good. Like, like the Sojourn, Exile, and Homeland. Those are the first three books in the in the Dritz story, which were just amazing. Like I love when Dritz is like in the Underdark too, and he like befriends the uh, I think they're called the Dugar. They're like these like under underground uh, folk. And like there's so many like oh man, there's so much good stuff. Like when uh, 
When Dritz, do you guys remember when Brunor Battlehammer goes to retake his like the Dwarven Kingdom and he just has like that epic duel with that huge dragon and just like falls into the pits? You know, like like as it's on fire, just his roaring Dwarven King like reclaiming his kingdom, battling this dragon. I'm like, yes, dude. And then like, uh, well, I don't want to spoil too much. Shit, I don't know. I mean, these books have been around for like 30, like 20 years plus, if not more. So yeah, super cool. Super cool. But anyways, I won't say the outcome of that. So <laughs> yeah, the deep gnomes. Drizzt, yeah, it's, it's a tricky name to say. He'll, he's still writing new books. Yeah, that's that's it. Man, you guys have good memory. I mean, I was a munchkin when I read those, so. The Deep Gnomes. Yeah, that's what it was. That was some Gandalf stuff? Yeah, the Mithril Hall. Yeah, dude. Oh, man, those are so, those are good times. Yeah, so, so it, dude, those books are really good. You know who gets, like, the worst shtick in those books, though? Is the, uh, is the, uh, is the poor Wolfgar, man. Like, Wolfgar's whole arc is so sad. Like, his fate for, like, multiple books is just like, oh, my God. And then there was, uh, there was Artemis. There was Artemis and Treri, I think is his name. He, he's a pretty interesting adversary. I was kind of always annoyed because he's always, like, he's, like, it just, the resolution, you never, like, it takes so long to get it. But, yeah, anyways. Yeah, really good series. I think I got to reread those. Yeah, Salvatore is great. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are in the Grand Finals, Game 1. It is Menacing Platypus with the Herald of Zinch facing off against Void Lols, who's going to be leading the forces of the Blood God. And it seems like this is like Void Lols go-to build with corn in like every matchup. So it is going to be a bunch of Flesh Hounds of corn, which of course are pretty good against uh, Zinch. They do have Spell Resist, but also are quite good against Light Armor with their 65 Weapon Strength. On top of that, we do have two units of Cultists of Corn. Going to be dropping some fat, fat Cultist bombs, uh, or excuse me, Blood Letter bombs on top of these guys. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so like just dropping summons to, you know, kind of hold back the tide and using Flesh Hounds to surround them. <clears throat> oh my god. Yeah, the Dwarf Berserker guys who have like the spiked armor. Dude, you guys are getting me, you guys are getting me way too hyped. Yeah, Jarl Axel, he's cool too. Dude, there's so many cool characters. There's so many cool characters. Yeah, Artemis is the maximum edgelord. Dude, I know. Those books are just... It's its just so good. It's like my childhood. Anyways, guys. It's going to be Forsaken, backed by Blues. And we do have the very, very powerful double Cultist of Zinch opening. And the reason why this is mega overpowered is because you can basically summon in a, a Pink Horror, which costs 700 gold. These guys cost 600, and you also get a Power Stone. You then unsummon them and get a refund of 300. And then you just resummon them and get another pink. It's like just like an infinite cycle of Winds of Magic and free 700 gold units. It's very, very strong. And there's going to be some spawn and pinks and blues moving up. Actually, all blues. Spawn I like as well. They do have armor sundering, so they can lower the armor of, you know, Flesh Hounds down to zero. And the Cornate Warriors can be lowered as well. Pendulum, of course, is banned. And as far as his spell goes, it is going to be a herald on his little disc. And he's going to be sniping some of the Flesh Hounds of Corn. He actually picks off a couple of those, but he only has Blue Fire. So Blue Fire is actually pretty good against both infantry as well as uh, SEMs and big targets and all that sort of good stuff. Yeah, we were talking about Forgotten Realms for anybody who's just joining. The R.A. Salvatore uh, series, the Dritzt, or Dritzt books. Man, I always get his name wrong. And, like, the Panther's name is, like, super hard to say, too, I feel. Or at least when I was a kid, it was. Yeah. So... Corn just taking a very tame approach, taming his bloodthirst for now. The two cultists of Corn laying in ambush with their, uh, looks like they have, and they have like such a strange haircut. Just kind of chilling in the bushes there. And uh, yeah, Zinch is just like, all right, man, I got a nice choke point. I am just going to chill here. This is like just prime time positioning for Zinch. Like it feels so good because Zinch can just like use this choke and just barely sit on the edge of this objective. And then down for objective number three, they can just send some Forsaken or some spawn down there and like corn dogs will actually lose to forsaken maybe two corn dogs could be to forsaken if you get like a full surround or something like that i think it would certainly be good but for the most part uh, this pos this positioning here is going to be good and what is the cornate answer going to be i would probably wager corn warriors with shields they have silver shields so against the blue and pink fire they're pretty good and obviously in sustained combat they will defeat i'm pretty sure they beat the forsaken too but of course they need to be full health for that to happen so what do you think about Chaos Dwarves? Uh, I think Chaos Dwarves will be awesome. Yeah, I think they'll be really cool. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take any Dawi at this point. Just just give me some Dwarves. And uh, and I won't complain about their 
about their uh, their choice in gods. We will uh, we'll see what happens. But Corn basically preparing for an alpha strike. What's going to happen is Corn will move in with the cultists and the warriors first, and then they're going to drop the summons, and then the corn dogs are going to be coming in after. They could also go for a big flank fight. Like that's the one advantage Corn has. Like part of me thinks fighting Zeech in the middle here is a big mistake. Like because Zeech wants this. They're entrenched. They're ready. Like they're they're good to party, right? It's a nice shooting there on the cultists. They take a little bit of work, but. Like, going for the back objective, it's just a couple units. And the Bloodthirster can get down here and certainly lay some hurt on them. And here comes the Forsaken to the front. Bloodletter Summons will be coming out in a moment. And, uh, yeah, Corn is up on the objective, at the very least. So they could also just play the objective game. And just kind of force each to push forward to get them. But I think they're going to be committing to fighting. It's looking like they're pretty aggressive here. Flushhounds of Corn will lose to the Blue Horrors as well. Which is another reason that they're just so strong. It's pretty insane. And it looks like Void is kind of threatening the back objective. But for the most part, here comes the Cultist Summons. Uh, I think using the Cultist Summons on the Forsaken is really, really strong, especially since Forsaken have a ton of Chevrons. That would be very nice. But the Blues will, like, yeah, take some damage, but I really don't think the Bloodletter Summons here are that impactful. And now Zeech is going to be doing the same thing and just cackling in the shadows. It is going to be Pink Horrors of Zeech being summoned, and they're just going to be raining some hot fire down here. And the one thing about Zeech being picked here in the first game is it does open up an Ogre pick a little bit later. Screamers of Zeech up in the sky are attacking. Now, this is actually a big blunder here by the Platypus. Screamers are absolute trash against uh, Chaos Furies. They get massacred super horribly. So even though Zeech is winning on the ground, I would say Korn gets a really nice Air Force fight. They wipe out several units of these Zeech Furies, it looks like, and potentially does get a little bit of aerial superiority, which would allow them to maybe threaten the back objective if they so choose. Now, the Cornate Warriors finally do get into combat. The two cultists are grinding pretty well. Corn dogs are nibbling on the heels here of the spawn of Zeech. And more and more of these very elite corn warriors are coming in. And obviously, they're very durable against shooting. Oh, but the big eye of Zeech is opened, and that is going to be pulling in a ton of these bad boys. It is a vortex that kind of sucks them in, so there's no escape. And uh, yeah, that was a really, really good cast there by the Herald. I didn't notice that he had that spell, but I guess he does. He's got blue fire. Oh, and the portal of Zeech. And since Pendulum is banned, that is one of the better choices that you have, right? So here, Chaos Warriors of Corn moving in, battling the Blues, and the Flesh Doggies are able to chew up the spawn. More and more of the Cornate Furies landing in the back line, but these are pink horrors that will be disappearing here in a second, and they're gone, so I don't think that Void Laws knew that. He probably thought they were actual uh, actual units, so unfortunately now he gets a little bit of a less favorable engagement. But Corn fighting pretty well in the front with the grind value is close enough to not really be a huge deal. Corn does have the double objective advantage. I think that if Corn could grab its Bloodthirster and maybe go start working on this back objective, there could be an opportunity for like a back cap at some point. I feel like perpetually grinding against the forces of Zinch here probably isn't going to be their best bet. Because Zinch has faster reinforcements, they're super entrenched. And the units you need as Corn to actually win this fight are, uh, are, are going to take too long to get here. Like the Warriors are good, but they take forever. They have 28 speed, right? Summons are off the table. Cultists are fighting. Zinch is starting to take control of the game. Obviously... I, I don't know why the corn player would take that fight there. It just feels it just feels like it's exactly what Zinch wants. Whereas like the back objective, you have like a huge beatdown lord that like Zinch can't really match super effectively, and then that takes pressure off the middle. And now this objective is being taken by the forces of Zinch, the Forsaken, and obviously the Blues and the Pinks and the Spawn, which are really good here because they sunder armor, making all the light DPS from Forsaken and Blues that much better. Is uh, is going to be probably game blouses. We do have a couple of Furies in the back. These are obviously summoned pink horrors, but the cultists will be back soon for only 600 gold, and they'll be summoning another unit of pinks. They'll be giving you a scroll or a power stone to give you extra ones of magic, and uh, that is going to be that. So Exalted Bloodthirster, he is on the run. Uh, looks like maybe a little bit of lag here, but this game is more or less over, so if there's a disconnect, probably would just go for the Menacing Platypus. I don't think there's any way Corn can come back, so if there have been cases in the past where people will you know, pull the plug and claim a DC to get a replay, but... Yeah, that's that's game. We're that pla that one's going for platypus. So there's there's no way you can come back at that point. So we will set up the next match. That is game one going to the forces of Zinch. The dreaded cord pull. I, I don't think he actually did that, but if he did, it's gonna be his detriment there. So all right. Yeah, I mean honestly, just lost that engagement, was down by two thousand value, and the objectives were all being taken there. So we will go ahead and update the scorecard. That is gonna be one oh for the platypus. Now players can move on to the next game. Yes, there you have it. So we'll get him back. The next map is going to be the Death Pass, and we will get him reinvited. Where is he at? Cool. Very good. Void Laws will be back in just a moment. That is game one. Definitely was over, 100%.
Yeah, like uh, coming back is like is uh, from that is going to be really hard. It's not that different from land battles in that sense. Like if you fall behind by two thousand value in a land battle, you've lost more or less. It's got to be super hard to come back unless your opponent like blunders a lord or a character or something like that. Are you guys still talking about the Zerg? So what other books? Yeah, the Salvatore books were for sure one of the biggest reads of my days of old. I didn't start reading Game of Thrones till college. My my junior year in college, my third year, I, I binged like every... I, I read through all six of the books, um, including Winds of Winter, like the newest one. Yeah, the corn, the corn, the corn warrior is definitely struggling a little bit. <clears throat> okay, perfect. Cool. So he'll be on his way back. I'm gonna tag them. And Platypus. Just chatting with him real quick. So let's get him in here for the next match. And uh, we should be all set. All right. Curious about the next matchups. Definitely going to be an ogre pick. Definitely going to be an ogre pick here. That would be my two cents. It was, oh, Ethan, you're saying, I tried laddering as my main faction Urgle for the first time yesterday and just hit Kiss of Chariots and then Gorge or Spam. Yeah. Yeah, it's rough for sure. It's rough. It's a tough life for our boy Nurgle. He's certainly uh, certainly in dire straits. Okay, so the Void Laws will rejoin. Let me go ahead and get the key again. And there we go. All right. Do you ever read The Expanse? I haven't actually. I've heard the books are really good. I'm I'm almost caught up on the show. I haven't watched the most recent season, but I was able to see the other ones. Yeah, it's going to be ogres. There's got to be ogres here. Because now that Zinch is off the table, there's no counter for the ogres. So, like, if you're a Void Lulz, you just first pick ogres here, and then you pretty much steamroll every other faction. Unless there's, like, some sort of really crazy outplay from the Platypus. Kislev? Um, one sec here. Boy Law's just chatting with me here. We're trying to get him back in. He had a crash show. Yeah, man. I, uh, I I'm curious how George Martin is going to finish the series outside of his uh, outside of his other outside of the TV show because the TV show ending was really bad, dude. I was so bummed with the Game of Thrones ending because I was kind of like you know I was a big fan of the books and I was like man I, I've loved I've loved most of the Game of Thrones seasons right they were all pretty fun I enjoyed the shows a lot. That guy's just chatting with him. It's been so long since I knew we were able to get in on a stream. Yeah, it's been a while. We're gonna have uh, this weekend. I'm gonna be a little bit busy. I'll have some fun videos going up this weekend. Um, battle. I'll have, I have some really good land battles actually. And then on uh, Monday or Tuesday, we'll be doing some Age of Empires, and then also uh, land battle tournaments. So next week there will be a couple land battle tournaments, which will be launching with the website as well. Yeah, like, there was so many weird endings, like, in the Game of Thrones TV show. My favorite character in Game of Thrones is actually the Hound, Sandor Clegane. 
like in both the books as well as the, the TV show, the, the actor who plays him, Rory McCann, is so good. He's like the perfect hound. I know in the TV show, they went through like a couple uh, Gregor Kilgains. They had they had like three different actors until they got Hathor Bjornsson to play him, which I think was the best. That guy was like perfect. Just like, yeah, perfect. Uh, one sec. Okay. Hold on, guys. Just chatting with the players here, real quick. They had some. Apparently, they're having some sort of a bug. So I'm just, I'm just chatting with them. Hold on, lads. Just give me a minute. Okay, perfect. Yeah, the hound. The hound was good. I feel like his ending. His ending wasn't really good. Speaking of, oh man, isn't Eddie Hall fighting Hafler Bjornsson in like a boxing match? It's pretty crazy. I did watch the boxing match between uh, Devin Lerat, Devin Lerat, and uh, and Hafthor Bjornsson. Yeah, that was a rough one. Hafthor obviously quite a bit younger, like 10, 12 years younger. Yeah, the Viper. Well, that's how it goes down in the books too. Like the Viper kind of has a similar similar ending in the books. So that like that didn't bother me. Just the ending just felt really strange. Like it just was so so haggard and and rushed and like the whole ending to the White Walker narrative was so bad too. Like, that was so terrible. You build up the White Walkers to be this huge threat, and then they just, like, I don't know, man. It was just it was just so rough. Okay, let's get him in here. So Void Laws is claiming that there was some sort of a, let's see, some sort of a bug he encountered. I won't be able to see it in the replay is the problem though. So let me, like, is there any way I could like go back in the stream and watch it? Okay. So one sec guys, I'm just, re I'm just reviewing uh, something in the replay real quick to try and see what he's talking about here. Yeah. Season eight was a big letdown hundred percent. Please don't remind me of this dark time in our history. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we're gonna rewind back a little bit and see. Man, why is it? The stream preview quality is so poor. Can I actually improve that? No. No, it only gives me the dreaded 360p. Yeah, it's it's like in the replay, I can't see the funds. So he's claiming that like the cultist, he says he summoned it, it spent it. That's a bug we've had in Warhammer 2. Um, so I'm just going to go look at the replay real quick. All righty. Yeah, because I can't see in the replay... Alrighty, no problem. Yeah, he's claiming some some sort of a bug happened where he couldn't like summon his cultist. It's hard to say. I don't think it would have made much of a difference, honestly. But we'll uh, I'll take a look at the replay. But yeah, well, I told him to rejoin the lobby and continue on. 
Yeah, it was like it was the White Walker thing was just so disappointing. I'm trying to think like what the that's got to be up there. Like my biggest disappointment was probably Star Wars. Like I think I was more disappointed with the new Star Wars movies than I was with that, but they, none of it was great. None of it was great, you know. So he used the cult to summon, but it didn't summon the blood letter. That probably happened because what happens is if you're casting a summon, if you're casting a summon and then the character gets knocked over while he's casting it, sometimes the summon doesn't go off and then you, you lose the charge of it. That was something that we were happened a lot in Warhammer 2, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's like, you, I can't, I can't justify giving him a, a full game replay just because of that. Like when he, his opponent, you know, won the engagements in a pretty decisive fact, a fashion. I don't think that would have made much of a difference, but like, you know, that those kind of issues happen all the time. And if we just gave re people replays every single time, it's just, uh, yeah. And there's no way to verify it either. I don't even watch the, yeah, the new Star Wars. Okay. Of all the new Star Wars movies though, the one that was. The most reasonable was probably the Rogue One. I think that one I actually enjoyed. But like the whole trilogy was just absolute, oh, just trash. Oh man, God, it was so bad. I was so upset about it. I heard the Mandalorian was pretty good though. Did you guys like Mandalorian as well? Me never having watched Game of, Game of Thrones listening in. Yeah, <laughs> just, just laughing at us. Okay, I think they might be doing picks and bans. We do have Platypus sitting on Nurgle. All right, well, if Void Lulz needs to join the lobby, I don't know why he's not. Let's see here. Maybe he's having some internet connections. Ma Mandalorian is helping the hurt. Yeah, it was good, you guys say? I thought Rogue One wasn't bad. I thought it was pretty decent. Okay, I'm looking here. So I see, I'm not sure what he's trying to show me. Okay, I see blood letters coming out of the portal. Uh, and then I see a Zeech summon coming out. Okay, he's, sorry guys, it, sorry this is taking so long. He's trying to, he's trying to, we have a little bit of a language barrier and he's trying to explain what was happening to me, so. And uh, I see one summon. There is no second one, but there is a mark from the portal. Okay, I'm really not seeing this. I wonder why that happened. So guys, just give me one minute here. I'm just gonna chat with the players, so just hang tight for a second. Oh, I, I, have, a, I have a cool trailer I made. You guys wanna see it? So you guys can watch this trailer while I work out the ruling with these players here. So one second. Alrighty, and here we go.
Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I just I got bored the other night and I just made that. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty fun. You get the get the Kissel pipe going. Sorry guys, just trying to work it out with the players. Just like we're trying to communicate it, but the, the, the some things are getting lost in translation. So just give me a couple minutes and we'll uh, we'll be back on the action train here soon. It was weird because so one of his one of his cultist summons like bugged out and didn't quite go off. And then like he dropped from the game a couple like maybe like 45 seconds after. I don't know if he dropped like like quit. It was weird. It was just very weird. Yeah, it was very strange. Yeah, you guys like the horse part at the end? <laughs> yeah, when the winged hussars arrive, Kislev is so cool. Yeah, they're a pretty rad faction. All right, so they're going to do their picks and bans for the next set. It looks like Platypus might be actually threatening a Nurgle pick here, which is pretty wild. All right, perfect. Yeah, summons won't go. I, I've had that happen to me. So I was playing in a Chinese tournament, actually. Uh, they were hosting a tournament in the Chinese community, and they invited me to play in it in Warhammer 3. And I had that happen with my Nurgle cultist. And, you know, there's just so many, like, there's so many bugs and issues in the game. Like, I've had domination games where my, my units run to the corner of the map. I've had domination games where, like, many of the functions... There's just so many bugs that if, if you restarted the match every single time, there was, like, a minor bug. You know, you, it's just like, it's, you just can't, like, it's too much. It's too much. All right. And plus like the drop afterwards, like it was almost, it was almost like one of those like drops where, you know, I don't know, it was weird. And I, he, it's hard, it's hard to, hard to communicate whether or not he left or dropped and I'm just trying to, trying to figure it out. <laughs> he wants his 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, somebody said they would give 20 bucks if Platypus plays Nurgle. So, I mean, this is this is like basically giving Void Lulls a free win back. So it does it does equalize the series <laughs> in a way. So, yeah, players are doing their picks and bans, guys. Hey, who was it in chat? Who was it in chat that said that um, they were going to give 20 bucks to someone if they played Nurgle in the grand finals? Because you, you better you better put your money where your mouth is. And don't don't give that money to me. You need to <laughs> you need to find the player in Discord and, and send it to them. Yeah, definitely a fair amount of bugs. I haven't experienced, it's weird, the bugs, I don't experience them as much in land battles. I don't know. Maybe, I think it's just like, I think it's just random though, to be honest. Yeah. The visual summon range is actually half the range. Is that true? Yeah, I, I, ha I think I've kind of noticed. You got to be a lot closer for those summons. <laughs> Where is that guy? We're getting a Nurgle versus Kislev match. Some crazy stuff. Yeah. That game was over though. It's it's like even one blood letter summon would have just it would have like brought like a blue to like half health and gotten him like two hundred and fifty value and he would have just lost anyways. Like that was just a mad losing fight for corn. Uh okay, never mind. It's gonna be Slanesh. Nurgle Nurgle guy in chat, your money is safe for now. It's Slanesh versus Kislev. I'll be right back. Gonna get some water.
return, hydrated, refreshed, good to party. It was too good to be true, guys. I'm sorry. Well, oh, never mind. It's Slanesh vs. Ogre Kingdoms. Yeah. Okay. Now, now we're more back in the purview of the sweat. You know, we, we had like the fun angle and now we're like back to the sweaty angle. I've only seen Soul Grinder bug in land battles. I had it happen to me in a domination game. My Soul Grinder ran to the corner of the map and I literally lost because of it. I, you know, it's like, and it's not fair to my opponent to like, I, I had been losing aspects in, of that battle anyways. So I wasn't like upset about it. I was like, well, I guess it's just salt in the wound, you know. But like there have been games, I had a game where I was definitely possible, it was possible to win with corn against ogres and my soul grinder ran to the corner and I, I lost because of that. But it wasn't like a tournament or anything. It's a tricky, it's a tricky position from a, from an admin perspective because it's like, th there's just so many things. And just like when your opponent commits and plays and micros an entire game and like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's weird. Do you guys remember when we were uh, streaming quick battles the other day and we had Red Ulgor, the dreaded Prince of Corn? Who was, who, what champions in chat were there for that stream? Where we had Red Ulgor, the mighty demon Prince of Corn. He got stuck. He was, he was stuck on the, uh, on the cannon or the Cathay Sky Blimp that was like on the ground. And I had to use, I literally had to use uh, a soul grinder to push him off. Like I had to have a soul grinder ram him and push him to help him escape from being stuck. Oh my god, that was like the trolliest shit ever. Yeah, that bug is only on Soul Grinders. It sometimes happens on Bloodthirsters too. I had that happen with Scarbrand where he got stuck chasing something and I couldn't give him any orders. And it wasn't because he was rampaged. There's a lot of little weird things like that. Which, I, I have plans to start a pro league for this game. Which is going to have a bigger prize pool. It'll be like higher stakes tournaments and things like that. But I don't want to start it until the, prize, like the game is smoother and doesn't have these issues. Because... It, it totally ruins the integrity of a competitive format if there's like an issue like that, you know. And obviously, with balance as it is right now, I don't, I, I just don't want to start a pro league yet. That's why we're just doing mainly casual tournaments. You were there, long live Red Olgor, dude. That was so funny. We shall remember the heroic Soul Grinder. He freed Red Olgor. <laughs> yeah, dude, you guys were there. That was so fun. I get a beast of Nurgle stuck inside the castle gate like 80% of the time when I do sieges. I was there, Turin, several days ago. Uh, quote by Elrond. Yeah. I love it. Alrighty. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is Slanesh versus Ogres on a map with pretty good shooting. Although this map is also pretty, like, has some nice big circles on it, so you can definitely get some good flanks with Slanesh. I'm curious what the Platypus will bring. I still feel like it's pretty heavily Ogre favored, especially if Void Lols is playing. Once the league starts, just call it Prof Pwn. <laughs> Sorry about the delay, guys. We just had, we had some bug issues, and, and uh, like, he, he GC'd, and his internet, pro I think, died over there, too. So we're, we're finally back. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I, like, dude, that's why I built this website. That's why I did all this stuff. Yeah. Hashtag free Red Olgor. <laughs> I was going to actually like edit that and, and definitely put it in a, get a little good meme image from that. And not being able to remount cannons feels pretty bad. Yeah, fight me. I saw you playing, you played in the tournament today. It says, my cannons got bugged as soon as it got touched. 1800 gold gone because of a 450 cost unit. Yeah, like the cannons being, not being able to re-equip them all the time is really crappy too. Yeah, there's so many little things, man. So many little things. But, you know, once, once the game is in a, a good state, like... In terms of balance and bugs, like I'll definitely start that pro league and we'll we'll get it going again. We'll get it going again. Yeah, Slanesh grinders are pretty good against ogres, but this is uh this is looking pretty pretty standard here. So we got Marauder Spears in the front for the Platypus, backed up by cultists for the summons, and then a Herald, a very small target, of course, with Slanesh spells. Slanesh much better than Shadows. And uh yeah, gonna be hiding in the trees, probably pushing up into the tree line here. The entire army should be hidden actually here for menacing platypus. Yeah, able to start in the tree line. And for the Chungus Kingdoms and Void Lulls, it is going to be an Iron Blaster. Backed up by Ogre Bulls and Gorgers. Just like a classic, like, good stuff build, right? And that's kind of what we saw from the corn build last game. It was like a good stuff corn build. It's like Corn Dogs, Bloodletter, or Bloodthirster, and like Double Cultist, right? Which is very, very meta. So we're seeing that. Iron Blaster, Scrag, and Gorgers. Oh my. Yes, all day. So currently, Platypus is up one game, winning the first match with Zinch against Corn in a pretty, uh, pretty solid fashion for sure. Slanesh is going to hide in the bushes. Right now, ogres have no idea where anything is. We have a couple spears hiding in the bushes here. Ogres are probably just going to sit and wait. It's probably what I would do if I were them, is just wait for the old uh, timer to kind of tick across here. 
And that's going to be that. Why don't cannon crews have a button that makes them automatically get back on their cannons? Well, historically, you didn't need it because you could just right click on the cannon and it would send it back. But I do think that would be a really nice quality of life change. It just sends them back to their cannons. So you don't have to like look at it on the battlefield. That would actually be a really, really good quality of life change, bud. Nice stuff there, lab. So the ogre bulls are just the basic variants. The gorgers. Apparently these are, I think gorgers and lore, aren't they like just starving ogres? Yeah, I mean, they're looking, looking like they're more or less well-fed. I'm uh, not really sure. I'm sure they have some pretty dense lore about them. But the first unit of Furies has been sent out. So right now the uh, Chaos Furies of the Platypus uh, have descended. And what they're doing is, is they're basically looking for any Gorgers. They're scouting the forest, looking for stealth units, looking for Noblar Trappers, and trying to gauge the situation. Where were you when Red Olgor fell? I know, those are, those are some dark times in our, in our history here on the channel. So it's going to be more Ogre Bulls, but it looks like, yeah, some of them I think are dual weapons. Yeah, dual weapons here, obviously pretty decent against Slaanesh Infantry. And Slaanesh just hiding here, which I think is great. Like, if you're facing off against an Iron Blaster, why would you give it any shots? Just hide that bad boy in the bushes, and uh, and yeah, just do that, and then just come out and surprise them. This Slaaneshi surprise, as they say. So Chaos Furies of Slaanesh hiding up in the tree line as well. Probably going to go for Objective 3. A little bit risky, though. That Iron Blaster is going to be able to rip some fat shots down there for sure. It does get a shot on the Chaos Furies here and is able to take out four models and yeah, a little bit of value accrued. Slanesh could also just send one Spearman. The middle is going to be taken by the Ogres and the back objective will easily be taken by Slanesh. They're just going to move over there with their Spears now. So now the Spears are moving across. So we do have two of them not going for the side objective. Interesting. I would have expected Slanesh to maybe pour on over with something on the side here, but it looks like they're actually pouring in to fight in the middle. Wow. Interesting choice. And the Gorgers are sitting back defensively. Obviously, I think that the platypus... Oh, no. Not like this. Oh, the blob movement. Oh, the power fist of the ogres. That's such a cool-looking spell. And it comes down and just gives the huge business to those guys. Doesn't get a ton of value, but in terms of, like, really lowering the efficacy of these units, I think that's very, very good for sure. So, they are going to be beat up here in the back. We do have the Chaos Furies of Slanesh circling about, looking to perhaps swarm down on ye old Iron Blaster. And now the ranks are being formed as the Spears prepare to face down the most OP threat the Old World has ever known. No, it is not a greater demon. It is a simple starving ogre. So Gorgers are moving up as the uh, Herald of Slaanesh emerges from the shadows. Iron Blaster ripping some big shots. And Fury's just kind of parking and waiting. They're just like, hey, you know, we're just going to sit. We're going to be like vultures and just wait for you to stop defending this thing and then we'll be good. But it looks like Slaanesh is going to be taking a head-on fight. So the cavalry moving in. Hellstriders are going to be engaging. Spears engaging. And Ogre Bulls should lose pretty bad against just basic Marauder Spears. Just basic Ogre Bulls. And the Hellstriders are trying to kind of squeak through the sides here, which is very risky. I mean, there's a lot of fast Ogre units, and Ogres are deceivingly fast, right? Here comes uh, the Cannonball from the Hunter, it looks like. The Ogres do have that Cannonball ability. It's very similar to Vampire Coast. And it looks like there is a Summon of Demonettes coming in, so the Demonette Summon is popped. And it does get a decent surround. Gorger's taking a little bit of damage as Slanesh pours into the front to do more and more work. Now the back, Platypus using the uh, Furies to tar pit the Iron Blaster. Does also bait out a couple Saber Tusk summons, which they are not necessarily the most efficient fighters, right? But Slanesh is up on value. It seems like the middle fight is going pretty well. Ogre Bulls are being broken by the Marauder Spears and the Hellstriders in different units, hammering them from all which directions. So there they go. I love when the Ogres do the kicking animation. It's pretty hilarious. But yeah, they're going to be broken up for sure. And it looks like Slanesh is actually winning a head-on fight with the Ogres, which is very, very impressive. I think the small Lord is good. Like, in the big Lord we saw from Hugo earlier was cool, but the anti-large sounds nice in theory, but having a smaller target and a wider army against the Ogres I think is nice. And summoning in Chaos Furies to rear charge into the Gorgers and different units is quite impactful. Middle objective is going to be taken, while in the backfield the Furies definitely sacrificed themselves for Slanesh for the Dark Prince, but they kept that thing from shooting the entire time. Otherwise, this Iron Blaster would have been unleashing hellish volleys in and doing probably over a thousand value of damage, but the Fury Summons being used to tarp it there I think were incredibly effective. So here are the Ogre Bulls with dual weapons going to be getting hit by the Hellstriders of Slaanesh. Marauder Spears engaging as well. And now Slaanesh is the one kind of pushing the Ogres back into their spawn zone as the Gorgers are getting a little bit worn down. Could we see our first Ogre defeat? <laughs> Thousands of years it's been. We've never seen an Ogre defeat here, but it looks like in the front they are being crumped. The big power fist of the Ogre is coming down. Gorgers do have eight models left and are on the retreat. Slanesh Cavalry pinning in the Ogre Bulls with dual weapons, and now Slanesh is actually pushing into the Ogre deployment zone. The Marauder Spears seem to be the big, big MVP there. Definitely doing some good work. Any flanking play coming in from Slanesh? No, it does not look like it. It could send like a, like an Exalted Demonette or something over to that side objective. I think that'd be really strong. 
But the basic demonet summons, I believe, will be disappearing here soon. This is an actual demonet that's coming in. I don't know how they trade against dual weapon ogres. They probably actually lose that fight. But the ogres are being pushed back, but they're also creeping back up on value. And here we do get the Locus of Grace. So that is an activated ability from the Herald of Slaneshir. And that is going to be giving physical resist as well as melee defense. So very, very nice for Slaneshir, addressing many of their weaknesses. But you can never count the ogres out. Like, they have so many good units. The Iron Blaster is obstructed, so I think that's a big variable as well. The Iron Blaster needs to be shooting nonstop. It seems like it's been obstructed. I think it's trying to shoot infantry here that are really embroiled in combat. Nice shot right there on the Hellstriders and different units. While Slaanesh is actually getting a relatively cost-effective fight here. Here, Scrag is actually hit with the Fascination ability. So this is one of the army passives here. And Fascination actually will rampage them if they're below 80% HP. So Fascination is going to be pretty good. While well, the two cultists are in there attacking Scrag and getting some solid damage. Acquiescence used as well. Lowering melee defense and speed. Not that the speed is a huge variable because he's not as fast as the cultists, but... Nonetheless, doing quite well. Now, as far as reinforcements, we do get some Chaos Furies. This is probably my favorite play so far. Seeing the Demonettes, which are a very good, you know, infantry killer unit, go to clear the Noblars off the side objective is going to make it so the Ogres have to send something over here. But it looks like Void Laws maybe sees this. He does have some Ogre Bulls with Iron Fist. No, I think they're going after the Hellstrider. So the Demonette Summon on the flank is going to be very, very strong. Now, back here, Herald of Slaanesh fighting her heart out. All the Spears and Demonettes fighting relatively well against the Ogres, but the Ogres seem to be getting some decent momentum, and I think there's going to be another Power Fist going down from Scrag, which will heal him as well. Oh, man, Slaanesh just gets it. That was nasty. And suddenly, the Ogres have evened out the balance of uh, a value here. And did they even get the middle? Yes, yeah, Slaanesh has had the middle objective. They do have a slight point lead. Demonettes are obviously doing good, but Ogres are going to be able to respond very quickly. So Void Law's very, very tenacious here. Despite, you know, taking some rough early engagements, Slaanesh is not going to be as good in sustained combat. And now it's looking kind of grim, actually, for Slaanesh because their characters are trapped and uh, there's not really anything to save them. Maybe a Fury Summon or a Demonette Summon could be enough here to kind of save the day. Slaanesh is moving in with what appears to be Demonettes as well as basic Marauders. So not even Spear Marauders, just basic ones, which will not trade well versus the Ogres. And the Herald of Slaanesh is going to be casting some sort of a spell. Acquiescence going down, which will trigger a melee attack buff on the entire army. Uh, the passive of Slaanesh is one of the better passives in the game. It's super good. The big Iron Blaster is shooting into the Marauders, doing some big work. And we do have some Hellstriders coming in. They're going to have to come and save these characters. If Slaanesh just loses all their characters at a pit fight here, I think that's game over. Uh, how are we looking over here? Demonettes were able to kill the Noblars. And now the Ogre Bulls with Iron Fist, though, are just giving them the business. They're very squishy. And these ladies, uh, if these were Exalted Demonettes, they could probably 3v1 this, I think. But the basic Demonettes are going to get karate kicked by these Ogres for sure. And the Ogre Bulls are basically taking, like, no damage in that fight right there. So Slaanesh moving back onto the middle objective. The point lead that Slaanesh did have is starting to dissipate. And it looks like there's going to be some sort of an army ability going down to the Cultists here. The Herald somehow still fighting. Uh, trying to escape. Not really too many escape options. And I think the Ogres are going to be ignoring this engagement now. As the uh, Slaanesh Cavs do flank in from the reinforcements. Having 100 speed is pretty sweet. More and more Spears moving in. And I think the Spears in the back objective, you might have to go all hands on deck. But now that Ogres have pulled ahead on value, I honestly think the Ogre Power Fists have really been the big variable this game. They've just been super punishing against the Slaaneshi army. Nice thumbnail Nurgle campaign is super fun. Yeah, yeah it's it's fun. The, the, whole, the whole Nurgle campaign, I think, is really fun in PvP campaigns. Now, Slaanesh could get back in this game perhaps with a good gooning of Scrag. That would take away healing from the Gorgers. There is the Hunter ability coming down. That is the Boomstick ability that the Hunter has. Ogre Bulls with dual weapons are wavering very close to the danger zone. And somehow that Herald of Slaanesh did live with some of the Cultists, which is super impressive. But all it's going to take is one Iron Blaster shot to just wreck your day. If that Cultist, like, is ex if that Herald is exposed for even a second, then, you know, you're going to get just absolutely gooned by that Iron Blaster. And it seems like you're running out of Spears a little bit here, right? Like, I think... Most of the spears are still in the battlefield, are broken, or are still regenerating, so you can't summon in more spears. Which I think is partially why the beginning engagements went so much better. And they've started to go south very, very quickly. Uh, the back objective was stabilized, although I have to say I'm pretty impressed with the demonettes. I mean, they were a nice threatening piece, but I think an exalted demonette would have actually maybe taken that objective from those three units because of the enchantment ability. But ogres have now pulled ahead by over 2,000 value, and ogres being ogres, it, it looks like there was a glimmer of hope for the, uh, the champions of the Dark Prince, but... Uh, at the end of the day, I think Slaanesh is in danger. Their infantry are just going to get run over by the Chungus squad. The Ogre's sustained combat is so much better. There's an Iron Blaster on the field, and uh, that's got to be game over. I don't see any comeback at this point. So, Platypus can keep fighting, but I think the Platypus knows it's over and is going to be withdrawing. A very, very valiant attempt. Uh, obviously, a super min-max build from Void. Really good casting spells. Iron Blaster obviously didn't get crazy value, but it still was doing good work. And Gorger's just with almost 2,000 value. It's, uh, it's pretty nuts. Yeah. GG well played. It was a really nice attempt. I think a big part of it is you kind of run out of anti-lar- you run out of those spears 
you know, in your initial wave. And then it's, it's much harder to fight from there. All right. So Void Laws evens up the series. It is 1-1. One, one. And now we'll go to game three. And the map is going to be the Eye in the North. Yes, the Eye in the North is here. It is time to summon the Glorious Eye. Okay, game three, good luck, have fun, map set. All right, Nurgle, Nurgle. We have to start like a Nurgle chant, you know? Nurgle could become a possibility once the players really start to run out of resources. We've seen Zinch. Okay, so Menacing Platypus still has Ogres. So it's probably going to be Ogres this game for Platypus. Void Lulls will probably play either Kislev or Zinch, depending on the picks and bans. That would be my, my guess. We'll have to see. We will have to see. Yeah, Ogres maybe Ogres will probably get nerfed soon. And the thing is, guys, is um, Void Lulls is also a very good player. Like, very, very strong player. So you have to remember that when you're taking all this into account. Slanesh tried. Slanesh tried its hardest. That was some good play by the Platypus. Definitely was. So clearly it's going to be an Ogre Kingdom pick <clears throat> for the Menacing Platypus. Void Lulls will either... I would imagine Platypus will probably ban Zinch. And then it's going to be a Kislev pick. Um, maybe a Corn pick again, but I don't think that worked out too well earlier for Void, so I don't see that happening. Definitely not a Nurgle pick. Nurgle has no chance against Ogres. Uh, Professor Pwn, maybe we could do that. We could do an FFA to end the stream, sure. That sounds like fun. I'm sure a lot of people are sick of all the ogre stuff, so we'll do an FFA to, to add some spice to your lives. This is best of five. We could really see it. We could. We could. So it is an ogre pick for the platypus. And let's see what will be picked here by Void Lulz. Void Lulz OP, please nerf. He's a very good player. Very, very good player. Incredibly strong. Won a lot of tournaments in Warhammer 2. And is winning them in Warhammer 3 as well. That is for sure. All right, one sec, guys. Just checking some stuff on the back end here. And uh, yeah, all set. It's going to be Grand Cafe. Oh, my God. Slanesh blobbed a little bit too much. Yeah, Zyphos, I think Slanesh maybe overstayed their welcome after they won that initial fight. I think, I think they were in a winning position. They were up like quite a bit of value, but... I think if Slanesh had withdrawn after that and then started playing the side objectives and like hammering the ogres, like that's the way you do it. A four, a four way Nurgle mirror FFA. Oh my God. It's just the ultimate jank. So it's going to be Grand Cafe. Okay. Now, now I'm, now you have my interest. How can we see Grand Cafe? We saw Grand Cafe get massacred by ogres in the first best of, uh, best of three today. That was with Hugo versus uh, Platypus. Like Cafe just got steamrolled. So does Void Laws have some secret strategy? Maybe Void Laws comes in with like 10 blimps and just, just does its thing. Yeah, who knows? Hey, Hadrius, how you doing, man? Cathay is the hidden OP versus Ogres. I don't think so. I don't think at the highest level they are. But like, I don't know. It depends if Platypus has practiced this matchup. Like Ogres can lose this. If they're sloppy and they let the cannons just pound them, they can definitely lose this matchup. But um, with good micro and timings, I think Ogres are still pretty favored versus Grand Cathay. Yeah. Void Law's reading your advice in chat. Yeah, Void Law's definitely taking notes from the great Professor Pwn. I want to see 10,000 Nurglings. Yeah. This is a pretty good map for Cathay, though, because it has a great shooting line, and you can uh, you can really, really uh, defend that back objective very, very effectively and then just contest the middle. This is a good matchup for the cannons. Yeah. Uh, there's for sure going to be cannons. I would imagine. Let's see. Yeah, there's, there's going to be some good stuff. All Sky Lanterns. Oh, yeah, baby. Give me the old Sky Lantern. Summon them from the deep. Ah, oh, Hadri's couldn't play today. No worries, man. I'll have a land battle tournament coming up soon, so. My son Herbert Walker is having one tomorrow. I actually think I'll play in that in the morning. <clears throat> I'm taking tomorrow off streaming, but the wife and I have some really fun plans in the afternoon, but I could play some games in the morning and see how I do. Yeah. If you guys don't know my son Herbert Walker, he's an excellent tournament host. He uh, he's he's hands down one of the most active tournament hosts. He j he took a break at the beginning of Warhammer Three, but now he's back hosting again. And literally every single weekend, he hosts a, a land battle tournament or um, on a regular tournament on Saturday, and then on Sundays he does what's called the Fresh Recruit tournaments, which is for new players. So he, he it's a really he's he's just a great guy, and he's on Twitch and YouTube as well. Uh, if you guys want to join his tournaments, just join my Discord. He posts them all there, so you guys can find your way to his events from there. 
Need more elf firepower. I know, Xyphos, I know. I smash ogres on ladder, just no iron blaster and two guarders. Uh, only bring them out if it's close. Yeah, ogres are really strong, obviously. They, they're favored against Cathay, but Cathay can win it. It's, it's one of the mm, kind of surprise matchups for Grand Cathay. Yeah, Ogre Tyrants are really good. For 1,500 gold, you get a great fighter who has passive healing in combat. And uh, yeah, like Ogre Tyrants are really good. There's no re reason to bring Greasus with Tyrants, I don't think. Like, Greasus is like 35 speed is such a joke. Yeah. Didn't know you were father. I know, that's the running joke with him. Yeah. Yeah, he's a really great guy, though. Very passionate about the community. So, Ogres versus Cathay. I mean, if Void Lols wins this, that's a that's a pretty big momentum shift. Oh, but he switches to Slanesh. Oh, he switched to Slanesh, I think, at the last second. Oh, man. So, you can see the meta's already pretty developed. People clearly think that Slanesh is a decent answer against Ogres, although we haven't seen them win yet. We're not sure. Oh, uh, yes, we can get you a link to the Discord. Hold up. Do you have any mods in chat that could drop a link for me? Just so I don't have to minimize and potentially risk a crash of some sort. It is certainly possible. All right. We're all set. Thank you, Hadris. Aces. Oh, Romulan dog. All day, man. All day. No reason to bring Greasus except... Yeah, Greasus is pretty sweet looking. I think if there was a matchup for Greasus, it would be Slanesh maybe. Because he's just so thick and he could just sit there and like beat on all the cavalry and stuff. Yeah, so it's going to be Slanesh versus Ogres. That, that's a safer pick. I, I feel like with Cathay, it's like they have some tools, but it's just like you're at your opponent's mercy, I feel. And Platypus clearly is showing no mercy today. Neither of them are. But it's a 1-1 series. So we advance on. Falcon, like many players from Total War Warhammer 2, is waiting for the full game's roster to come out. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. He's trolling. Get back on Cathay. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Yeah. I'm curious about the Slanesh build. What will the variants be? Could we see a wild Inkari? I don't think so. I think Inkari's too risky. Like, Inkari takes so much damage. Like, with the, what, five armor he has? Like, even Nobbler Trappers and, like, Maneater Pistols. Like, everything just gives Inkari the business. Yeah, Romulan, I might play in that. I'm going to start hosting more land battle tournaments as well. <clears throat> I feel like the glaring, like, issues with balance aren't as bad in land battles as they are in Domination. So, like, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. Out of curiosity, I wonder. Let's put it to a poll here. Uh, preference. I've, I've done this poll in my community section, but, like, you guys are actually here in the stream. I'm still going to do both. I'm just curious. I just want to kind of gauge everyone's interest that's uh, hanging out with us today. All right. Perfect. So yeah, what are your preference? What do you guys prefer watching? Hey, big NACL, you, you missed some fun games, but it's mostly just been Ogres and Zinch, just back and forth, like, all day. Ogres need Kragnos to be properly balanced. Both, yeah. Yeah, I should have put a both option, but I'm trying to, like, see what folks really enjoy. Oh, it's, it's pretty down the middle, actually, it seems. Yeah, so it's good to host both. I think if Domination gets a couple minor tweaks, it could really be what everyone wanted. And just a couple minor things. So yeah, Ogres, you guys have seen what Ogres have done against Slanesh. We saw that last game, okay? It's, it's going to be the same thing, probably. And Void Lulls, what will he try differently with Slanesh? That's what I'm really, really curious about. Land battles, the biggest issue with them is the, uh, is the maps, 100%. Land battles, maps are terrible right now, which makes the events a little bit haggard at times. Yeah, they're really oof at the moment, I agree. Yeah, so I mean, it seems like it's a pretty even split. Domination is fun, but what's annoying for me is that there's no mechanic to end the game sooner. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you have to wait. Land battles also might promote a bit of a toxic blob play style. They do, random. Yeah, we saw that from your Kislev in the faction war. <laughs> yeah, I think the maps are a big issue. Kislev feels a Kislev is really strong in land battles. Yeah, so we more or less get a, get an idea. It's like it's like right down the middle, more or less. That's that's kind of the, the what I've been gauging from everyone. So I guess just switching back and forth is fine between the two formats until, until like if Domination comes to a point where everybody likes it, like we can definitely make that the premier format. But for now, I don't think it's quite there yet. <clears throat> Soon though. 
domination just brings out unique opportunities for the changes uh, to flow. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And like, I think domination is going to be really cool once we get the old world factions. I think a big problem right now is how stagnant the meta is. Like, I think that reflects also poorly on domination where it might not deserve it in some ways. Like, I think if we had the old world factions, like we, like a lot of the issues, like we just wouldn't, the meta would be dynamic enough that it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, Romulan, I've been practicing a lot on Anticity's Ladder, yeah, for land battles. How is ancient land battles? They're really good. But they're not quite as bad. Like, they're worse in domination mode, yeah, I would say. All right, loading into game three, the Platypus on Ogre Kingdoms and Void Laws on Slanesh. Let us do it. Let us have some fun. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. For the army of Ogres, it's going to be Scrag, a Maneater, Pistol, and an Iron Blaster, facing off with some Ogre Bulls and some Noblars. And the Slanesh army is going to be Spears, Herald, no cultists in this army, which I like. The cultists do help you win the battles initially, but they kind of peter out after after some time. We got a couple whip boys as well as some spear boys on the mounts, and that appears to be it for the army. Yeah, not needing house rules is pretty sweet. Multiplayer campaign tournaments. Oh my god. That would potentially be possible. That would be possible. It would take a long time, though. That would be quite a bit of time. So, taking a look at the Ogres, like we said. Maneater Pistols, Ogres, Noblars, Iron Blaster. All the usual good stuff. No Gorgers, though, in this army, which is very interesting from the Menacing Platypus. We saw Gorgers accruing 2,000 value last time. So, uh, that was uh, that was something. And we got some anti-large cavalry. Hell Scourges are quite a good choice against Ogres. They have good weapon strength. They have a good charge bonus. And uh, also do have poison attacks. So, what's really cool about the Hell Striders is they're good against Noblars. And they're also good against big Ogres. They're like a very nice generalist piece here in this matchup. They do have shields, which also helps a little bit too against like trappers and that sort of stuff. Spears and the caster is going to be a shadow caster with the Lash of Slanesh, probably in the Pavain as well for the Rampage. Probably to just try and trigger some of the big uh, the big melee attack buffs for the whole army. And that's it. It is time. Let's get this party started and have some fun. Once again, I want to thank you all for joining. This is the grand finals of today's Domination Mode tournament, the Friday Fun Day. Bretonia and Vampire Counts technically have cheaper bodies than Skaven, they do. For Tony, you can throw peasants at objectives all day, I bet. Skaven, yeah, Skaven slaves are 125, right? I think, or 150? Oh my god, you hear Scrag just giving some speech? I just hear some, like, guttural growling over there. So, the Ogre Bulls trundling their way down the hill. Noblars as well. Iron Blaster's gonna be chilling. Ogres are probably pretty stoked on this map. Honestly, I think the Cathay pick might have been better here. Like, I feel like the Cathay pick for Void would have been pretty good. Because, like, imagine just bombarding this position with, with cannons. That would have felt really, really good. Especially against an Iron Blaster. Like, Iron Blasters get hard countered by Cathay cannons. They just get, like, straight up put in the trash can. But, yeah. Objective 1 here. Just going to be sat on by some Ogre Bulls and Noblars, probably. And with the choke point, it's going to be really hard for Slanesh to get that. So, what Slanesh is going to have to do is just take Objective 3 and then get a big surround on 2. That's probably their best bet. I'm just trying to fight that. Hmm. I'm so excited for bloaties. I'm so excited. The bloaties are going to be super fun. Harold the Slanesh moving around. Maybe looking to drop the summon right now? I don't think so. You better watch out though, man. Oh, the Iron Blaster shots. Oh my god, juked at the last second. One of the cannons hit and did some good damage. But had Void Laws not dodged that, that would have been like probably like 800 damage. It would have just been nasty, nasty. So you got to juke those shots for sure. The Platypus scooting and shooting there and uh, caused some problems. And here comes the Hell Scourges. Are they going to dive into the main fight here? Oh, a Cultist of Slanesh has been summoned, which is very indicative of the desire to fight here in the pits. The Herald of Slanesh is probably going to be dropping the Lash. In the back, we do get the first Gorger summon coming out, while the big Iron Blaster in the back shoots here into the Marauders of Slanesh. Their armor is sundered, and they've taken a little bit of fire. And the Hellstriders just kind of circling around on the objective. The Furies are out, so the die is cast. The battle is upon us. These Furies do have an expiration date, so you're going to want to send those in and attack at the same time. Probably going to be a summon of demonettes like on top of these ogres here. So Noblar is being hammered, and the old Herald of Slanesh is going to be dropping the whip, probably to get the melee attack buff. And what else do we have? we got spears coming across from all sides, so spears moving towards one and moving towards two. And how's this fight looking? We get the Power Fist, so the Power Fist did come down from Scrag. Demonettes have been summoned in the secondary lines to kind of keep the ogres off the objectives. I can't help but think this fight would be more effective to have taken when the objectives were open because you would be rewarded for your your pushing the ogres off whereas right now the ogres are just allowed to sit in a very defensive posture and just kind of like hold ground and just get value against you when there's nothing at stake 
So here on the side, we do have the Hell Scourges as well as the Hell Striders of Slanesh moving up and about. And these Hell Scourges moving into the old Gorgers here. Just chilling in the back. Slanesh players thinking that there's some free real estate back here. Little do they know they're going to need like a million resources to kill these Gorgers. Nice Trappers too. Trappers actually have good DPS against these, uh, these cavalry. And it looks like they're going to be turning around going after the Trappers. Oh no! The Herald realizes too late that the dreaded Gorgers are here. The big whip of Slanesh coming down. Slanesh bumping and grinding in the middle of the map. Void Law's moving in. But yeah, those Gorgers are going to be a problem. And now these these uh, these Hellstriders, he's trying to get away with them as more and more Cav do come around the flank. But these little Trappers are a surprisingly difficult unit to remove. Gorgers just doing the absolute work of the gods. Now, this objective is open and is being contested because the Noblars on the objective are really doing quite a bit. Value is going for the Menacing Platypus. Obviously, incredibly tough matchup here. I really do think the Grand Cathay pick would have been a little bit safer. Although, honestly, like, neither of them feel great. Hellstrider's doing their thing, but, like, he's right on top of the summon point. So here, you're going to just see Noblar Trappers being summoned, and they're just going to be cackling all the way to the bank. Whip of Slanesh does trigger the melee attack buff for the whole army, so big buffs for sure. But I think that Scrag and company are going to be able to get through here. It's only a matter of time. The Marauders, the Spears, should be able to push back the Noblars, and there are, are more Spear Marauders there. Valley is pretty even here, but again, remember, Ogre Kingdoms have healing. So they're going to be healing. So the value is a little bit of a, of a deceptive thing. This objective is being contested by Slanesh, though. They do have some spears back here. It is rotating upwards. A big opening here, actually. These Hellstriders should definitely attack those Maneater pistols in the back. That would be a really strong engagement. But it looks like, rather, they're, uh, they're opting to fight over here. And the Herald of Slanesh pops the Locus of Grace and is trapped by Gorgers and Trappers, who do have that slowing effect. So that's going to be slowing them in place for sure. And this objective might actually be taken by Slanesh, potentially. The middle is owned by the Ogre Kingdoms. The back objective, obviously, by Slanesh. And, uh, yeah, we have some cavalry. Oh, the Power Fist! That did so much damage, and Sweet Sorrow is activated. Going to be giving a small Vigor buff and speed buff. Not that Slanesh really needs a speed buff, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of extra speed. But this objective is now taken by Slanesh. So Slanesh playing the two back objectives pretty well. And the Ogres are kind of a little bit disconjointed with their build. Uh, the Man Eaters are a little bit trapped here. The Iron Blaster is trapped up. Gorger is moving in. This would be a very, very impressive victory if Slanesh were able to pull this one out. And the Gorgers, a big, big plus there. The Chaos Furies doing the dreaded uh, animation there, the bouncing up and down, are protecting this Herald from dying. And now a couple of these Spears have moved in and might be able to actually help finish off these Gorgers with the support of the Summoned Furies. Uh, and it looks like Void Lulls is actually starting to run away with this game in some ways. He collapses the Maneater position here. There are more Gorgers in play, so we did see Slanesh come out ahead early in the other matchup as well, but the Ogres were able to just kind of perpetually grind them back. But... Void Law seems to be getting slightly more efficient engagements here, and it seems like Slanesh might be able to pull out a crazy, crazy win. Which would be extremely impressive. Looks like Slanesh is going for the triple cap as well. Here in the middle, we do have the Seekers of Slanesh. Oh my goodness, and Scrag is surrounded! Oh, the big man is being whipped by all these Slaneshi anti-large cav! Wow, that's actually grim. That could be game blouses for sure. And the Ogre Kingdoms are now falling massively behind in value. This is a really, really impressive play. I mean, clearly Void Law is showing why he's one of the best players in the community. Here are the Chaos Furies swarming down. The Furies were a huge saving grace. And, like, the Ogres had this really big entrenched position right here. And they got kind of, like, surrounded there. Like, the Maneater Pistols got, like, kind of swarmed in the back. And the Iron Blasters also hasn't really been able to probably generate too much value. And Slanesh does have the triple cap now. Very, very impressive. So there's another whip right there on top of the Noblars. The Herald of Slanesh moving back here. Going to be trying to pin them in. Bosh! The Ogres leave the game and Slanesh, the Ogres have finally fallen! After winning like five games in a row today, they're defeated. Void Lols claims victory with the champions of the Dark Prince. All right, CA, if you're watching, clearly Ogres need some buffs, all right? Look how badly they just got, they got it from Slanesh. Slanesh OP. I'm just joking. Please don't do that. Um, yeah, great play. Really good flanking, really good objective play. Just well-rounded, solid victory from Void Laws. It's a 2-1 lead for Void now. We will see what Void Laws does for the next game. It is going to be the... Uh, do the Mountains of Morn for the next one. Yep, looks good to me. And there we are. Yeah, Troll Guts is a big heal for sure. <clears throat> Even a god can bleed. Yeah, the ogres, the, the ogres can be defeated. It is possible. All right, cool. So the map is set. Players will do their picks and bans here, and we'll keep going. And we'll see what they do. All right, Nurgle, Nurgle. If we chant his name seven times, does he appear? We chant the blessed number of, uh, of Nurgle. Don't give them ideas, Turin, I know. We felt 
after, after watching a tournament match between Menacing Platypus and Void Lols, we saw that the Ogres lost. As such, we have decided to reduce, make Noblars free. They actually cost nothing now, and Gorgers have had their unit size doubled. <laughs> just like, oh god. If that happened, I would probably legit just stop playing. Like, if, if, if Ogres get, like, buffed, I would probably just stop. That's not going to happen, okay? Yeah. It's not going to happen. I also am not a big fan of Cultist Siphos. Yeah, I feel like they're kind of like... I don't know. I feel like Cultists could have their their prices increased a bit. I don't know. Something to think about. I, I'm not a fan of their, how like much of an auto-pick they are. They just feel too good. Yeah. Really, really annoying to deal with for sure. I, I'm... As far as like ogre units that need buffs, I think the only thing in the ogre roster that actually needs a buff is probably Greasus. The like, Greasus could use a buff. That's about it. Other than that, I don't think they need anything. I'm just waiting for the Skaven Phil to be playable in this game. Yeah, it'll be really fun for sure. So what is it going to be here? Void Laws is up to one. If Void Laws wins this next game, uh, he will win the series and the tournament will be over. <clears throat> Okay, Romain uh, has, has chanted Nurgle seven times, therefore it's going to be an auto-pick here. <laughs> oh man, I was so excited when I first got my hands on this game and got to play Nurgle. I was like, oh man, they're so fun. But then like after myself and the other folks who had access were playing, we all figured out after like a week that Nurgle just sucked and my spirits were just so crushed. I was like, oh. I remember playing a bunch of practice games with Inticity. And I was losing with Nurgle against him. And I, for part of it was like, do I just like, am I just... Like, not good with Nurgle, but then, like, when I saw other people struggling, I was like, like, okay, it's not, it's just not me. Yeah. So, looking at the picks here, we still have not seen the pick and bans yet. They're, they're still on pick one, ban one. Uh, let me go ahead and check here. Void Law is asking me. I'm just checking the rules for him. All right. All right. Clarified the rules. He's all good. And let us see what schemes await us in the shadows. Very good. Dude, Galrash. Nobody beats Red Ulgor. He's he's the most legendary character. I feel like I feel like Games Workshop needs to give him a, his own model in tabletop. Red Ulgor. Like when they launch Old World, his face should be on the box. Just the haggard corn demon prince. Just getting stuck on a sky blimp. And it, you just have like Red Olgor and his like leg is just like tangled in like a sky blimp of Cathay, like the wreckage, and he just can't escape. That's like that's like his eternal punishment. The the Dragon Emperor of Cathay has punished Red Olgor by trapping his foot in a, a Cathay sky blimp. Yeah. Does anybody know when Mortal Empires will other races? Uh probably probably like, I don't know. I would say within three months of launch. So how long has this game been out? I don't know, like uh, almost a month. So yeah, that would be my guess. So what are the picks? Oh my God, no, not like this. We're getting a Nurgle pick. I think Platypus has just been teasing us today. Platypus has like selected Nurgle multiple times and then it's just always switched off. All right. Maybe it's an Urgle pick. I think the Platypus is just doing this to get the crowd hyped and then like doesn't doesn't actually play the Nurgle, which I, I don't blame Platypus. <laughs> Red Olgor deserves his own corn sub faction. I think he does. Yeah. Red Olgor <laughs> Red Olgor versus the Sky Junk Battle Box. Can somebody do like a haggard Photoshop of that and send it to me? Dude, I would use that straight up straight up as a screen blocker. If somebody actually like does a haggard like like Photoshop edit of Red Olgor versus like the like a sky junk, like that's like wrecked, <laughs> and puts it on like a Games Workshop box, dude, I would I would straight up use that. Three months was my guess, but now that yeah, it could be. I don't know. Something I I, I did suggest to Creative Assembly. I, I sent them a message saying, uh, "Hey, look, we know that it's harder to integrate the campaign, the old world into campaign, but." I feel like it wouldn't be as hard to add the old world factions into just multiplayer and custom lobbies. 
so I sent that message to them like a day or two ago and they said they said they would look into it. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's something that could happen. Like so the multiplayer community would at least be thrown a bone. And uh we could we could have like a really our full experience basically. Red Olgar is a given name. That's kind of disappointing. Yeah, I feel like it should just be the Demon Prince. So it's gonna be Corn versus Inch. Yes. In the next match, it's gonna be Void Laws on Zinch and Menacing Platypus on Corn. We've obviously seen Corn lose this a couple times, but Pendulum is off the table, so you can go with an infantry rush. Maybe Blood Letters? I don't know. I feel like no, they're not. Immortal Empires 2023. Dude, don't you dare put that evil on us. Son, don't you do it. Don't put that evil on us. That would be pretty, pretty, pretty dark for sure if we had to wait until 2023. So yeah, corn can go with corn dogs, like double cultists. We've seen that. It's clearly failed almost every time. I think corn playing a more mobile playstyle. I feel like corn trying to engage Zinch in a blob formation is gonna lose every time. But using corn dogs, furies, like a fast demon character to play the side objectives on Mountains of Morn or like wherever they don't have their blue blob is going to be the way to do this. Like otherwise I feel like the other options are just not great. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll have to see. I hope they do a Norsk update soon. I bet you there will be. Yeah, Void on Zinch is going to be rough. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, we saw Void with a very impressive Slanesh performance. So what factions have we not seen today? Uh, we did see Cathay get stomped in the beginning. We haven't seen Nurgle. And Kislev, yeah, we've seen everyone except except Nurgle. Yeah, everyone except Nurgle. When did the scene with Olgor happen? It's at the end of my most recent uh, multiplayer stream. So it wasn't a tournament. I just like played for a couple hours. And it's at the very end. It was in the free-for-all. Red Olgor like, destroys the Sky Junk, and then he gets stuck on it, and he can't move. And then he gets, uh, he gets a, a Soul Grinder to like push him. Yeah. I've modded my campaign so the rifts don't spawn till turn 1000. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Yeah, I, you know, honestly, I haven't really like played through the camp. I only play head-to-head -head campaigns, really, which I love. I love head-to-head -head campaigns. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, for Legend, it's not... He doesn't play multiplayer campaigns, so for him, he doesn't really have another option, yeah. Like, if he doesn't like the main experience, like... I'm not a huge fan of the the the, the gate, the, like the, the Realms of Chaos experience. Like, it's okay. It was fun the first time, but after you do it a couple of times, I kind of lost interest. But the cool thing is I can do head to heads with my friends and like four player campaigns, which is one of the things CA did really right was having a uh, big multiplayer, uh, big, big uh, multiplayer campaigns. I think that's super awesome. Like I just finished playing one with Professor Pwn and that was some of the most fun I've had like in this game. It was so fun. It was so fun. All right, so Corn versus Inch, they picked their sub factions. I would imagine they'll be starting shortly. Mountains of Morn, pretty good map for mobile play. You have like three objectives with very quick ambush points on them. I don't, I don't know when Nurgle's going to be buffed. I would wager next month sometime they'll have like a bouncing patch. War Mammoth on a domination point, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty hilarious. The red the red Olgor moment will live down in infamy. It is the stuff of legends. You know what game? Like over the years, I have always, I have always given like Blizzard a chance, and I've just been con consistently disappointed in their games for like the past like five or six years. You know, but I like think I'm actually kind of excited for D Diablo Four because I, when they they did a, a good job with their remaster of Diablo Two, like apparently the remaster is really good. So I'm like kind of like hopeful they can have that same kind of style for Diablo 4. Would you guys be interested in watching that? Like if I did guides on Diablo 4 on like how to build guides and all that stuff. I was a pretty good D2 player back in the day. 1.1 is supposed to have a lot of bounce stuff, yeah. The multiplayer campaign is the best part of Warhammer 3, but I've yet to convince other friends to play with you. Oh man, that's that's rough, dude. Can you imagine respawning bloaty boys? Yeah, that's going to be pretty strong actually, I think. But not in every matchup, Medi. I think in matchups where you're facing melee factions, it will be. Especially if somebody doesn't notice. Yeah. Lost Ark is Diablo 4, but before Diablo... Isn't that Lo is Lost Ark? Isn't that more of like a... Like a... Like a car not like an overhead, like asymmetrical kind of game. 
Dude, I'm so sad what they did to Warcraft 3. I'm so sad. Diablo, Di Warcraft 3 just got like dumped on so bad. I feel so bad for the Warcraft community. Like if you think we have our hardships here, like Warcraft 3 literally just was like discarded and just like thrown in, thrown out. It, I feel so bad for them. And they had such a good scene. Warcraft 3 had a really cool pro scene. They had some really amazing casters, uh, like back to Warcraft and those guys. And like, they just like, oh my God, the neglect for Warcraft 3. It has so much potential too. It's such a good game. I'd watch some Diablo 4. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. I'd probably watch anything you stream. <laughs> Thank you, man. That means a lot. I would love to see Diablo streams like late night magic streams. Yeah. Well, Diablo 4 isn't going to come out until 2023, apparently. So, like, it's it's a long time. It's a long time. Hey, Brian. Appreciate that. Thank you. You know, I thought about... I thought about playing some uh, Elden Elden Ring, just uh, just like a one-off stream. My wife plays it, and she's, she's quite good at it. I see her riding around and slaying all the beasts. I think she plays an astronomer. Yeah, she's she's been playing a lot, so I always like walk past her room and her little office in there, and I see her see her playing it. And I'm like, hmm, looks like fun. I play Warcraft three every day for four years with my friends before ladder and custom games. I know it's just it's so grim now. Hey Bowie, thank you for the donation. Twenty five bucks from Bowie, thank you. And you just say hi. That's it. Well, hey, what's up? Appreciate the donation, guys. Appreciate that. Yeah, Reforged is really grim. Uh, I did watch Matayush. I watched some of N4C. Yeah, I watched uh, I watched a handful of games at night, like on the reruns. I was gonna go cast for that, but I got some personal stuff I have to take care of next week, and I, I couldn't I couldn't travel to Germany because and stay there, you know. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, here we are. It is the grand finals. It is gonna be the menacing platypus facing off against Void Lols. Currently, Void Lols up two one. If Void does win this, it is gonna be game blouses. So. We got blues and blues and pinks. We got a bunch of Furies actually trying to contest this guys, make sure there's no uh, no Chaos Furies of Corn causing problems. And yeah, just a super wide build with a big chicken. It is going to be Kairos with a Pendulum, no Pendulum, excuse me, with a Blue Fire and Harmonic Convergence, as well as the Snare. So that's pretty cool. Now for the Coronate Forces, it is going to be Friar Tuck here. We have the, uh, oh my god, the haircuts on these cultists are so ridiculous. I'm going to say that every time. Double cultists and a huge infantry build. And now that, you know, Pendulum isn't on the table here, uh, that is going to potentially make a super wide build like this work. I think it's a really cool attempt. I don't know how well it's going to work. We will have to see. But, you know, it's a lot of armor. Blues don't have a ton of armor piercing. So in theory, they might be able to hold the objectives long enough. We will find out. I'll be playing it if they don't. Yeah. If they make Diablo 4 have like Diablo 2 feels, like, that's going to be sweet. I went really hard on D3 and was super disappointed, especially when D3 first launched. Like the real money auction house was such an atrocity. That was like the beginning of the end because right before D4 or D3, like they had been doing StarCraft and it was doing well. And then like we started to see the writing on the walls, like when Diablo 3 came out. It was so terrible at first. They eventually made it better, but that was rough. Oh my God, look at the blue fire. Jeez, look at the damage it does to those Chaos Warriors. That is nuts. And he could just keep casting that too because he can reset his spells, but he can only do that once. That is a really, really strong spell. Because that is incredibly incredibly good at sniping, but also uh, very, very good at, uh, at gooning things out. Yeah, pretty wild. All right, so Chaos Warriors moving up. Going to be jumping onto Objective 3. The middle is certainly being pressured pretty hard, but the Chaos Warriors will get there. What are the reinforcements going to be for Corn? I believe they summoned some Corn Dogs over here, so we have Flesh Hounds of Corn. Yeah, I think that's a good choice. Definitely can swarm the blues and pinks and do some work and uh, potentially cause some problems. So the double cultist moving up. That will give them a little bit of buffering. Probably, I think you pull the cultist from objective three and move them on over to the center. So objective three is going to be a pretty easy one for corn to take, but objective two is going to be where the fighting happens. This is where the magic happens. We're seeing, you know, spawn, which are really good here because they have armor sundering. So the armor of the warriors is brought down to 70, which makes them quite a bit easier to hit. And Cairo's chicken weaver is also jumping over here. He's, he's doing his, his haggard... Uh, Animations there and doing a little bit of cycle charging of the corn warriors, which are going to be moving up for the old blood god So where are the cultists at? They're moving on over. Correct. Corn dogs swarming from all sides Objective three will be taken by corn and they have a lot of infantry There is a chance that the armor and durability of this coronate force is going to be very very strong So they're moving another blue fire gonna go down that one won't do quite as much damage But still a little bit. It's not the end of the world, but that was uh, that was certainly decent So chaos warriors gonna be getting Punished a little bit by the spawn, but they do have the silver shields against the blues here, which is certainly quite nice. 
And the cultists making their way in. Kairos does have Gaze of Fate. And now we can see the Furies. Okay, interesting. Oh, and look at this. He's actually got... I've never seen anybody do this. He's got the pinks mounted on the walls. You can actually mount them on the walls. And they're actually shooting. But the corn dogs are coming there. And I think that's a mistake going after them. Because what's going to happen is Zinch will summon something. Yeah, look, Forsaken right away. Just screen that out. But the corn dogs here are trading okay against the two Furies. Certainly taking a little bit of work. But the Chaos Warriors can help equalize that fight. Now, in the middle... It looks like the Chaos Warriors getting a decent trade. Pushing them off the objective, but the objective is owned by Zinch at the moment. Objective 3 currently owned by Corn. No surprises there. As the Corn Dogs do get nibbled on, and where do the other Corn Dogs go? Do they actually go around for a surround? They did. Interesting choice. Because now the Corn Dogs are going to be enveloped by Kairos, and the spawn will sandwich them, and yeah, there's other Corn Warriors, but it's not like their DPS is going to be insane. What I would like to see from Platypus right here would be a summon. Like a Corn summon right on top of these guys, just to, uh, you know, block these forsaken firstly because these forsaken charging into the back of the corn dogs pretty much spells their doom now corn is up on the objectives they're losing out on value but they will be getting this objective soon i think yeah some blues are trying to make their way back on we have dual weapon warriors of corn which will be excellent against blues they'll make very very quick work of them and more corn dogs being summoned on the far side so really it's i think for corn it's about just pouring everything you possibly can onto the middle objective here we get some very bare bones chaos warhounds trying to hunt down the flamers of zinch i think that's a very nice play if they can uh, catch those flamers that's going to be Potentially some good value. And Corn is starting to equalize the value a little bit. You can see Menacing Platypus here is grinding through these units. And uh, the forces of Zinch are being pushed back. So clearly the the really wide Cornate infantry build seems to be a little bit more effective than what we saw from Void Laws in Game 1. Which was, you know, just dogs and elite units and things like that. Like the armor of Corn with no Pendulum on the table. With Pendulum being banned because it's broken, obviously. is uh, Seems quite a bit stronger. So Zinch is behind on value, but not by too much. I think when Zinch starts to get some, like, Flamer summoned back here, they can roast it. Like, a single Flamer unit would honestly counter, like, almost his entire army. And here comes the Zinch army ability. Gonna be getting some huge blows right here. That's gonna hurt bad. Yeah, as the Firestorm of Zinch comes down, opening from the realm of the Changer. Oh my god, huge damage coming in! And look at Void, just get a huge spike in his damage there. As more and more spawner being summoned in to take out those Chaos Warriors. Objective 3 is more or less secure, and it looks like those Warriors are gonna be moving over to the middle. And the Flamers of Zinch, uh, did they stabilize? They did. They have 50 speed. And when these guys get shooting, that is going to be extremely punishing for sure. I do like this corn style of play, though. It feels much stronger than what we saw before. But I feel like once the Flamers are able to start shooting, it's going to be a big problem. And I think they're weaving through here. So here they come. Flamers going to be drifting on over. Oh, my God. Look how just, like, open and juicy this backline is. Oh, that's going to hurt so bad. And the Corn Dogs tried to come in, but Void Laws with the great counterplay, getting the Chaos Furies of Zeech to block them from getting onto that point here. And oh no, not like this. Okay, at least they're shooting the Cultists, but if they shoot into that blob there, that's going to be an unholy disaster. Oh man, bathing them in hot fire. But the Blood Letters have been summoned, and the Chaos Warhounds came out of nowhere. They are going to be able to potentially uh, get on top of the Flamers of Zeech, which are pushing away. <clears throat> I need some water, man. Get a little too hype here, guys. So, the Fury's running away. The Flamers, excuse me. The Blood Letter's trying to chase them, but they're so quick. 50 speed is very, very good. But the longer that Corn is able to kind of keep them off the objective, the more chance they have of winning by just falling back and, uh, you know, playing the attrition game on one objective. But I don't think it's going to get to that point any soon, anytime soon. A 2-to-1 cap is going to take some sweet time. Up in the sky, the Chaos Furies of Zinch. Really nice usage of the Harmonic Convergence, which apparently gives armor. Is that a new thing? But that does give some armor and is allowed is allowing them to just wreck the Chaos Furies of Corn. Platypus is taking some big value hits on those guys, for sure. Over here, we do have the Blood Letters still on the hunch, as well as some Chaos Warhounds. But the Pink Horrors are going to be used as a screen. And Corn just with, like, a big haggard blob here, man. They're just, like, rubbing against each other, enjoying each other, you know, just having some fun. Objective 3, though, I mean, like, this is super open. I wouldn't be surprised to see, like, some, like, a blue. Like, a single blue be summoned and just run over there. Like, Corn is so committed to this middle. And they're not really guarding this objective. I, I mean, I don't know why Void wouldn't go for this. This seems like a pretty easy pick. Oh, there it is. It's as if he read my mind. Which isn't possible because there's actually like a 30 second delay on my chat in the game. So he couldn't have possibly heard that. But the Blue Horror is going to be moving on over to objective 3, it looks like. Which I think is the right play. Just take that. Because right now, Corn is closing the gap. They're only, you know, 1,200 value difference, give or take. Eh, a little bit more than that. But yeah, those Flamers of Zinch, man. When those get online, that's going to be a really, really bad day. Flesh Hounds of Corn getting roasted. And it looks like uh, Cairo's Fate Weaver, the Great Chicken, is on his way down. And these blues just kind of shooting at these those Furies, which are sitting a little bit idle. So a slight misplay there from the Platypus. Could have used those Furies to dive on those Flamers of Zinch. But instead, they're just being killed by the blues, which have disgustingly good shooting. 
They just did. They're such a good unit. Like their tankiness and their shooting and just all that stuff. Oh no, and the Zinch army ability again. Just punishing the entire Cornate force. Those guys are going to get absolutely pounded. Oh my god, that was disgusting. That whole Korn army just got melted. That is the Zinch army ultimate ability, and it is so good against Blobbed Infantry. So now Zinch is certainly in a pretty cozy position. This objective is being threatened. It looks like the blues are almost there. We do get some Flesh Hounds that move up and are able to clean the Forsaken off the objective, but are they going to be able to clean all this? I don't think so. Zinch does have some Chaos Furies of their own. But there are some more Chaos Furies of Corn. Definitely want to land those guys on the ground. Very, very nice play there. And then they can just try and hold the blues off the objective. The middle is probably going to be taken by Zinch in a moment as well. They do have the Forsaken. Man, that was really, really nasty. Oh my goodness. That was some foul stuff. Objective 1 being held pretty comfortably by Zinch. I don't think anybody's going to be contesting that. We do get some Chaos Warriors of Corn moving, but they're a very slow reinforcement unit. I often think, like, even in this matchup, Blood Letters might be good because they get there quicker. Whereas the Chaos Warriors with their 28 speed is, uh, is, is definitely very, very painful. So Flesh Hounds, as well as the Corn Dogs, able to push back the Zinch forces and buy some time on this objective, which I think is quite good. The two Cultists trying to hold here, but there's no summons. There's a couple Tattered spawn, but that, that army ability was just so disgusting. That did so much work. And that's the big problem with the Corn Dogs. Their reinforcements are very, very slow. That's why oftentimes you'll see people... I like what Platypus did, like starting with a big slow army and get there when the objective's open, but now we're starting to see that kind of like backfire a little bit. As not backfire, backfire is not the right word. It was the right choice. The army from Platypus was really good. But the follow up, like maybe, maybe blood letters are better. Like, even though they'll die quicker, I feel like they can at least get to the objectives. They could, like, be pressuring this, right? So, Corn gonna be summoning in some Chaos Warriors with dual weapons, and they are chasing these Screamers down. This objective is now being captured. The Screamers are kiting. You might as well just let them shoot their ammo and just sit on the objective at this point. Middle is taken, and objective three is being held by Corn for now. The Corn Dogs are running out of steam, though, and Zinch is. Pretty well ahead on value. It looks like Void is certainly in a comfortable position as the Chaos Warriors of Corn looks like they wanted to go that way, but I think they're going to be rerouting here. They do have some time. They have a cushion, right? <clears throat> they definitely have a cushion. This objective is being taken. Those flamethrowers just foul, foul damage. Oh my god, it's so good. But they're going to get pushed off the objective here. Is there more reinforcements coming in? We have dual weapon warriors moving through the forest. You got some corn dogs moving this way. This objective 100% going to be taken by Zinch. The blues and the Forsaken just cackling all the way to the blood bank. And really, these each army abilities are what won it. That corn army was mega blobbed, and it got hit with it twice. Like, they were actually doing pretty good in that trade up until that happened. That was just, like, pure destruction. So here are the Chaos Warriors of corn being roasted by the old Flamers of Zinch, but they're out of ammo, and they are afflicted by Warp Flame as well, which lowers their armor, making the shooting of the other Zinch units like, just much more effective. So, probably going to be a triple cap. I think that's game over. A very valiant attempt by the Platypus with a game one victory against Void Laws, but... Just like last time, Void Laws did lose the first game of the Grand Finals, but then was able to reverse sweep with a 3-0. So nothing left. That appears to be it. Korn tried. They tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, the changer of ways uh, certainly had his way. More dual weapons moving in. They'll trade pretty well versus these units, but, you know, the big chickens here are probably going to be getting some blue fires right down the pipe. Forsaken will trade good enough against dual weapon warriors, especially with all these, like, blues and other reinforcing units. These Chaos Warriors are broken for some reason. I don't know why. They still have like, like 60, 70 models or something like that. But yeah. I mean, Tomb Kings never got a DLC, but I guess Ogres might. I feel like Ogres will not get a DLC for a while. They have a pretty big roster compared to some of the other ones. Like, I would wager Ogres will get a DLC like somewhere way down the road. Yeah. So Kairos Fate Weaver with the Staff of Tomorrow. Going to be cackling. Minus 120 on his cooldown, so he can certainly do some more. Oh my god. The Portal opens here it comes zinch one last time what does that actually look like up there that's pretty cool it's like this you see like the stars and all that but the coronate army is just getting nuked into oblivion oh my god these zinch army ultimates have just been so on point from void laws they've been so on point and now that separates the value even more and those like haggard corn infantry that took forever to get there are just like now getting bombarded as soon as they arrive and the Chaos Knights of Zinch will obviously be very durable. Like, none of the Corn Infantry are Halberds here, so they're going to struggle. And that is going to be a 3-1 victory for Void Laws. GG, well played. So those army abilities were crazy good. I love the build from Platypus as well. I thought it was a really cool take on the matchup. And uh, could have worked, potentially. But the follow-up just, like, didn't feel quite as effective. Yeah, there were Blood Letters there. There were Blood Letters. They just weren't used. Blood letters against Forsaken. I'm not sure how that trading goes. Really well played by the Platypus, though. It was great. And Void Laws, of course, playing amazing as always. Very little mistakes. Like, Void Laws doesn't make too many mistakes. And uh, clearly showing that he does have a mastery of the Ogres and Zinch.
Like, really, really good mastery of those factions. All right, so that is going to be 3-1. We will make it official. And going on over to ye old uh, brackets one last time. Avoid Lost will be claiming victory. And there you have it. GG, well played. Yeah, the big bird droppings on the corn army was very, very, very nasty. Yeah, very, very nasty. So congratulations to the players. Want to thank all of you guys for joining. It was certainly a fun tournament. Honestly, though, I, uh, I, I, there were, were some fun games, but just like seeing ogres dominate everyone feels pretty bad. You know, there was there was definitely a little bit of that that feeling today. The other tournament we had a more dynamic matchups, but today it was just literally like the OP factions usually just winning every single game, with the exception of one match, which we had Slanesh beat ogres, which was really cool. Um, but nonetheless. I'm sure we'll be getting some updates soon that will be uh, balancing things out a little bit to make the meta a little bit more fresh. And of course, when we get the old world back in, it'll be a whole different beast. And yes, you guys wanted the dreaded FFA. I forgot I uh, promised it to you guys. So let us go ahead and do that. GG to those champs. Let's close it out. And for all of you fans of Nurgle, you're going to get just what you're looking for. All right, so... That is a 3-1 victory. Let me go ahead and say GG to the players here. Where are they? In the tournament chat? There they are. Okay. GG, you too. And we'll move back. The FFA is coming. Turin FFA. First come, first serve. Nurgle's going to get some love. Nurgle is definitely going to get some love. Because they, they've just been neglected for far too long. Uh-huh, one and two. All right. What map do we want to do? Oh my God, Professor Pwn joined so fast. It was so fast. Let's see the Lost Temple. Yeah, baby, let's go. The dreaded FFA to close it out. Cultist, Corn Cultist Cat Ears, yeah. I'm, no, Rabble, you're not the first person who said that. Nurgle, Nurgle. Oh, you know what's going to be even more interesting? No, no, we got it. We got to do this. Yes, good, Anakin, good. All right, so we got Demons of Chaos, Kissel of Ogre Kingdoms. Uh, Kugath is a bit of a Chungus. All right, so I got to get the, the blocker up. There we go, Wookiee Claws here. Okay. You're rooting for Pwn? How dare you root against Nurgle? How dare you? That's not right. Okay, Ogre Kingdoms and Kislev. There's a ton of shooting. I feel like if I get anything big, it's just going to die. Oh, okay. So we're going with you. I would get like a Palanquin, but that just feels like too much of a meme. Kislev and Demons of Chaos. Yeah, okay. That's fine there. God, so much Winds of Magic for those abilities. Goodness gracious. We'll do that one. Okay, let's get you guys rolling. Uh-huh. Ogre Kingdoms and Kislev. How do I fight them? Nurgle is a huge meme for sure. Yeah. We need the flyers with grenades. Oh, man, they, they like against Demons of Chaos and against Kislev, that's so bad though. That's so bad. I, I'm thinking about getting a triple a triple chonky boy build. That could be kind of fun. But then like I just can't get anywhere. All right, so let's. Okay, that that looks like fun. This looks like fun at least. Win or lose, we got like a champ. Uh huh. Cultists here don't feel really good, honestly. All right, there's gonna be there's gonna be a, a, an old rumbling in the in the grounds here. Ah. Uh... Yeah, why not? Okay, this build is just so weird. I don't know how this is gonna go down, but let's let's just let's just see. Let us just see. All right, Nurgle stands ready. This is this is a pretty meme build. Yeah. Uh, Shelton Apache says, "Yeah, I almost feel like you shouldn't be able to pick a faction from your last series and the current one." Oh, are you talking about right now? Yeah, just so we could see some different matchups. Uh, yeah, it was, you know, when Warhammer 2 launched too, we only had four factions for like a month, but like 
when Warhammer 2 came out, a month later, we got the old factions added back in. So within six days from now, we would be getting all the old factions back if this were, you know, Warhammer, Warhammer 2. So it wasn't, the weight wasn't as bad, I feel. And honestly, balance at Warhammer 2 felt better. Like nothing at the launch of Warhammer 2 was really that nasty. It felt much better. But like the balance was far superior, I think. Yeah. No, not a Royal Air Force. We have like the, the, the unit. We have the big squad here. Yeah, we got we got like we got triple great unclean one with uh, with a bunch of toads basically. I wanted to have like a more mobile build because what happens if I go infantry is everybody either ignores me or just swarms me with Nurgle. So I don't I don't want to I don't want to feed those points. Are we gonna see Santa? You're gonna see some extra thick boys. Kugath is an FFA is just so bad it takes him forever to get there. Uh, Ryan says. Uh, dude, turn. My buddy just offered me free tickets to Dragon Force in Seattle in exchange for a ride there in two hours. Chat, should I do it? I mean, that sounds like some fun for sure. That definitely sounds like some fun. Dragon Force is, is pretty epic. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. The blockers, the blockers here. All right. So we got Big Chungus. We got him and his homies. This is my favorite thing ever. This is why Nurgle is the best Chaos God. Look at these thick boys. Oh yeah, dude. Just getting getting those getting those legs up there. Look at the flexibility. Do the other ones do sumo moves? Oh, they actually look do they look different? No, they look the same. The ones in the back are a little bit lazier. They don't actually do sumo. Come on. Did you guys have any like dance moves or anything? I guess you just laugh. Okay, fair play. And aside from that, we got the triple chunky boy squad. We have a bunch of toads. And then we got like a single rot fly guy. That's it. Uh, looking around. What do we have here? We have ogres. You know, let's go fight the ogres. Let's just let's just sacrifice ourselves to the great maw. If they're gonna eat, they're gonna eat poorly. Yeah, because demons of chaos, no thank you, and Kissel of no thank you. I'd rather fight ogre kingdoms actually. This is a pretty thick army for sure. Definitely pretty heavy memeage. Oh my god, Mornfang Cavalry. I'm coming for you. So he's got Mornfang Cavalry. Oh my god, I can't catch him. Oh no, he's got great weapons. Shit. That's not good. I'm surprised he's not attacking me. I feel like I would be some some easy, easy pickings there for him. Oh, you know what? We might actually be able to kill Pwn's army. Like, looking at Pwn's army here, I'm like, huh. Do we have a chance here? God, it takes me so long to get anywhere, though. This is like the most annoying thing about Nurgle and FFA. Pwn, fight me. Bellacor, I know you want some. Pwn, let's have a gentleman's duel. We can let we can let Kislev and, and Ogres fight, and you and I can have a, a gents duel here, even though I feel like I'm going to lose this. All right, let's go. Bellacor's up in the sky looking extra scary. Uh, Beast of Nurgle spam? Yeah, I don't know. These guys are cooler, though, so rule of cool, man. Can I catch these? Can I catch these guys? Pwn's trying to run from me, but Nurgle, Nurgle is, is fast. Look at these things. The dreaded 59 speed trying to catch his demons. Come on, Pwn. What are you running from? What what are you running from? What is that? Oh, he brought a plague ridden with healing, yeah, for Bellicor. Oof. The toads cometh. The great unclean chunguses. Uh, okay. Wow. Okay, never mind. Oh, God. The Ogre Cavalry are coming for me now. Come on, big boys. Come on. Okay, nobody wants to go fight Kislev because they're, like, entrenched. Yeah, Pwn, Pwn thinking about fighting me here? It's a little hard to say. Uh, Ogres are on their way over, and that is a lot of big boys with great weapons, which I do not want. Oh, no, dude. Please, please let me escape. My Winds of Magic is building up. Uh, Pwn is fleeing the scene, which he could get sandwiched here. Like, if Kislev hits Pwn here, I'm definitely going to sandwich him. He's backing himself into a corner a little bit. God, my great unclean ones are so slow, dude. Oh my god, look at these chunky boys. <laughs> why are you running? It's the why are you running meme, yeah. Oh my god, dude, come on. If Kislev, if Kislev engages here, we might have to send the Toads in ahead of the Great Unclean ones. Because they're just taking 10 years to catch up. Alright, Kislev. Look, look, Pwn is trapped! He's trapped, dude! The Seogers is coming to get you. 
Right, let's pull back a little bit. Dude, Pwn thinks he's safe. He he is definitely taking the wrong engagement here. Okay, let's go. Let's go, Toads. Unleash the fury of Nurgle. Well, I guess Nurgle's not really an angry god, but... You know, whatever. Close enough. Okay, so now the, the ogres, I don't think, are coming after me. We definitely want to go get on his units. This is what you get, Pwn. This is what you get for running from me. You could have had an honorable duel with Big Papa Nurgle, but instead you chose you chose death. All right, so let's just get all these guys clicking here. What do we got? Some Seekers here? I have no idea how Toads are going to do against Seekers, honestly. Probably terribly. It's a Nurgle unit. The answer is always bad. Come on, boys. Let's move. The dreaded Nurgle sandwich. Oh, dude. Look at that. Let's go, baby. Let's go. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to start getting some value, man. We could attack his Herald up in the sky. His Plague Ridden. It's actually not a bad idea. Come on, big boys. God. It takes forever to get here. Give me some of these points, dude. Okay, so we got his Plague Ridden kind of trapped. The Great Unclean Ones are waddling. Just give me something. Give me a consolation prize. Let me put you guys in five. Try and get us around here. Bone's definitely getting the business. The Toads have arrived on the Pinks, which is funny because they probably won't even kill them. We'll, we'll have to see. The thousand gold anti-infantry unit can kill them. Come on, Great Unclean Ones. Oh, buddies. Let's unlock the formation. We have some fat heals too. I'm gonna try and get the toads like around the side as well. And yeah, we're getting some good damage on the Lord there, which is giving us some good value. We got some blood letters moving in. Uh, we could get more toads, but I think the great unclean ones will handle this in the front. Let's go, baby. Come on. Come on, toads. What do we got here? Ooh, blue horrors. Nice. And some uh, some Kissel of infantry. That seems like a pretty, pretty ideal situation for us. Bombardment going down, not gonna do anything. Let's go, big boys. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the thickest of them all? It is I, Nurgle. All right, so let's just hit into the side of these pinks now. Looks like the toads are actually doing an okay job. Oh no, Bellicor came. So we need to uh, descend these guys and just have them attack on the ground. If Bellicor wants to follow us, we got three big chunky boys who would like to have a word with them. Yes, my toads, hop through them. All right, we're, at least we're fighting here. That ogre army is definitely terrifying. It's gonna be the like the scraps of my army against uh, against them for sure. Let's use a heal on them. Come on, get those Zargard. Those things are definitely some solid points. And the Toads have done their job. They're mainly battling Kossars now. Oh my God, Kislev just got absolutely hammered. They just got absolutely hammered. Who's this? This is uh oh no somebody's somebody's lagging here. Yeah, it's, uh, they need dedicated servers for this game too, man. It's it's like it's to have it be like a true good PVP experience. I feel like they do. All right, chunky boys, let's go. Pump those those chubby legs. Uh, let me actually catch here. Okay, so those Zargard are getting killed. The Toads are doing okay. Oh yes, we have Coast Alton over here. We'll get like a little bit of damage on all of them. Bellacor is still around. Bellacor could be a big player for sure. I probably am gonna go for last man standing. Although the ogres have literally taken no damage, guys. They're like they're just unholy. Like those ogre cavalry are all anti-large too. Okay, let's get on you. Let's get this big ch chonky boy over here. Looks like the Zargard are giving us some good points. Kislev is getting good points, but they're not going to be able to win because they, they they don't have like much of their army left. What do we have here? Armored Kossars. Yeah, let's bounce out and go after them. We got some light war sleds. Let's go hammer them. It literally just had the sleeping animation for one of my great unclean ones. I'm like, they're literally all in combat. Okay, let's do the plague on them. Take down the witch on her bear. We can. Look at the toads. Toads doing work. Got to make sure not to overextend, though. Do we have any great unclean ones? Yeah, we're getting a good beatdown on these horses here. Oh, Bellacor's coming in to attack Rasputin. Oh, my God. Dude. Oh, no. Oh, no, the ogres. Run back, my toadlings. Back into the forest. In your natural habitat. Okay, the ice witch got pretty beaten up. Bellacor is here. We got some good points there. Oh, man, I'm a little bit nervous about getting in hard combat with the ogres. Let's do this. I have, a, I have a pretty sweet play right here. We're gonna pull back for a second. And then we're gonna take on the ogres. But first we have to do the most OP Nurgle trick of all time. Oh, they're coming for us. Are they? Okay. We can just, like, engage everyone here. 
What are they attacking here? Oh, some of the Mornfang Cavalry actually overextended. Okay, so we're getting some damage on them. Okay. Let's go, team. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, they're so slow, dude. Okay, they're taking down cavalry models, though. They have 500 weapons ranked. <laughs> Look at the chodes of Nurgle! Come on, baby! This is this is what we want, though, right here. Just a huge overcasted heal. Oh, that's going to be so good. That's going to be so much value for us. Like, the amount of healing is going to be so gross. Cool. So, yeah, some of the Mornfangs are trapped. Bellicor and company just kind of chilling in the, in the bushes. Our army's, like, healed the full, more or less. Let's pull the toads back and let our SEMs get on top of that guy. Wow, that, that thing is actually getting beaten down pretty good. Uh, what do we have here? Bellicor is like hunting these characters. Yeah, he looks pretty mad. We could we could just harp at them and try and farm them for value here. Let's see if we can get the toads around them. So the triple unclean one, definitely doing some work. That was a big heal. Nur Nurgle gonna give it to you? Yeah, dude. That DMX song is sweet. X gonna give it to you. All right, let's go, boys. Okay, it looks like they're coming back for more for round two. Unfortunately, my Mortis Engine effect is like pretty useless here. Dude, look at the toads. Look at him go. Why are you guys idling, dude? Attack. All right, uh, we definitely need some toads out here to help. Oh, come on, great unclean ones. There are so many great weapons. Like my whole army is large. How have I, man, I guess I haven't taken that much damage. I don't have any good army abilities right now. All right, Nurgle, let's do what you're best at, which is just bumping and grinding. Oh. Uh, okay, we got the fiends being attacked here. Probably get you guys over there as well. This is it? This is what we do? Literally, we just mouth breathe and just trade here. Let's, let's do the plague. Oh my god, dude. You guys, you guys need to like come back here and defend so I don't get surrounded. The chunky boys are taking some work, but we'll have a big heal soon. Yeah, their bells are getting in there, but that's so much. Okay, these are just basic Mornfang Cavs, so at least they're not anti-large. I feel like the Toads are going to trade pretty badly. How much value have you guys got? 1,000, 700, and uh, what are you at right now? Ah, 2,000, pretty good. They've actually performed well. Uh, overcasted Heal could go down again. Yeah, that would hit, like, everything, actually. Yeah, let's do that. I don't know if it's necessary. I probably should have waited a little longer. I have enough wins, I think, for one more, maybe? No, no more. That was it. That Heal hit everything, though, which was good. So that'll, that'll heal the toads up and buy me a little bit of time. And the great unclean boys doing some work, man. Witness the, the greatness of the toad force one. I know the toads, what have they done on value? 800, hey look, they've almost paid for themselves. 800 here and they still have a lot of life to give. 600 and uh, you know what? Not a bad performance from the toads. And dude, look, the, the, the Chungus squad is too much. The ogres had to retreat. Look, they're routing, the ogres are routing, dude. Oh, Bellacor, it's time, bro, it's time. I'm, I'm Gotham's Reckoning. Let's go chase these ogres off the battlefield if we can. Come on. Come on. Let's go, team. Nurgle, Nurgle will get its love somewhere. Let's go, big boys. Use the blightstorm here. Come on, toads. Oh, no. The ogres are rallying their forces. Come on. Oh, no. Okay. So we don't want to do that. We're just going to go lie and wait in the trees again. Okay. So we need to kill these casters. Bellacor just using some random abilities. Yeah, you got fleshy abundance there. Oh god. Oh god. Dude, that is... Imagine seeing this sight coming at you right now. Like what you're seeing right now. Yeah. We don't want our toads to take that charge. That's just like a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, so the caster got away. Obviously, we don't have the tools to really trap them. We're up on points. Ogre's terrifying as usual. Toad Force 1. A rare win for Nurgle, maybe, maybe. Bellacor is still here, though. Pone is doing good on points, too. He's, he's doing good. All right, let's pour in and fight. Let's go, team. Bellacor is in here, just an absolute mess. We have how much wins of magic? Not much. Oh, without flying units. Oh, my God, Professor Pone has no ground units anymore. Oh, man, okay. Dude, the big chonkers are doing pretty good. Yeah, looks like 3,600 on big man. 1100 here. Ooh, a bit of shades. That's, that's kind of cool. Not going to do a whole lot against any of these type of units. But the toads are definitely getting the receiving end of things now. Uh, I do have a heal for them, but I'm going to save up for Rot Glorious Rot. Oh, it's not very good against these ogre units, but I think it's helpful for just breaking them off. Like, the heals... I don't know. I feel like the toads aren't worth healing at this point. 
They're still fighting though, like champs and applying some poison. These are great weapon cav though, so they're they're doing it. Pwn using the army ability from uh, from Zinch, which obviously the Demon Prince unlocks kind of randomly. Are the Toads gonna endure? How fast are the Mornfang cavalry? They're pretty quick. Actually, surprisingly difficult to get off the battlefield. Okay, let's go get that tyrant. Let's go show the tyrant who the real thick boys are. Dude, look at that. Oh yeah, just the way they walk. Definitely have been eating some American fast food. All right, let's get in there. Attack, get you on the, the butcher. Look at the toads. Look at the toads chasing him off, dude. I love it. Oh, that's nine born faint cavalry. POV or a cafe peasant, I know. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I think we I think we get this grind here though, for sure. Nurgle is cackling all the way to the bank. Bellacor is definitely a problem. I could attack here. Well, whatever. Let's just attack these toads. Although Bellacor is just gonna kill them all, so. We'll just run. Rot glorious rot. I think I just saved the heal, to be fair. Pwn is within striking distance if he can if Bellacor can like solo all my shit. <laughs> the ro the Rohrim, the Rohrim Mornfang, I know. I actually thought the fight would go much worse, but the Great Unclean Ones are just such a me meaty presence. I mean, that's like 30,000 HP that's just chilling there, you know? Alright, so let's get our Toads, put them all in one control group. A little bit better ease of access and have them just counter charge here. Oh, look at the frogs leaping into the Mornfangs. Bellacor's gonna have to land, though. He's got no, no units here. I'm basically just farming whatever points I can from the Ogres. I guess we use Fecundity, but Rot, Glorious Rot, yeah, it's pretty bad, so, um, let's wait till we're a little bit more beat up to use that, and just kind of save that. Okay, so the Mornfang Cavalry are shattered, these ones are shattered, the characters are being beaten down by the Great Unclean ones. Bellacor, uh, not as thick as my Great Unclean one, I think the Great Unclean one might actually win if I use magic. Actually, I don't have enough for heal, so maybe not. Bellacor would probably actually win that. Great Unclean Ones can beat, they can actually trade with Scarbrand if they have like magic and they can heal themselves a couple times, but yeah. It's still hard. Scarbrand I think still wins if he has all his abilities. Okay, so he's hunting down some units here. Let's send the Toads to chase down Homeboy. And uh, these guys are shattered. So Pwn's gonna have to come meet his fate eventually. The Butcher of the Great Maw is getting broken off the battlefield. Professor Pwn's trying to farm some points here against, uh, against the Frost Maiden. Oh. Well, there you go. The Dark Prince cackles. And uh, we'll just keep chasing down this guy. Getting whatever scraps we can. Get him, my toadlings. Oh no, oh no, flies. Don't give Bellacor those free points. Come on. Alright, great and clean ones. It's time to face the might of Bellacor. Well, the toads just farm that ogre tyrant for points. Great and clean ones have like 12,000 HP or something. Yeah, it's like it's in that ballpark. There's no way Bellacor can take the Thick Squad. There's no way. Oh, buddy. You better run, dude. You better run. And, uh, yeah, these guys are just gonna chill by the, the Great Unclean Ones here. I mean, he can have the Tyrant, I guess, if he wants. I don't think he has any chance. It's The point lead is too big now. Okay. So we're just going to have the Toads attack here, because they're actually pretty good at trapping things in place. I love how they swing their swords when they're like, when they're doing their thing. Yeah, we'll have you go chase him. Curse of the Slug. No escape. We still have enough for a fecundity. So we got a big shot there. This is what this Plague Ridden gets for betraying Nurgle and joining Bellacor. Time to use the Blight Swarm. Try and snipe that character. Uh, we'll see if we can actually take down that Tyrant too. Okay, we got the triple big boy moving in. Some big beatings gonna be going down. Toads are crumbling. Man, Bellacor hits so hard. He's definitely a raid boss. I need to kill his healer though, because when the healer's gone, we can we can go after Bellacor. Love the Death Guard grind. I oh, know, Death Guard is my favorite faction in tabletop for 40k. Fortunately, they're kinda kinda in a bad place. Okay, the Tyrant's back. We get that caster down. Let's go, Toads. Oh, the Sword of Corn, dude. <laughs> Just did like nothing. I guess it killed a couple Toads. 
All right, Bellacor, now it's time for you to get 3v1 by the extra thick boys. Oh, dude, look at this. This, this is only an FFA do you see shit like this. Oh, he just got uppercutted by the bell. I love it. And we have some nice treats. We have fecundity. We're going to heal. It actually looks like that tyrant defeated those guys. Interesting. Yeah, Shadow Shroud gives him 40% ward save. Bellacor is a very strong duelist. No escape, you must get <laughs> you must get down with the thickness. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. So, man, that, that ward save ability lasts a long time. The tyrant's here. Looks like Pwn's fleeing the scene. He's, he's gonna go try and fight the tyrant. Realizing that that was not going well. I don't know what he's hoping to accomplish here, really. Look at the tyrant running, dude. Yeah, because Pwn's gonna start taking leadership penalties until he lands on the ground, so... What we could do to troll, watch this. You guys ready for this? This is this is revenge for for him running away from us. So what's gonna happen is he's gonna kill this ogre tyrant, but then he's gonna have to chase us. Or else he takes a leadership penalty because he has no ground units. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, the tyrant might last a while. The longer the tyrant lasts, the better. Yeah. Bellacor probably has a ton of value. Bellacor is so strong. Crazy strong character. Dude, yeah, just a casual like 7,000 value Bellacor. What am I at? 5.7, pretty good. 2.5, and uh, wait, what? Oh, I thought that was my guy. I was like, oh my god, my great unclean one got 7,000 value. You guys ready for this? The MLG tactics? <laughs> the three stooges? All right, so that guy's gonna get chased off the battlefield. <laughs> it's like the head-to-head -head campaign with Pona Head. Although, his leadership might be fine, we'll have to see. Look, look, the great unclean ones are just running, dude. And now look, his leadership is tanking. So there's a chance he's just going to start crumbling. Oh my god, that's so funny. Yeah, I think he's going to be fine, though. Like, that that actually, this mechanic isn't that punishing. Because they can just cycle charge you to heal it. If I had a if I had a, a Curse of the Slug, that'd be so funny right now. <laughs> look at this. I love it. The three stooges, dude. Okay, he's down to 71 leadership. Uh, was the army the, the rot harem? Yeah, it was. The toads. Yeah. So now he's down to 68. So we don't have enough separation, but had we, if we had faster units, you could totally do this. Yeah, so we'll, we'll just turn and fight him to, to spare the time. But <laughs> Oh my god, the ogres used dismember on him, dude! Wait, how's that possible? The tyrant's alive? Look, look, they used dismember on Belakar! I should have kept running, dude. Wait, do we have a slow? Does it slow at all? No, no, it just lowers the charge bonus. Oh my god, that's so funny. And his leadership's down to 54. You see, in an alternate universe, that could have been really funny. That could have been really funny. So he, you can't kite infinitely with flying units. Uh, hey, ogre player, I do appreciate that gesture. That was really funny. Yeah, it's good, good. Oof. <laughs> What was that? He like bounced off me, dude. I don't think he killed the tyrant. Bellacor <laughs> Bellacor just sitting in the skies, withering down. Okay, he's got 23 now. Like they're all equally thick, and they all have like crazy good weapon strength. Okay, Bellacor's here. Now it's time for him to get circle beaten. The Dark Master. Oh, the dreaded Dark Master. Where's that ogre tyrant, dude? Is he hiding in the bushes somewhere? Hey, if you're the ogre player, Tibbs, please don't make me chase you around the map. <laughs> for the love of the dark gods. Okay, now it's time for... This guy just feels like dancing. He's like, you can dance if you want to. You can leave Bellacor behind. Just if you don't dance. He ain't no friend of mine. All right, let's get the Miasma Pestilence. Bellacor pretty scary, but he's certainly getting the circle beating. He could probably take this big boy on his own. It, it's hard to say. Bellacor stats. Oh, that guy just threw up on him. Oh! <laughs> Can't he just use the land command? Uh, I don't know how that... No, because I think if you only have flying units, you have to be, like, attacking someone. Yeah. That is nefarious. It is. Okay, so we got no more abilities. Bellacor is just scrambling. Where, where the heck is that ogre tyrant, dude? Landed right in the middle. Circle beat him with clubs. <laughs> he is getting the circle beating, dude. I love, I love the, I love the, the chubby, the chubby great unclean ones. Just, oh, look at that animation. Oh, that's so gross, dude. That's so gross. 
<laughs> oh man. He's getting a nice bath. So here's the thing. I legit can't catch the Ogre Tyrant. I don't know where Tibbs is. I mean, if he just actually hides, we'll just leave the game. It doesn't matter. Like, we've, we've clearly already won this. Like, yeah. Oh, Bellacor. Okay, Bellacor has fallen. The Dark Prince is no match for Nurgle. Well, Nurgle cheated. Nurgle brought some friends. All right. So, yeah, I have no idea where the where that guy is. So we'll just we'll just fast forward. Oh, here he comes. Oh, it's the it's the butcher of the great maw. Okay. Here he comes. Someone's trying to pause the game. Interesting. I would recommend the fast forward option, my friends. Dude, I love the way these guys run. Look at it. Just look at this big man with that freaking peg leg. Oh yeah. That's how I feel sometimes in life. When I tore my hamstring, that's how I felt. I ran track and field in high school and uh, I tore my hamstring running the 100 meter dash. My career in competitive athletics was over at that point. I feel like this ogre. All right, let's go, baby. Hustle it up, hustle it up. One Bellacore, three uncleat ones. I, is this the only unit they have left? Oh my God, yeah, he's only got one, okay. Come on, give him the good old the good old beatdown. That bell uppercut animation so sweet. The coolest part would be if the bell uppercut actually like launched an SEM and sent him flying. Aha, oh, it must have been Tibbs with the dreaded lag. I don't know, maybe it's me, who knows. It's kinda of cool they have spells too. What kind of value, wow. Okay, so six thousand three hundred on you. Three thousand one hundred on you. And the other guy got eighteen hundred. That's pretty good. Most of it is from fighting, uh, like, you know, Bellacor and these, like, single entity models and things like that. Oh my god, the lag is real. This is the, the curse of FFA. Come on, team. GG! We did it! Nurgle finally won a game! It's possible, but just not in actual competitive games. Alright. So. How'd the Toads do? A thousand? Fifteen hundred? You know what, guys? The Toads actually did good. 2100 on the toad. Then this this thing over here got 1000, 1500. The rawflies did, oh, 1800. Wow, my stuff actually performed really well. How did the, the ogre M do? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, they did okay. Not crazy value. Certainly struggled. Rivari, Rivari got sandwiched. This is like a regular army. This is legit like an army you would see in a 1v1 battle. So clearly it wasn't up to the task of fighting the haggard FFA blobs. GG, Pwn. It was fun. That was, that was a fun game. Yeah, Ravari. This looks actually like a build I bring against, like, in 1v1. Very similar to that. The Exalted Great Chunguses, dude. Nasty, nasty stuff. All right, so we've officially concluded today's stream. Do appreciate it. And uh, if you guys could drop a like on the way out, it does help quite a bit. We'll have a land battle tournament next time, but between then and now, I'll have... Um, I'll have some PvP streams where I'm just playing on ladder and versus players and you guys. I'll have some Age of Empires tournaments and uh, yeah, Warcraft 3 stream as well. We'll have one of those sometime soon. Maybe like Sunday night we'll do Warcraft 3. I think that could be cool. Yeah, Nurgle needs some nerfs clearly, right? Was the Night Goblin Lord useful in multiplayer? The squig riding one? Yeah, he was, Lincoln, because he had a Tormentor sword. So occasionally you would see him as like a snare, a cheap snaring boss. Yeah, those are the Pox Riders, yeah. Pox Riders are pretty good. I was actually wrong about them. I think they're better than the regular Toads. Rot Harim is the joke of the stream. Yeah, that was, that's pretty good, Kevin. No, I gotta, I gotta go. I got, I, got, I got stuff to do. Yeah, Pwn, you got sandwiched. Well, Pwn, I was actually saying on my stream, I was like, I was like, oh, I hope Pwn gives me an honorable one-on-one -on -one duel here, but then you ran. So I was like, oh, well, I guess you're just gonna get sandwiched. <laughs> I foolishly felt bad about the sled spam. Rivari, next time, don't. FFA is like all below, all... All, like, FFA is about the most haggard, weird stuff you can do. Don't feel bad, Rivari. Your build looks like a good 1v1 build, though. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations again to the winner today. I know this was a tournament. Void Laws did win the uh, event from earlier, so if you guys didn't see that, make sure to check out some of those games. Certainly some very sweaty matches. It was always fun. And uh, we'll be back soon. You guys take care of yourselves. That is it for now, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Thanks again for the donations from Bowie, Shy Guy, and uh, we also donated from Nelosi. Thank you. You guys are the best.